Okay. Right, well, a very good morning to you from a Supersport Park. Uh, my name is Simon Gear. With me in um, uh, in the seat next to me is uh, um, um, Paul Matwane, and you are listening to um, OneWSL.com's uh, coverage uh, with Pitch Vision of this uh, second um, uh, second week of the CSA four day uh, four day competition. And uh, the game that you are watching is Titans versus Dolphins. It is Titans batting. We'll give you all of the, um, the scores in a moment as uh, the butter comes in right on around the wicket and just plays that out into the offside and they jog through for a single. And uh, that takes uh, Mungru off the, uh, off the mark for the day. He moves through to... Um, oh, no, sorry, it's Mungru Bowling, my apologies. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it, um, it was uh, Javeshin Pele. he moves to 49. He, there we go. So he's, um, he's just shy of his 50. He had a very interesting sleep last night, <laughs> uh, wondering what shot he would play to get to his 50, but he's managed to get to the other side. There's one more to go. Kuren Bosch, who had a very nice cameo in the afternoon last night after Jordan Herman's century um, facing up to Mungru. And just in that slot and defended uh, to uh, Madoff, who mm -hmm. um, who does the fielding. So the field right now is two slips, a gully, a man at point on the boundary. You've got an extra cover, mid off, that's Kazondo, mid on. Bryce, uh, looks like it's Bryce Parsons mid on. And you've also got a, a man at square leg. Or, or just mid wicket, just a little bit uh, f uh, back in front of square leg of the square leg umpire, and you've also got a fielder at third man, very wide third man. Oh, beautiful ball outside the off stump, and there's a little, little bit of swing there from Kerwin Mangru in the morning. Uh, pitch is a traditional centurion pitch. There's a lot of grass there, so it gives you a little bit of movement um, in the mornings. And yeah, it's just been it's been a hard work for the for this dolphin side as they try and assert some sort of pressure at the top of the table because they won last week and they they want to continue that. They um, have they are a little bit behind on overrate as well. Mm. So they were bowling some of their spinners for extended periods yesterday, trying to get back as this moves mm. away off the off the seam, taken by the keeper and no run. Yes, Cohen Mangru. Um, normally known, I think, for a lot of South Africans for his limited overs uh, work, but he's a very good uh, four-day uh, bowler. And him, Ntini, as well as Darren Dupavillon create a really nice um, trio of, of, of fast bowlers for, for this Durban side who are defending champions. This one is just outside the off stump and played out to uh, just left alone by uh, Kerwin Bosch. Yeah, fairly standard field at the moment. Uh, two slips in the gully. Uh, we've got uh, the man at cover. We've got uh, a mid off and a mid on, a mid wicket as well. Uh, there is a man out at a quite square um, backward square leg, a deep, mm -hmm. deep, deep square leg. Uh, that's uh, sorry, sorry. No, he's not. He's a point. It's uh, of course a right-handed batting. <laughs> <laughs> Taking a little while to get up to speed this morning, Mpo. Uh, you already had your coffee. Some of us have not. <laughs> this one just outside that wide line. Not a hint of swing there, as the previous balls, but it works out nonetheless. Uh, Bosch lets it go, and that's the end of that over. Uh, the Titans are 372 for six. Um, they still have Ayat Lamani to come in. Simon Harmer as well and a junior dollar uh, to, to come in as well. Just a bit of a roundup of what happened yesterday around, um, around the country. Um, the Burlant uh, playing Western Province. Uh, Burlant was bowled out for 267 uh, just before Stubbs Western Province came in and were five without loss after three overs. Uh, down in Port Elizabeth, the Warriors were bowled out for 96 against the Lions and the Lions um, went along quite nicely to 74 for one. And now trail by 22 runs, so Lions very much in the driving seat there. And uh, in Potchefstroom, the Knights uh, are having a field day. They are 418 for 8 against uh, Northwest. First ball of the uh, second over, this is Du Pavilion who is bowling, and uh, he gets it right on the money and just defended, and no run. Yes, uh, Javeshin Pele, uh, the left handed bat there, just defending it back. He's in that weird moment where you're just trying to probably premeditate a shot to get yourself to the other side 
Um, and you're going to have to play it as it is. Comes in again, right arm over the wicket to the right hander and uh, tight in against the body again and uh, defended. We've got uh, Peterson behind the stumps and uh, the first slip is Tarul Erve and uh, it is Herman Ackerman who is at Mark uh, Ackerman. Mark's, uh, Mark Ackerman, sorry, who is at. Tarul um, Erve has been on our podcast, the Full Quota podcast. Oh he's, yes, he's been a really, really lovely guy. Look out for that podcast on YouTube on our one WSR platform. Um, spoke about his and Herman. They're looking to try and blood them into this top order that normally should have Proteus, but the Proteus are not available right now. Solid shot out into the um, mid off. There hasn't been any real demons in the pitch so far this morning, and certainly this pair have looked very, very comfortable indeed. Um, I was quite surprised uh, people like Dean Elgin not showing up uh, in the in the Titans. Yes, um, in the Dean, Titans got, at the Dean picked up an injury in the game against, but either in the game against the Pumalanga in the T20 tournament or after, because he became unavailable for the final group game of that tournament and hasn't been back ever since. Um, so that's one that's one thing to to note. Two slips and a gully for the right hander, driven again into mid off. Gordon Bosch no actually run. bats. He's got the technique um, to, 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 to actually be a, a very good batsman and you can see with the fact that the Titans um, brought him up a little bit earlier on last night to come in before Ayat Um A little bit of a night watchman type of situation as Ayat Laman is a very capable batsman. Certainly uh, Titans will feel um, very, very happy with the position. Mm. that they're in in the game at the moment as De Bavillon just bangs it into the deck quite hard that is the end of the over and uh, a quick and enthusiastic change by the uh, the Dolphins players trying to get that He's over rate back under control yeah. they have to be bowling at 16 overs an hour this this season up from from 15 last season so that's uh, that requires, a relent spin, uh, yeah, it requires a re relentless attention from the captain. To Which keep is exciting because then you get to see guys like Bryce Parsons ball. Mm. Well, I mean, I, I realise now that maybe that is a way that CSA can develop spin bowling in um, in South Africa. <laughs> is just make the guys bowl 16 overs an hour. So you're forced to, to, to have some spinners in. Yeah, well, look, I'm loving Bryce Parsons right now. I will, uh, I've always been a fan of his even when he was playing for... Uh, Hao Teng before he made his he made his move to uh, to the Dolphins. Defended stoically into the offside, no run off uh, the bowling of a uh, Kieran Mungru. Big tall fast bowler this. Mm. Look at this, um, the this one, the one person missing from this Dolphins team is Otniel Bartman, who actually Mangroves come in for. Um, he's picked up a little bit of a niggle after that last four-day uh, week, well, last weekend. Right, I'm around, uh, around the wicket and driven into the offside. There is that sweeper on the point boundary, who I referred to earlier, and uh, fires it back into wicketkeeper Peterson. They come through for a single that takes the partnership to 47 now. Mm. And 110 overs left in the day. It could be a very, very long day's uh, cricket. Well, if you if you consider it, it is four days cricket. It's not five days. So mm. there's a there's a question right now sitting with uh, Neil Brunt, the Titans captain, as to how many runs does he think he needs to possibly bat once, and and also take the 20 wickets they need over the next two and a half days. Um, to, to do so mm. and I think that obviously in five day cricket that number is about around 500 now I think here yeah, this number could be around 450 yeah. so they can get to 450 as quickly as possible that puts them in the pound seats yeah I don't uh, I don't anticipate a, um, a, a declaration certainly uh, unless they really are still batting at T. Midway through lunch, I, th I would say so. You can't bat two days in yeah. a four-day game. That's also true, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but well, at, at, at 374 for six, I mean, they should be staring down the barrel of 500 by the time we reach lunch. Mm. Um, because remember, we do have an extra half an hour this morning. We started half an hour early because they lost some time yesterday. Because the Lions managed in, at the Wanderers, they scored about 441 and they managed to bat twice against the Northwest in the first round. So I was always thinking, yeah, that's the well, number, what a shot yeah. over the top of extra cover. Yeah. It, it, I wonder whether he didn't get his hand to it, because it, it, he felt like he really threw his hands at that, at that mm. ball, and it, didn't, it really trickled over the, over the boundary. 
yeah. and, uh, and that man jumping at, uh, at cover. That's Tandontini, oh, number 77. I think he may well have got a, a finger to that. He didn't react like he did, but it didn't, <laughs> uh, it didn't fly to the boundary nearly as fast as I thought it was going to. Look, sometimes you're just fielding just to, you know, let the captain know that you made an effort. <laughs> that ball went like a rocket. Um, but, yeah. And he also has to preserve his fingers as a, as a fry time fast, uh, fry time quick. Yeah, and until he's the one bowling. Then he wants the guys to put their body on the line. I'm absolutely sure. Driven into the onside, no run. And a lot straighter from Mangu in this over, uh, making the batsman play a lot more balls, which is what you want. Yeah, there hasn't been uh, a, a lot left outside the off stump here, and um, uh, plenty of opportunity to get bat on ball early on, which is what you want on a sunny Saturday afternoon or sat sunny Saturday morning. You where know, you... This is like the first time I've been to Pretoria since COVID. Really? Yes. So it was. Uh, I had to find my passport to cross <laughs> the north of the UK. I actually work out here these days. It's almost becoming um, my my second hometown, which is a, a weird experience. Mm. Uh, really, really lovely part of the world, actually. I mm. do, I do enjoy it. I'm still pretty uh, happy with 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 the dolphins. I I I, I want for them to try possibly because um, the I'm assuming the, they've taken the new ball, so probably getting like a third slip in there, try keep it up, but the ball's not doing much. Uh, you just want to try get a wicket, you know, maybe mm. try something different on the field because this is quite conventional. Um, and you've only got three catches. Yeah, um, I would actually in around the bat. I would have thought the Dolphins needed to come a little bit harder at the Titans here first thing this morning, and um, and they do uh, they do seem to have just uh, settled into a uh, a rhythm of just allowing things to happen uh, quite early on. Mm. It, it seemingly it's a field where you're going to bowl that f fifth stump line. Um, but you can't bowl it a lot wider because if you do, you're going to pierce the covers. Mm. The batsman can. Oof. He has been bowling quite tight into uh, the the uh, the left hander here, and uh, he's been he's been hitting that mid on regularly. Um, as as Pele. And so I suppose the hope is that sooner or later he's going to he's going to miss one and they've got an LBW shot. Yes. But at the moment, everything has come off the middle of the bat. Yes, but I would, I would take out that man at square leg mm. and put him in at, at third slip, just, just to... Invite the batsman to, to play across the line. This time mm. it does, uh, it is that man at, third, uh, at square leg who's going to be chasing the ball. And uh, they come through for two. That brings up the partnership to 53 now. We actually mm. missed them going past the 50-run partnership. The score to 380 for six. Of 85 overs, that's uh, that's a good, strong um, scoring rate. No, it is. Um, yeah, I just want Darren to just push it across the left hander. Um, let him play outside that off stump. Right now, it's just all on that middle and leg line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has been a little bit straight. So he comes in right arm over to the left hander. That time, he does actually angle it across mm -hmm. a bit and forces the uh, batsman to play into the offside. And it is fielded by cover. No run. Mm. No, um, yeah, one of the great innings we saw yesterday was Jordan Hammond's 112. Really amazing from the youngster. Wow, just the talent. Like the, the talent factory that's in the Northerns itself um, is, 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 is second to none that they could find. His, his brother actually has been loaned out to... Um, the the Dolphin side. He's not playing today, <laughs> but um, it's just it's just really quite quite interesting that we've also got another cricket <clears throat> family dropped into the offside. I'll have a look to see who that is fielding. Kaizondo. Oh, it is Kaizondo. Yes. <laughs> the Simon's has got these binoculars the, today. <laughs> the diminutive Kaizondo Kai out at the um, that uh, that off offside He's boundary. one guy I'm excited to see bat again after that double century scored in Cape Town. Um, really uh, incredible yeah. talent, and yeah, he's got uh, he's got things to prove to people. I think. And Look, uh, his name has come up for all the other <laughs> all, all sorts of reasons other than cricket. But last week it was his week, and he deserves all the praise because it was an incredible two hundred. Uh, uh, the man at square leg has, has has dropped to halfway back to the boundary. Okay, here we go. So, um, expecting some chin music. Opp opportunities for a short ball here. Yeah, Kai, Kai has now gone to a more conventional fine leg. Um, this is what we we're thinking about from the from the Dolphins. 
three six a three six field. There's a man at Madon. There's that man who has um, two thirds of the way back to the boundary at Square Leg, mm. and Kaya who's a little way off the fine leg boundary. Okay, setting up Golden Bosch. Yeah. Still oh. not, ooh, he gets a leading edge which squirts away through backward point and uh, they come through for a single that is the end of that over 382 for six now after 86 overs Pile is there on 54 Bosch is on 25 in that partnership 55 at the moment it is all the titans double bluff there from Darren de Pavillon. Um Corbin was expecting it to come short and he got surprised by it and induce that leaning edge really really good fast bowling from a guy who's fighting for a spot to be a reserve in the pro tier side mm -hmm. that fourth seamer spot is up for grabs you've got Luto Sapamna taking six for 32 yesterday you've got uh, Darren de Pavillon, uh, Bartman who had a great week last week uh, you also got Linton Steelman out there um, at, in, in PE in Tabeja Duan Olifir is now back mm -hmm. it's 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 going to be fun for the selectors this time. I hope that they have, they are some watching. And there's there's some other youngsters coming up. Michal Mpongwana took five wickets yesterday for the, the I want to call them the Cobras. They're not the Western Province Blitz. <laughs> As Mangru continues, he's uh, he's had a fairly successful um, s uh, start to the game at the moment. Uh, he's bowled uh, 16 overs. He's taken three for 54. Mm. Um, his uh, in f including the two last uh, the, the, the last two wickets to fall. Uh, so yesterday he took Tunis de Brain, which is always a nice um, nice goal <laughs> to get. Uh, he that was uh, caught in the slips by Ervia um, for six. Zibanella Makanya also caught in the slips, and uh, Jordan Herman caught in Tini by Baldwin. That one just rising off a length. Really lovely ball from uh, Mangru outside the off stump. Uh, some patient cricket here. I think maybe we were being slightly harsh that uh, we, they were, the Titans were letting things drift already. I think they yeah, they are they are thinking a little bit about what's happening, and uh, mm -hmm. now now in fact for Mangru that uh, that square leg is right back on the boundary. Yeah. For the, well, look, I think Cohen doesn't get the ball to 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 rise as much as Darren de Pavillon. So if you're gonna pull it, you probably might pull it square mm. rather than a lot finer. But you've got that cover at fine leg as well. So far, that both bowlers have resisted the temptation to try and feed those those deep leg uh, leg fielders, but uh, it'll definitely be rattling in the back of the batsman's mind that 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 bouncer is coming. Yes, reasonably defensive field. I mean, they do have the sweeper out on the on the offside. Yeah, I'd actually like that sweeper to be in the ring, just create a little bit of pressure, stop the singles from happening, mm -hmm. and and effectively just try and build some pressure. He comes in again from from the end away from us and defended off the back foot. No run. Remind me, we've got the Hennups River end, which is the far end. This one in, at this ground? Stadium end. Mm. Uh, wow. I'm actually not sure. <laughs> it's been a while since it has been, hasn't it? Yeah. Well, Google is your friend, Simon, so we're going to if <laughs> we're going to try <laughs> and and figure that one out. We are at the northern end. Of the ground, yeah, because Hennep's River is the south. Yeah, and grew again in right arm over the wicket. Slips go down. There is the slightly shorter ball, and he does try and work it off his hips. Uh, through doesn't really get any of it, and they just jog through for a single. Mm. It takes them through to 383 for yeah. six. Pavilion end, pavilion end. Yes, they need to come up with a better Defensive. name for the end there. Hennops River End sounds very, very romantic. I'm glad that they, they didn't call it the car train end or something like that. <laughs> I think if the car train had been, had been in existence when they built Centurion, the they might well have. Oh, look, we need to move with the times, you yeah. know. It, 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 it's better than City End. Yes. You know. But I do think Pavilion End is probably the most popular end name <laughs> in the world. S still building a very, very tight line to mm -hmm. the left-handed Pelé. And he just works it off his hips, and you there isn't a chance for a run. 383 for six after after the 87th over. Uh, Pelé is there on 54. Bosch is there on 26. 
and at the end of that over Mungru has bowled 17 overs, 3 for 55. Look, it's a, it's, it's a lovely scorecard here from the Titans. McGuena 49, Neil Brunt 56. They started off well yesterday. Tennis of Rain getting 6, but uh, Gian Kluter, the wicketkeeper, getting 46. Spinello out for a duck. Uh, that's Makanya. Then you had uh, Ro- Ruben Herman. Uh, Jordan, not Ruben, Ruben's his brother. Jordan had him on 112, and you've got these two at the crease, 54 and 26. Um, well, th- this is this is what you were expecting from the Titans, a very strong batting lineup coming together, everyone putting their hands up, and they've done so, so far. Um, it's just a question about this Dolphins attack as to, you know, where the breakthrough's going to come from. Indeed. Um, oh, th- there was the shorter ball, and he resisted the temptation to, to have a, a pull at it knowing that the men are back there and uh, I think landed up taking it on the body or maybe just uh, knocking it with his gloves down onto the ground but uh, good cricket all round though yeah. absolutely gorgeous day in Pretoria a <laughs> little bit of light cloud high high up in the atmosphere but otherwise it's, uh, it's not a uh, good burning day so it's a day. great no, day to bat exactly great day for the beach possibly well, we don't have a beach For sure, Pretoria yeah? could use a beach, I think. It's defended it off the back foot. Isn't that what everybody voted for in these uh, last up- upcoming elections? It beach. was a referendum on the beach? Beaches for Pretoria. <laughs> 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 Maybe there's some sandbars in the, the Arpies and the, and the Henops River. Yeah. This place is always scorching, right? Yeah, it, it is. It's always sh- scorching. I know, it's just sort of walking around campus yeah. at uh, University of Pretoria where I work now and it's uh, noticeably warmer than... Uh, than where I live back in back in Johannesburg, and 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 we must thank the dolphins for also giving us player numbers on the back. It just makes life a lot easier for the <laughs> for us. It does indeed. Uh, Drive play oh, through shot. the onside, really, really good shot. That is the first boundary of the morning. Second. Is it the second one? Yes, the first one was played out to, to Ah, to yes, cover. that's right. Yeah. Oh, yes, of course, it went mm. over the jumping in team. That but this one, very, very safe indeed. Good, solid on drive. Uh, some money shot of note that. Yeah, well, he'll be hoping somebody's taken a picture of that. He could use that, um, uh, yeah. that that full picture of his form there at the end, <laughs> as well as his Facebook profile picture. Uh, but really good shot from Corbin Bosch. He's he's a good batsman, and uh, he's showing he averages 38 at Supersport Park, which is pretty fun and pretty cool for him. Um, and I think it's really awesome to see him bat because a lot of people just see him as a bowler, as a quick, and he's one of the the, the quicks here. Um, in this in this Titan side, yeah. So twenty eight years of age, is a mature cricketer now. Um, Tesh is Bosch's son, which mm-hmm. I hadn't realised. Um, who's one of the more interesting stories of South African cricket? Uh, played for S- South Africa in the nineties, and uh, he won the World Cup with Kahiso and Ian Markham. Oh, really? Was he part yes. of that squad? Yes, okay. ten years ago. Sure. Well, it's not 10 years ago. Or Just about. 28, yeah. Eight years, yeah. Mm. Um, <coughs> uh, he's, he's, he's played 18 first-class matches. Uh, Average is 32 um, in, in first-class. And uh, that top score of uh, just 59. They bat very, this team bats very deep. Do you think Simon Harm is coming in at 10? Yeah. But again, the shorter ball and just worked very, very well and controlled to that a man at square leg and they just jog through for a single there's no rush here they can um they can take their time and they can wait for the bad ball and and just pick off the singles and they're going to be easily doing their job of going along at three to four runs and over this morning 61 the partnership now with one ball remaining in this uh, 15th over from de pavilion he's taken one for 59. Would you be looking for a um, for a declaration here? Uh, I mean, obviously not right well, now. I said, but around yeah. about four fifty would be my mm. question if you want to win. Um, Proper effort ball there, and uh, Pele just uh, sways out the way, goes through to the keeper. That's the end of the over. I think mean, because if you look at the state of, 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 I know it's only after one week, and you've got seven, six more to go after after this. Actually, mm. five more to go after this. Five more rounds to go after this. You kind of need to get a win as quickly as possible to put yourself up there to get to that that final, the grand final that mm. they'll be there. And these two teams have not won a game. The Dolphins drew um, against Western Province last week largely because of the rain. 
um, and, and, and the Titans lost last week to the Warriors here. So they both will be wanting to get something on the table, especially if, 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 if what's happening at in Kabecha is, is, is to be believed. Um, with the, with the Lions having bowled out the the Warriors for 96, mm-hmm. uh, and they finished the day, I think it was 77 for one, and you don't want a team running away with it so early. I know you can, I know there's weeks to bring it back, but you know sometimes you just want to, you know, get that win out the way, and that's why I think maybe 450 could be a could be a possibility because if they then, if for instance, if the Dolphins then try to get their own score of 450, mm. that is the end of day three and yeah. you got the one final day to just pretty much play net cricket out in the middle <laughs> so yeah it's there's a lot of thinking that might be going on especially with the the titans one seamer short um, i think they've gone for that extra batsman division play coming in at seven and then you've got bosch Tramane, dala Harmer as your four bowling options and then you're gonna try to figure out probably get neil brunt to be your second spinner and maybe someone else to come and bowl, bowl something. So it's uh, yeah. So that's the one thing that, that I think the Titans sacrificed compared to last week. Because last week they had Dan Khalim, who's an all-rounder, and he actually opened the bowling for them, batting at seven. Mm. Um, now this week they've gone for one extra batsman. Just l- lays the bet on that out into the offside and uh, no run. It's been a. Um, Fairly stayed over here. There's lots of patience going on from Mangru. He hasn't. Uh, we, we saw De Pavilion bowl short balls, uh, three short balls in that previous over as he's tried to start feeding his leg side fielders. Mangru has yet to uh, give that a bash, even though he has got two men out catching on that leg side. Again, just defended to the man at mid-off. No run. 388 for 6 at the moment. 88.4 overs gone. Pillay is there on 54. Bosch on 31. So he's halfway to his highest uh, total ever. I'm sure he's not thinking about that yet. He's just thinking about um, what slightly shorter ball that it is. Uh, again pulled but without any real venom. And Midon runs around and collects it. Fires it back into Peterson, the, the keeper, and they jog through for a single. That's a pretty safe over. shot, Finn. Um, it is indeed. He's just working it into that space where he knows he's got a guaranteed run. Yeah. And and because of the pace that the Mangru comes at, it's not going to force him to try and and, 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 and pull it a lot square. So um, you can see now what the Dolphins have done. Okay, this is to the left ha- this is the left hander now. Mm. Um, getting a fielded extra cover. Um, similar field to the right handed um, Corbin Bosch here for Pelé. Uh, this time he does put the effort ball in. We could hear the grunt from here. And That's the ball he needed to bowl for Kerwin Bosch. Yeah. Would have been perfect. I think what that was, and we saw it in the previous over as well, that was just getting to the end of the over. <laughs> just just <laughs> bow up a bouncer, know that you've guaranteed a dot ball, and, uh, and you can move on with your life. 389 for six now after 89 overs. Uh, the two batsmen in are, um, are Pele and Bosch. Uh, Pele is uh, has just gone to his uh, half century about uh, about two overs ago. He's on 54. Bosch is on 32, and the partnership now 62. With uh, plenty of cricket still to go in the day, they've been scoring at four and a half runs and over throughout this innings. Uh, Pavillon, who's noticeably faster than my group, and he works it into the onside. An easy single for the Dolphins, bringing in Javesh and Pele, who's done quite well for his first 54. Ten away from 400, the Titans are. You'd probably be expecting Kern Bosch to just throw his bat at a few right now. Edge and gone, and caught by Bryce Parsons at Gali. The first wicket of the day goes to Darren de Pavillon and the Dolphins have their breakthrough. 390 for 7 on the Titans. 
Uh, th that is the end of Jefferson uh, Pillay. He's scored by Parsons, bowled to Pavilion. He scored 54 runs in 156 minutes, faced 120 balls for his, uh, his 54. And uh, he'll be disappointed by that. <laughs> <laughs> I think he had, uh, he had, he had uh, been patient and worked fairly hard all the way through um, this morning. And then getting that edge, which flew quite low mm. to uh, to uh, Parsons, and Parsons took a good, solid catch. At, and it was at, the first ball that actually Darren yeah. decided to bowl wide of that off stump. And and uh, as we were trying to, as we were talking a lot earlier, that his lines were very straight on that middle and off. And this time he just needed to go wide of outside the off stump to draw Javishan Pillay. And then yeah, got the catch at Gully. Uh, safe pair of hands is Bryce Parsons, number eleven. Next batsman in Ayat Amane. Uh, 96 innings here um, in first class cricket, scored 1,600 runs. His high score was 107 against uh, Eastern Province, which in East London. Um, and then he's played, he's, he's gotten 450s and 100 in that period. Uh, making his second first class game for the Titans. So this is going to be quite uh, interesting to see. They got him as a free agent last year uh, in that merry-go-round that we call. Uh, I, don't want to, I think we should call it cricket free agency because that's <laughs> what it was. And they are picking up contracts, people moving contracts. And obviously because we're in this new era of provincial cricket rather than franchise cricket, even though it looks like it is franchise cricket with two more, with two more franchises. Um, it's, a, it's, it's, it's pretty cool to see that Ayat Kulmani getting that contract. Very handy batsman as Dupa comes in. Oh, <laughs> invites him with a short ball there. I just gets out the way, eyes on the ball. And what a way to get a welcome um, at Centurion by the opposition. Yeah, he's, he's played a lot of cricket. I mean, this is his 68th first class match. Um, averages about 20 in first class cricket. He does have uh, the single hundred at this level and um, he's a very good T20 batsman uh, very very good he's helped the Titans in this T20 uh, competition um, a lot on the back end and in March when we had that T20 challenge the the, the Warriors really loved him at six. Oh, shoulder ball he just sways there out the we way go. he's finding his rhythm again taking I think he's taking a couple of overs but I think he's happy that he's now bowling to right handers so he can he can he can just keep that rhythm, <laughs> keep that line. Yeah, but it looks like the scouting report for Ayat Mane has been bowled short to him because you've got those two men out in the deep on the leg side. Yeah, you don't have to bowl very short to Ayat Mane before uh, before it's going over his head. He's uh, reminds me quite a lot of Timber Bavuma in terms of stature at the crease. Mm. Very compact player as well. Yeah. Oh, outside the off stump, that's a good one. Good leave. Well, the Showy best leave. Yeah. Well, the best leaves are the ones that you know that that don't that don't break the stumps. So. <laughs> exactly. Mm. Uh, you can hear some red wing starlings in the uh, the background of our commentary. Mm. They fly over our heads and up into the eaves of the stadium. And that swimming pool over there at Castle Corner. Oh, oh it does look good, doesn't it? Eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no fans today. Um, but I mean, the pool is uh, the pool is ready for sewing. It's, uh, they've, they've made the effort. <laughs> not, not quite sure why there's uh, there's no fans in it. As the pavilion comes in again, right arm over and uh, oh, has a bit of a shy at the stumps. I think so, really he's just uh, enjoying being a fast bowler for a bit. So you saw obviously at the World Cup in Abu Dhabi, they have those white picket fences all around mm. the, all around the ground. That would be so awesome here. Yeah. It would. It would be very pretty indeed. That was uh, largely dispensed with. Um, uh, what was probably back in the mid '80s because they were insanely dangerous for the fielders. The white picket fence. Yeah, they were. Uh, I mean, I remember at school that um, our first team field had the, had had picket fences around the oh, ar around the. Field. I don't know about that. Like the little white picket fences to. Oh, the little squares up. for yes, people yes. to get to sit the in, so they're, they're in their own little prison. Yes. Yes, I saw that. Their <laughs> it was own a bit odd. Picnic basket or picnic little. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this was this is a, a ground where you could very easily hide two thousand people without them being on top of each other. But yeah. that's that's the beauty about St. John is that it, when everyone is packed, everyone's on top of each other, mm -hmm. and somehow they don't get hit with a cricket ball. <laughs> One group to continue uh, from the pavilion end. 
and hey, oh, oh. a bit of a play and a miss outside the off stump there from Bosch. And uh, if I was Mungru, I would have uh, maybe said a few more words to Bosch than, than he in fact did. Letting him know that There's that's no need to. The ball did all the talking. <laughs> Go and Bosch knows he's in a little bit of trouble there. He nearly, nearly got an edge to that one. He hasn't done some gardening, as is your want as a, a batsman, once you've missed a straight one. It's just weird that after a time, and no cricket has ever gone into gardening. The amount of gardening <laughs> they do on this pitch. That's right, I'm over to the right handed batsman. Two slips, a gully, noticeably slower than Pavilion. He really, De Pavilion, mm. he really just floats it up there. Onto 34, mm. the score now 391 for 7 after 90 overs. Mm. They've got some other options uh, that they could use from a from a seeming perspective. You've you've got you've got Randa Swart, you've got uh, Tandantini, um, who can come in. They've they've really tried pretty much most of it. Everybody who isn't a, a Kazonda, Salo Arvia, or Keegan Peterson. And the interesting one is Jason Smith has involved, which is really interesting because he's an all rounder. Well, in Cape Town, he was an all-rounder. Looks like here in here in um, in uh, when he plays for the Dolphins in KZN, all he is 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 he's just a batsman. Mm. So he swapped the colder waters of Cape Town for the warmer waters of Durban, and he just no longer wants to bowl, or <laughs> nobody trusts his bowling. Uh, maybe that juicy pitch when the the tide comes in at Kingsmead is. Uh, <laughs> he's uh, waiting for that. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually quite interesting. This is the first, I think, yeah, every other team's played at home already. A shorter ball, I've lost track of that. That's Where's up it? in the air oh, and it's, it's straight back. behind. Oh my word, I did not see that at all. I could <laughs> not see where it was going. I was looking, I was, you know, there's always that idiot cameraman who pans down to square leg. And that's what I was doing with my eyes. And that is the end of uh, uh, Aya Kamani. He uh, didn't trouble the scorers. Well, he did because they had to write his name on and then rub it out again. Uh, no runs off the six balls that he faced, seven minutes, um, and uh, that is the end of him. 391 for eight now, and um, and that is exactly what the doctor ordered and for that uh, brings the Dolphins. in the, what many, or well, Tim thinks, Tim calls, is the best off spinner in the world. <laughs> they had a Simon Homer coming in. No, certainly one who has um, had many, many column inches uh, assigned to him over the, the, the years. Mm -hmm. as, Four years. As he uh, was, was largely considered surplus to requirements by CSA. I don't think there was ever a really serious uh, attempt to get him into the, um, into the fold. Uh, and then went and was taking all the wickets in, in the county season, uh, the county's uh, circuit for, for a good few years. Mm, I think... Mean even last year, I think he was the best spinner. Um, but I, I speak under correction. Uh, I know the season before that Essex one, before COVID, um, he was just unplayable. And yeah, but right now we need his, uh, we're going to talk about his skills with the bat and not with the ball. Um, good thing for the Titans is that they crossed. So Kerwin Bosch is going to be Corbin Bosch, not Kerwin Bosch. Kerwin Bosch is the rugby player. <laughs> um, Corbin Bosch will be. Kerwin Mungru, though. Yes, yes, yeah. there's, there's a Cohen and there's a Cor Cor Corbin. All these names from the mid 90s when <laughs> mothers started to get, uh, get creative. It's better than all the Connors and Jareds that we're having to deal with these days. <laughs> okay, you're going to have to explain that after this ball. And this one just oh. defended it to the onside. No, my, my daughter is very. Um, there's a very particular type of boy that she is not interested in at all. And his name you is know, Kerwin. Uh, no, it, 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 she, she calls them Connors. Um, but it's those names like Connor and Jared and Travis, all of, you know, that, that ah, sort of... Um, the cool boys. I suppose what the, what the internet calls Chads. Yes. Yeah, Boykies who... All the Travises of the world. Yeah. Boykies with silly haircuts who sit at the back of the class and talk while she's trying to focus on whatever it is she does. And that's the fun part about sit, about being in class, sit at the back and laugh at everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Played into the onside, they're going to come through for a single, which will uh, not bring Simon Harmer on strike because that is mm. the end of the over. And so a successful over for the, uh, the Dolphins, uh, leaving the Titans at 392 for eight now, and uh, the Dolphins will feel that they can, 
they can sniff the changing room. Yeah, so it's a blessing, and I think it's a blessing that CSA has managed to get. Well, thank you for to Brexit um, as well. That CSA has managed to get. Or mo- I think all the former call packs back in. Mm. I think the only one who's not back is Colin Ingram, um, but he wants to be a T20 mercenary, which is fine. Um, but like for instance, Carl Abbott was available for selection for for the the team in Paul, mm. the Rocks, um, and they had a problem because obviously they've got Stian Fonsell, they've got uh, Yanaman, they've got Peter Malan, they've got. Um, Ishmael Khafaldin, they've got Michael Copeland, they've got so many really good players on that side, they've got Sean van Berg, and so they had to leave out um, two players, largely, probably, mostly, I think, well, people are thinking it's because of the, the transformation requirement, and they, met, they left out Carl Abbott and Stian Fincel in this game. Jesus, um, decent, decent team you've got if you can leave out those two names. <laughs> Speaking of which, have you seen the substitutes for the Titans? Yeah. Aaron Pangiso and Chris Morris. Yes, yes, yes. They would, I think they would add a lot more, a lot of value to the side. Um, but Pangiso has been really great for the Titans in that, in that T20 tournament. I remember he had to come in in that game against Mpumalanga and Mpumalanga only needed 70. Mm. And the quicks weren't doing the job that well. And Pangiso came in restricting a lot of people. Um, Tando and Tini is into ball as that one is played out to the offside. Well, spot is the first time we've seen uh, the Tini ball this morning. Mm. Are be. you the type of captain that gives your bowl an extra over after he's taken a wicket, even though he's bowled a long spell? You ask the keeper how hard it's hitting his gloves. I think um, if he's if he's foxed the batsman, then maybe. But if uh, um, I don't know, Dipper had really bent his back the last two to three overs of his spell. I'd be really I think angry. It was probably I thought bit. he was fine getting his rhythm in that yeah. last over. But anyway, let's see Tando in. The one thing I don't like is when um, captains have decided you will get five and then you will get five. And then, you know, and there's a sort of plan. A bowling by committee. Yeah, you know, written written over um, over breakfast as to exactly who's going to bowl when. That's, Quinton that's not de how Kopp you used to do that as a, as a T20 captain yes, at the start of his captaincy. You could, to the T, figure out who was going to bowl when. <laughs> um, and, 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 and it's no slight to his education or anything. It was, it was, just, it was just irritating because you kind of were like, guys, let, let's be a little bit more adaptive to the situation. Uh, it's defended it into the offside, offside by Simon Harmer mm. and a no run. So They're- the two fielders out of the ring, you've got uh, the fine leg, that's to Pavilon. Cohen Mangru is the sweeper at point. Two slips a galley, extra cover, um, who's also practicing his bowling. Kazondo is at mid off, mid on, as well as uh, Jason Smith there in the corner um, at uh, square leg or mid wicket, more, more likely. Down the leg side, great keeping from Keegan Peterson. Doesn't get anything on it, mm. um, but uh, but well uh, well kept by by Peterson. It's really interesting that a lot of our really good batsmen in this country are also wicket keepers. Mm. You know. Well, I think I think that is the um, the pressure these days with with the T Twenty circuit is that uh, there's the, the more strings you can have to uh, to your bow, the better. So mm. you, as a good batsman, you're either going to take up keeping. If you're short, or if you're Aiden Markram's height, then you take up offspin. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Down the leg side again, a little bit of an edge. No, umpire signals oh, not You've got to be confident as an umpire to even consider one of those. Uh, they are such well, look, difficult decisions to give. Well, look, the easy one was that Simon Homer didn't follow yeah. the ball. He just tried, the bat didn't follow, but his body moved. And there wasn't a hell of a lot of commitment behind the, the stumps into that appeal. I think it was a, mm. uh, an opportunity just to, uh, to clear the throat a little bit. We haven't had a good, decent throaty appeal yet this morning. Because no, it's quite interesting that in, in domestic cricket, um, Keegan Peterson's going to bat at three for the... Um, Oh, he's going to bat at four uh, for, for, for the Dolphins. Mm. And, 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 and like at, in, in Tabeja, Ryan Rickleton's keeping for the Lions today, uh, this week. And, and, and he's batting at three. Mm. And so you see a lot of the keepers batting a lot high up. I think Carl Verena in, 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 in Cape Town's batting at four for the, for the, for, for, for the Blitz. 
So it's a, it's a very interesting set because in international cricket, we try to push our wicketkeeper down as this one goes down the leg side. There's going to be a bit of a chase there and it beats the fielder um, at fine leg for four runs off the bat. Um, Corbin Bosch goes up to 40. That's his highest score here at Centurion. There's a school of thought that says maybe Kai Zonda could have put a bit of a dive in there, I, I suspect. <laughs> he, was, he didn't didn't look like he was overly enthusiastic about it. Make some tactical decisions, Simon. You yeah. don't want to get yourself injured in the second game of the four-day series. <laughs> he's already planning his two hundred. He's uh, he's look. He's a, he's, he's a, measuring his he's his twenty percent of the way to a thousand-run season. That's a uh, one way of thinking. <laughs> so thinking about it. Take a tactical decision. Boot uh, my thousand two point Yes. Uh, this one outside the off-stump for no run. Look, if any cricketer in this country scores a thousand runs, he should walk into that protest side, regardless. Which is why the whole Yanaman Milan batting at four thing at um, in, 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 in Paul is a very interesting one to note because if Yanaman's batting at four and he's scoring the runs like he did last week when he scored that double century, mm. that creates a conundrum because obviously guys like Keegan Peters and Kyle, guys like Kyle Verena need to score runs to stay in that setup. Timber Bavuma obviously un unavailable when he comes back. He's going to have to start scoring runs because that's where the Proteas need, need batsmen. Uh, this one's way wide outside the off stump and uh, not going to entice uh, uh, Bo uh, Corbin Bosch um, who has batted really, really well today. He's a really good batsman. High score here at Centurion. Uh, so... He'll be wanting to, you know, add a little bit more. And maybe he could be in the conversation for the all-rounder all spot for the protest because I do think that maybe we need to relook at that at that Vian Mulder option um, at seven mm. for the protest. Works uh, into the onside and they're going to come through for a single. And that takes Bosch to uh, 41. And the score to 398 for eight now. But we did get a message in from Anis Mohammed, who is uh, watching us on the YouTube channel. He says, Simon and Paul are on their best behavior on Super Sport. Uh, on, uh, uh, we're not on Super Sport, we're on Pitch Vision. Um, very subdued. It's not that we're subdued, I think we're just uh, recognizing the, uh, the atmosphere of commentating in the press box, <laughs> 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 where maybe our usual shouting and screaming is not necessarily appropriate. Mm. Got some news on uh, on Stian Fincel and Carl Abbott from Sean Analytics. Uh, it actually came from Sean from Berg, who confirmed that both of them, uh, Stian Fincel and Carl Abbott, have a niggle. Um, as you say, Simon, uh, it's going to be very worrying for all these other sides once uh, the Paul Rocks get them get everybody back. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, you look at you look at, you look at the the guys on the the team sheets here and. Uh, there's a real sense that that South Africa does have depth, um, uh, but we don't, at the moment, have the real sort of gun superstars that uh, that made the core of our teams in the um, in, in the early part of the century. But, know, then, but that's where you look at guys who are consistently performing. You mm. know, in the periods where you can't find a, a J.K. Jacques Callas or an Amla. You, you find guys who are consistently performing mm. um, in this Reynard van Tondos, the Eddie Moores who scored another hundred on a, I don't, I wouldn't say it's on a flat pitch, but um, Eddie Moore is just a really good batsman um, for the Warriors. And, 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 and well, this was, it wasn't a flat pitch last week here at, at, at Centurion when he scored his hundred. Um, look at for those guys, you know, those guys who are just consistently performing because you know the, the talent is there it just feels as though you just need to it's a puzzle mm. i think selection of cricket or any sports team it's a puzzle it's finding that right set of guys that right group of guys with experience and also the ability to um to be able to produce um even on bad days Tando and Tini in from the Hennepin river end and defended into the offside where mangru does the fielding it's they go easy. through for a single uh, interesting that they definitely have um that uh, that man at square leg back for for Bosch, uh, and the you know the plan is to feed him a short ball every now and again. But that man has now come up into the circle, uh, or into where the circle would be, um, into a are they not forward square leg, not even quite a mid wicket. Are they not? Uh, they don't trust Simon Harmer's pull at all. Not at all. I think <laughs> they actually you think he's going to miss time. I mean, he's close enough that they're actually looking for the flick off the pads there. Mm. He's a, he's a, he's a catching mid wicket. He's slightly deeper than a catching mid wicket. Yeah. Uh, basically, on um, 
uh, on par with where the the umpire is. Mm. And uh, not a great place to field because you're on the um, you're on square. the pitch. Yes. So uh, if you have to in, dive. any dive there is going to be like diving on concrete. Not a huge amount of fun. Well, if he spent his entire life devoting to be a professional cricketer, he should get used to <laughs> um, diving on the concrete. That's on the oh, okay, Tando, we see you. Really lovely ball there. Outside Left well alone by Harmer and through to the keeper. Yeah, well, I remember John T. Rhodes ultimately retiring because uh, the the impact on his body of of throwing himself around on the edge of the square was just was just too Self much. Self preservation, in the Simon. Tactical yeah. decisions. Last <laughs> over, you're bemoaning. Um, cars on top of my chase. Oh, but he was in the lush outfield. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Tini in again, throwing some effort into this, but defenders. Kerwin Mangru and Nora. fielding at point is a sight that I don't see that very often. Well, he's now moving out to be. But there's no doubt that the days of specialist point fielders, you know, of uh, uh, Gibbs and Ponting and Rhodes, seems to have gone. No, the way I think the Dolphins do it is that obviously your slips and your your slip your gully and your wicket keepers are the ones who move across. Mm. But there's no longer this long leg to long, fine leg to fine leg. Mm. Everybody just picks a spot in the outfield, and then if we need you to come in, you come in. If we need you to go out, you go out. <laughs> there is the bouncer from Antini, and oh, given as a wide, a little bit harsh. Yeah, maybe. I thought uh, perhaps, but, but well over his head. And that takes them to 400. So congratulations to the Titans. Yep, 400, 400 coming runs. off uh, um, off a 93 overs, 93.4 overs, eight wickets are down. The two men at bat are Simon Harmer, who's facing now, and uh, Bosch, who is on 42. Mm -hmm. That is the last week they only managed to get to 359 against the Warriors. So really awesome um, batting effort right now from uh, the Titans who... Uh, that's their strong point, you know, right now at the start of the season with, that, with, with a lot of their... Because if you think about it, Lazard Williams would be in this in this Titan side and he would be a very good um, pace option mm. with, with Junior Dala. Obviously, he's with the Proteus. Lungingiti would be here as well. Um, and so right now, the, the thing that's carrying them is their batting. So really good to see that they've managed to put up a score that they can put pressure on the Dolphins because that's what you want to see. It's a repeat of the final mm. as we go for drinks. We go for seems. drinks, so we'll probably take a, a momentary break ourselves. Uh, the score 400 for 8 after the first 50 minutes that we've had this morning. Um, the uh, batsmen in are uh, Harmer, who's yet to score. Bosch is on 42. Uh, the two men out this morning um, are Kamani, who is uh, uh, went without scoring today, and Pile who got to his 50 and then was out for 54 caught at Gully by Parsons. Uh, we'll be back in uh, five minutes or so.
Welcome back after the drinks break. Um, so we're shoehorning two drinks breaks into this uh, morning session. Uh, um, in fact, probably three. You know, uh, as a shorter ball and played into the onside uh, quite co confidently there by Bosch. Uh, but the, he'll just get the one for his trouble. He goes to 43 and the score to 401 for eight. Harmer and Bosch, uh, the two men there. Their partnership 10 runs now. Not that uh, Harmer has contributed to that at all yet. Mm. Yes, Corbin, Corbin Bosch looking to be uh, to looking at his 50. He's on 43 right now. But it's Simon Harmer who faces up to Mangru. Oh, a ball that sneaks past the um, uh, the inside edge of his bat. He might have actually got a bit of an edge on that. Mm. And strikes him on the front pad. There's a very half-hearted appeal from Well, if he didn't, there would have been a very interesting, intriguing shot. And yeah. a lovely exam question for the umpire. <laughs> yeah, you can assume that, uh, that, that that was a solid inside edge. I struggle to see inside edges even when I'm standing where the umpire is. Uh, so my chance of spotting them from the... Uh, the press box is absolutely zero, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> and I finally got myself some prescription sunglasses, which are going to make their debut of, um, on the cricket field tomorrow. Oh, ah, oh that, that got hurts. him. That must have really, really hurt. It was a proper woody sound, but he reacted like it jammed his finger against the uh, um, the bat. Oh, uh, ah. and, and luckily it's, it looks like it was just the left hand there, so. His, his bowling hand's still fine, just it's a very sore moment, a little bit of anar. He seems to be alright, considering how he reacted the moment that it hit him. Uh, I think it might have just it could shattered also be, the bat as it, much as anything it else. It could also be a sign of, a, of an aging bat, you know, sometimes mm. when it just hits a spot and it just reverberates all the way up. I mean, interesting, because Mungru's not looking particularly pacey. Um, but that's two in a row that he caused some difficulties for Harmer. You know, this one is just defended into the offside. But the thing about bowlers like Kerwin um, Mangru is that they bowl a, a, a pretty heavy ball and they're always wicket to wicket. They mm. are, I wouldn't say he, he's, he's not as reliant on, on, on swing or, 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 or the ball seeming like, like a, a Verne or anybody else, but he's going to make you think um, about, about what you do because he's very accurate um, with that and, and it comes quick off the, off the pitch. Defend it again, and Mangru does the fielding off his own bowling, and no run. Score 401 for eight. One ball remaining in the 95th over as we close in on half past 10 this morning. Mangru's been um, very, very good actually. I mean, he's taken four for. <laughs> I like um, him. I think he's a really good bowler. One, one of those guys who I don't think will, 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 could, could make it into that Proteus uh, setup, but he's very he's very good for a domestic league. Yeah, and he's he's definitely lacking a yard of pace to make it internationally. I think. But I wouldn't mind seeing him in the in a T Twenty setup. I think he's a very good T Twenty bowler, especially on those pitches in the UAE. He would have been very dangerous. Mm. Um, yeah, it's just obviously. At this point in time, I think South Africa is looking for a, a medium pacer that actually can bat as well. Yeah. Um, Although that said, I mean, we've seen um, the Australians and the South African pace attack dismantling. Um, I think Bangladesh and Sri Lanka, respectively, wasn't it? That um, mm. oh, Bangladesh. Oh my word! Oh, yeah. <laughs> so much can be said about them. So much. They're just having a. Oh, horrible tournament yeah. horrible horrible tournament to go seven and seven and three against australia and new zealand and then all of a sudden you just come to the world cup and just lay lay down oh, oh uh, edged on the bounce and pass um Bryce uh, Parsons, Bryce Parsons and he's irritated with himself um and they are going to jog through for two um not quite sure why we're getting applause Two runs take Corbin Bosch to 45. Yep. That deserves an applause. He which is really, really good. It's the massive milestone of 45. Could be his. It's not his high score. No, his high score is 59. Okay. He's definitely close enough now that he'll be thinking about that for sure. I think he's thinking about 50 right now. Just. Yes. You know, what shot gets me to 50 with least effort? Maybe it's that pull shot. Oh, there's a shorter out. ball and he really, <laughs> really gets into that. And it's a safe shot as well, played well forward of square uh, through for four. And that takes him to 49 now. Mm. 
That was a really good, well-controlled pull shot. He knew the danger was behind square. So, mm. um, and, and, and I think, yeah, I mean, Tando, the ball didn't rise as much. You know, when you have a man at fine leg and a man at square leg, you want the ball to rise. Mm, mm. And, yeah, it needs to get big on the batsman quickly, yes, doesn't it? Yeah, and that one was just really easy. Just rode the bounce yeah. and really lovely pull shot. Okay, the next question is, where can I get a single? Yeah, he's going to just knock this into the onside and, and jog through safely for, safely or, for one. Let's go to let's, let's go with the six. And interesting that they have kept the guys out uh, on the leg side. They haven't decided to come in and try and close off that single option. Uh, but this is kept outside the off stump by Antini. Good, Good bowling backing. that. Good backing up from Simon Harmer. Mm, you know, no, recognising the moment. Umpire getting into the position for the run out as well. Everyone's on top of <laughs> on top of their game here. <laughs> so no, but look, yesterday uh, there was a, a run out situation that happened, and it just was just comical. Now they do bring that square leg in, uh, which I think is the right captaincy. Mm. Don't 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 give him a freebie on the run side. If you yeah. you know if, if if he hits it over over the over the head of square leg, well well you know full play to him. This is short outside the off stump. And uh, he doesn't really get much of it. Cuts it into the ground and it goes on the bounce to Mangru. Building pressure. Yeah. A little bit of pressure. Just a bit. A partnership of 16 now. All of which has come off the bat of Bosch. Mm. I think there was one wide as well, wasn't there? That yes, went, yes, uh, went yes, over his head. Yes. So in, in teeny part of the, the game here as well, there's two balls to come. One of them will be the bouncer. And that is played into the offside. Notice the change of intent in his cover drives. Mm. He's now coming way forward, playing it on the front foot, looking for the opportunity to, if there's a misfield, he's already taken that step forward. Very interesting to see. Because previously he's been on largely on his back foot and playing it all, just coming with this one, that one foot and just mm. and, 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 and coming through. This time his weight is moving forward into the ball. So I reckon uh, Antini's going to bowl a bouncer here to keep it. No, he doesn't. He keeps there it in the channel. Uh, but it's uh, well bowled by Antini. He, 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 good over. He, yeah, really, really good over there. Um, the one that was uh, pulled through onside maybe a little bit short and it just sat up for him. But the rest of it, he, he totally read the captain's instructions and, um, and, and kept the pressure on for the last four balls of that over to keep uh, Corbin is Bosch it, Is it a rule that first slip, first slip must support the wicket keeper and just wearing the normal cricket cap, the baggy? Because everybody else here has is, is got that wide brimmed hat that we love so much um, Certainly maybe a rule in this team but if I think to the first slips who've been um, uh, been for the Proteas from Cullen and onwards were all uh, fans of the big wide, uh, wide white hat Smith and Amla? Mm. I don't think I ever saw Amla in a cap. No. Left alone. But I'd be the outside same. Outside the offside. Give me my Proteus cap in its very nice green. Yeah. And I would take that. I'd put it in a bag or go get it framed and be like, it'll never come out again. Oh, hell no. I would wear it, <laughs> I would wear it to the shower and bed and the nightclub that evening. I promise you, I would never, ever take my baggy green off no, if I'm I ever got one. For me, it's that white brimmed hat. That is the one. I My want. daughter has a pristine baggy blue. Um, she was selected for the Gauteng side what two years ago. Mm. The entire week was rained out, and she has never worn the cap in anger, and <laughs> refuses to wear it. Oh, in the back foot, good fielding there by De Pavillon at point, and you're saving uh, four runs essentially. Really good fielding. In fact, the only time she wore it was for the photograph when they were awarded it and has never put it back on again. She is almost superstitious about that, so it's on a teddy bear in her, in her bedroom. Oh, lucky teddy bear. That was an interesting day. She was awarded her cap by Keiji Rabada, who um, warned her that she was going to trip over her laces because she, her mother had bought her two meter long laces for her school shoes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only interaction she's ever had with Keiji. That's nice. Yeah, it was nice. Oh, oh, oh a short off one the back. which clatters Nothing. into the, um, the back. Was it off the back or was it off his? It helmet? hit him on his back. Yeah, yeah. He 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 sort of ducked into it, didn't he? Mm. Uh, yeah, it hit him on the hit him on the shoulder there. It was a uh, welcome, Simon Hummer. This is uh, African domestic cricket again. <laughs> We've missed you. Well, if you're going to duck into a low one, you're going to get bruised. <laughs> you know, we can't do everything for you here, man. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, interestingly, there's, there's not a man out for the catch there. Well, yes, yeah, fine leg is there, but... Yeah, I mean, Mangru is not fast enough to be I'd move edging out one down to fine leg, I don't think. Yeah. I think mean, they've got one too many fielders there. Mm. Get it, Wolf. Floats it up outside the off stump, and uh, Harmer has a bit of a, a swing at it. I think he's slightly rattled from the previous one. I'd take out extra cover, move him into the slips, and kind of tell Simon Harmer that, look, dude, it's open for you. Have a drive. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, especially when the guy is now what he must have faced, uh, probably going on 20 balls now without mm. having scored. Uh, this time he Just does get some bat on it. And there is, uh, <laughs> that, that's irritating from the bowler. A misfield at extra cover. and uh, Well, at cover rather. And uh, it is just punched through the offside. And uh, as the bowler and as the captain, you really, really want those sort of opportunities uh, taken and, and not allowing the, the batsman to relieve the pressure. Well, Harmer goes through to four. 411 now for eight. And now the fielder that covers now going back out. Yeah, I... Uh, this is not sure what's going on there. Cover way away, way He's a long way back. Ring, That's yes. a very, very weird and position. Now you've got long on and middle. Yeah. Long on and long off. I mean, they wouldn't possibly be wanting to give him the, the single, which is what it looks like. Into the offside. No run. That was yeah. very odd captaincy to move. They're farming the strike. The but he should have been giving him the single a lot longer. Well, I think I would actually quite like to be bowling to Corbin Bosch at the moment. I think that... Bosch has, got, Bosch has got things going on in his mind. And um, this is a good time to, to bowl to someone. I think this is going to be a fascinating over. Particularly if they don't get a run in the next two to three balls. Mm. There's just enough enough pressure was, was so you're built You're going to have to smell fields. blood, Mark Sackman. You have to smell blood here. And... Just trying to see who the the new bowler is here. That's uh, a very interesting bowling change. I think it's actually Ach 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 Kluti. Yeah. It is Kluter. Yeah. Achille Kluter. I would have been happy to give, uh, well, if the first thing he does, <laughs> the very first thing he does is exactly what Antini was trying not to do and give him that opportunity just to knock it into the onside and come through for a single. Great half century from Corbin Bosch, really, really needed here by the, the, the momentum multiplied Titans. He batted really well for that 50-run um, partnership with uh, Javish and Pelé after Jordan Hanman went out and he's just continuing with this partnerships with 21. He's just pushed it through seven fours in his uh, 50 runs. He's faced 94 balls. Really, really good to see him in the runs as he faces another former under-19 in Achille Kluta. Yeah, I thought uh, there was there was poor cricket going on there. Um, <laughs> firstly, the square leg was, was drifting. He was, he was further back than he was supposed to be. And whether that was uh, Intini's fault, who is the man there, or whether it was the captain's fault, for not picking up that they, they needed to not allow that Panda single. Panda must feel aggrieved. He's only bowled like two overs yeah. and he got taken off. And he bowled well, I thought. Yeah, so uh, I don't know what's going on. I understand they're looking for a wicket. Ooh, three slips and a gully now. This is quite fun. Okay, let's go. Attacking <laughs> field. Bice Parsons, third slip. Kazondo at gully. You've got a man at backward point. And he oh. <laughs> plays it through where Kazondo was before yeah. for a lovely shot. For yeah, no, I'm sorry. He just bowled the half volley outside off stump, and Simon Harmer will stand up and smash that through the offside all day. Doesn't matter how many slips you're going to put behind me, I'm going to have a go at that. Look, they are listening to him. It looks like Mark Sackman, because I did say take out that cover field and put him at. at at, at slip, but wow. Look, leave in teeny bowling though while you do it. Don't bowl half volleys. Yeah. Look, he's a actually Clute is a young uh, bowler. He's, he's just like second year out of under nineteen, so he's going to learn a lot. He's oh, and I think he's more ball, of, oh, uh, buys. This is going to go it's off wides, in fact. Mm. Given his wides over the top of the head, and comes all the way down to uh, to us. 
Poor Keegan Peterson. Marcus Ackerman comes to fetch it. Is it? No, no it's, it's not. Ackerman. It's oh, it's Sarah Ove. He comes to fetch it, gives him a chance to think about what what his captain's done. <laughs> <laughs> well, he can tell him what his captain's done because he's right next to exactly, him. Exactly. Yeah. This is quite. Does uh, Cluter call himself a chili as opposed to a, like Achilles, like the the Greek god? I wouldn't know. There's no we'll S there, to... Achilles. Yeah, it's it's. I would go a chili. Cluter. Comes in. Oh, oh that's a much peach of a ball. ball outside of Stamford. Goes past the outside edge, and uh, yeah, if he had if if he had managed to get a nibble on that, I think it all would have been forgiven. If he was a better batsman, that would have gone to Bristol. <laughs> <laughs> because you're covering that line, mm, mm. and you're defending your stump, so you're going to push out at it. So, yeah. really, really good ball. Very quick as well from Achille, who is. An all-rounder for this for this Dolphin side. Now Gully's coming out, going out to third man. You've got a, the fielder going out, point to the boundary. Um, they want this to give the single. Mm. Oh, oh he and he misses out on it. They are up for an appeal. Caught behind and umpire goes, no, there wasn't a sound. Yeah. I don't think we can hear sounds up here, but didn't look like he had gotten something on it. It effectively, Simon Harmer went, went was too slow for that one. That was quick. <laughs> that was very quick from uh, Achille Kluter. Second for the over. Yeah, I mean, if that touched anything, it was the faintest of whispers as it went, went past. And it was definitely asking the question rather than celebrating the catch. <laughs> That's uh, another ball outside of Sam. Well, considering that he... He, he gave the pressure relief ball in the very, very first ball of that over. The rest of that over was much, much better. Well, the second half of that over was much, much better. The first half was a bit of a disaster. We had four wides. We had a half volley smashed through the offside and the single that was given to uh, Corbin Bosch. It's my first time seeing this kid. Well, it's not, not. it's the second time because I watched him in the 19s. Um, uh, and I think Clute is somewhat of a find for South Africa. Really good acquisition by the Dolphin. That If that overs anything to go by, I think they've got something special in them. Mm -hmm. Du Pavilion is now going to be bowling from the Du Pavilion end. <laughs> <laughs> First time we've seen him from this end uh, this morning. Two slips, very wide, uh, between gap between them. There's a third man, a man at point on the boundary. Looks like the signal's given, but Corbin Bosch wants to go for the single. Oh. And, and he's going to come back for, for two. two. Yep, easy, easy run into mid-wicket. Worked it into an empty space there. And uh, at the moment, he's looking very, very confident and happy. Uh, it's now becoming more of a baseball field. Everybody try to protect the boundary. Um, yeah, Dolphins are under a lot of pressure right now. Really, really under a lot of pressure. You don't want this thing to go above 450. You want to keep it in there. These two wickets are very costly. Same again. And Corbin Bush is going to take the singles. Yep. Yeah, I don't think Harmer needs protecting. Look, the, the, the plan is to get Simon Harmer on strike. Yeah. You know, and bowl as many balls as him. Corbin Bush is very gladly doing that. So I don't think there's a need to get everybody open, um, give people extra singles, because I think, they, I think Corbin trusts Simon Harmer as a batsman. Mm. You know. It's not like the whole Mackay and Teeny Graham Smith situation in Sydney. And, oh, leaning edge and caught at Gully. Really good ball from Darren de Pavillon, rising a little bit to Simon Hammer. He actually didn't. It was, yeah, he tried to play that one to the leg side yeah. and just went out to Gully, but really good catch. And to be honest, having having said that he didn't need protecting, he looked all at sea of that one, didn't he? No, but he's he's a handy batsman with an average mm. of twenty batting at number at number ten. That's that's not bad, mm. you know. It's not, it's not it's not like you're, uh, you know. No, there are many number tens in the world who'd love for his average. Yeah. Um, but yes, the Dolphins finally have their breakthrough. Darren De Pavillon coming in, getting that wicket in his first over, uh, oh. back. Hummer was there for more than half an hour. Thirty-eight minutes gone. Yes. Uh, Twenty-eight balls. He hit two fours, and uh, was out for eight. Caught uh, by. Um, uh, that's as soon as caught by the sub, Bosch. Uh, 
in a substitute fielder? Ethan Bosch. Ethan Bosch, who yes. you say is Corbin's brother, huh? No, no, I don't. Not. I didn't say that, but I don't know if there's a relation. But I do think Bosch is a very popular surname in the country. <laughs> who were you saying that had a brother in this? Um oh, Ruben Harman. Uh, Jordan Harman, who scored the hundred. Oh yes, oh, yes. that's right. Ruben Harman right. has been loaned from Bumalanga to the KZN to the Dolphins, the oh, Hollywood okay. Bets Dolphins, um, for this uh, four-day series, which is pretty good. It just makes the Pumalanga team very tough. It's just the only problem is they can't get a game going in, uh, in White River because the outfield is wet there. Oh, okay. No, they were playing in Oatswood and the out, outfield is wet there. Outfield is wet in Oatswood, right? Yesterday. I'm assuming, because I'm assuming the rain we've received for the past few days came from somewhere. Oh, I suppose, yes. And it rained on November 5th, so I mean, like, honestly, like, what's going on? Well, I told you that that's, uh, um... The superstition that I accidentally started, it appears. <laughs> <laughs> I remember as a small kid having uh, fireworks displays ruined by big thunderstorms. And then um, posited that as a theory when I was still working in the weather. And now you've informed me that that, that has become gospel. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, edge that's and be gone. The end. Junior Dala didn't up. last too long and he got a quick one, a rip snorter from <laughs> Babylon. <laughs> And will he repay? Will he repay the on the the favor later on in the day, or tomorrow? But really good. That ends the Dolphins' innings. Four hundred and twenty-four. Uh, Titans' innings. I beg your pardon. Four hundred and twenty-four for nine, after ninety-eight point three overs. Corbin Bosch's average is going to get a nice little handy help because he's fifty-three, not out. He is um, indeed, and uh, unfortunately uh, lands up uh, stranded, six runs shy of his highest ever first-class score. So he's looking a little bit disconsolate. In fact, he's not bothering to walk with Junior Dollar back to the, um, <laughs> the showers. He's, he's leaving Dollar to have the walk of shame on his own. And an update from the game that's happening in Trebecha, the one, the Lions versus the Warriors. The Lions are 115 for seven. They were 71 for, 77 for one starting the day. It looks like a bowler's wicket there in Trebecha at St. George's Park. Right, so we're going to have a 10 minute break ourselves. Uh, 424 runs scored in 424 minutes by the Titans. Uh, 57 fours and two sixes. They are all out for that 424. And we will come back in 10 minutes to see whether Junior Dollar can exact some revenge.
Well, welcome back to Supersport Park, where uh, the news is that uh, the Dolphins were bowled out for 424. Titans. Uh, the Titans, sorry. What am I thinking? The Titans. <laughs> bowled out for 424. Um, and uh, uh, we, we saw uh, Corbin... Uh, um, Corbin Bosch, who was um, stranded on 53, not out, at the uh, the end of that innings, and he is going to be opening the bowling from the pavilion end. Um, obviously, they figure give a guy who's uh, got his tail up. Well, he's, one of their two, he's one of their three seamers. So <laughs> he's he's going to have to carry that um, that load for his team as well. Uh, Bryce Parsons opening with Sardo Advia, which is something that didn't happen last week. Uh, for the Dolphins, so that's going to be an entry interesting uh, thing because I think Bryce Parsons is one of the really great batsmen South Africa has, and he's also now got a he's an off spinner as well, so that's also pretty cool um, to see and exciting to see. Left hander facing, and this one is down the leg side, they're not going to call it a wide, and so a bit of a, a warm up for everyone there, really. Yeah, coming from the pavilion end, um, well, soon to be named Khao Train end. Well, no, it'll never be the uh, the car train end will have to be the head of Shravain. Because it, it literally has a car train in it. <laughs> um, Why they didn't make that car train station 500 metres closer to the stadium, I have no idea. <laughs> it's a long schlep from that station here. It's a kilometre, it's not bad. Angled across the line and defended into the offside, no run. So, fielding positions, three slips, a gully, a man at point, extra cover. You've got mid... Uh, you've got mid on uh, square leg, catching square leg slash mid wicket. Yes, uh, catching mid wicket. And then you've got Aya Bulelakam or Junior Dala there at fine leg, which kind of tells you what the, 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 the Titans yeah. are going to do in the next over. He comes in right arm over to the left hander and tight in on the hips, Ooh. works into the onside. This is going to run away for four. There's no one at that square leg area. And uh, who did you say that was? Junior Dalla yeah. out there at uh, fine leg is just going to jog around and fetch it from the boundary. And uh, the uh, Dolphins are off the mark with Sarl Erve going to four. Yes. Yeah, Sarl, um, we're hoping for a very good start. Uh, to this campaign, looking to get back into that protest site for that India, India tour. Um, even a, as a backup, he's, he's one of the. He's one of the. He's had an incredible two seasons now. Last season was really good um, for the Dolphins, who actually eventually won the the four day series. So he'll be wanting to get a good start under his belt, push that run total to probably about 700, 800 runs, and 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 then let the selectors do their job. Um, essentially give them harder questions than normal. Indeed, there's uh, lots of lots of guys who are trying to embarrass the selectors with volume of runs at the moment. And uh, he's certainly one of them. Just right in the channel there and defended back mm. to the bowler. And no run. So some uh, coverage from the other games. Uh, Northern Cape Heat against the Hollywood Bets Tuskers. That's located in inland in Kimberley. 316 for nine. Um, I know Jonathan Vandier, yes, 85, 176 balls. Rivaldo Munsam, who used to play for the Titans, 83 of 153. Um, that kind of, that, that game from a Tuskers perspective of bowling. It's Mondli Kumalo, 4 for 51. And Keith Dudgeon, a former Dolphin. Um, three for 71. Uh, Cameron Delport's actually burning right now if you're interested in, in, in following that. Um, in Potchefstroom at the JB Marks Oval, the iTech Knights scored 418. The Northwest Dragons are currently 44 for 2. Um, with uh, Heino Kuhn at the crease and Shailen Pile at the crease as well. Um, the runs, Patrick Kruger, 192 runs. Um, with Pat Van Bouillon scoring 127. Kruger scored that 192 and 216 balls, 22 fours and four sixes. Uh, this Northwest team looking a little uh, bit out of their depth so far at the start of this uh, four-day series. 
And in Cape Town, the GBET's Rocks were bowled out for 267. The Western, Western Province are currently 43 for 1. Yasin Valley is now the first man out. Uh, for province, uh, Sean von Berg taking that wicket. Um, for the Rocks, um, hardest for Yoon and Sean von Berg put a stand, had a 47. Uh, Sean von Berg and hardest for Yoon, 43 of 86. Michal Mpongwana with five wickets there, as we spoke about earlier. Uh, he's the young all rounder from Western Province. <coughs> and, yeah, as we at St. George's in Tabecha. Lines 127 for 7. Effectively, straight after the openers with Richards and Hendricks, it's just been a cell phone number um, <laughs> situation there for the Lions. Right now at the crease, Sander Magal and Malusi Siboto. He scored a handy 50 for the Lions last week, so they'll be hoping that he kind of gives them something. The Lions currently lead the Warriors by 31 runs uh, in Tabecha. The destroyer in chief, Marco Janssen, four for 33, and Tua Kayanabe, two for 37. Yeah, it's good. Ah, it's, uh, not, uh, oh, okay. Um, Junior Dada is, is stretching himself a bit, but front foot no ball. And uh, Bryce Parsons, Bryce Parsons just taking it on the body there, mm. somewhat. Um, Dada's been uh, lively this, uh, um, the first two balls of this over, noticeably quick. Mm. And then some Division 2 games, the Eastern Storm out there at Willamore Park, um, they are 383 for 7. You've had um, uh, Twyla um, scoring 124, Cesar Masondo, the wicketkeeper, 77 of 114, Matthew Arnold, the 42, very lower order uh, batting there, helping that team out. Wesley Kulentiano. Oh, that right past the outside edge. For a moment there, I thought he had, he had nicked that. Um, but uh, a good a good start here by Dala, and uh, Parsons could so so easily have found himself back in the hut there. And in the final Division Two game at the Recreation Ground in Oetoren, Mpumalanga Rhinos are 109 for one. In the first proper day's play yesterday was was uh, abandoned because of a wet outfield. Um, Schrader 42 of 77, and uh, Cook um, 33 of 30. Four. Which cook Ruben. is that? Um, it is Yassar Cook. Oh, okay. Yes. <clears throat> and yeah, Ruben Hanman is back with his Mbumalanga side in this game. So, he's no longer playing for the Dolphins. So certainly things looking like it's ha they're happening here a little bit. Uh, with um, Dala having one that's gone past the outside edge. Another one that uh, Parsons basically ducked into. <laughs> and um, uh, certainly that extra yard of pace. Uh, when compared to Corbin Bosch, just makes him look a much, much more threatening bowler. Oh, but this time, Drive. Well right done. outside the off, uh, well off done, such a classy shot. Got low down and uh, got it on the half volley and driven through the offside. That's the first decent um, off drive off drive we've seen all, all morning, I think. Oh, okay. uh, we had we had a couple in the air over over cover. But um, but that's just an absolute classic square drive. I just don't know what they what's in the water at King Edwards, but they just keep on producing left-handed openers. <laughs> I watched uh, Bryce play for um, old Edwardians in the Black Widow T20 final. Oh yes. Uh, that team had Wesley Marshall, had Shane. Well, they were playing against the team that had Shane Dadzo. Had Wesley Marshall um, as well in that team. It also had Mitch van Beeren. Uh, really, really, it was really good side, yeah. uh, and just at, at a club level, you're just sitting there going, "These guys are are, 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 are division one players," mm. <laughs> and, <laughs> and 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 they are coming up against. Um, well, look, Shane Dadswell has made his debut for the Lions now, and he was a really, really awesome player at the Wonders that night. Um, so was striking at a strike rate of 200, but Bryce Parsons opening up. For, 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 for the Dolphins is what is what we, we, we expected. Um, mm. You know, M, when the last MSL happened, he was in and around that Jersey Star squad and in a practice game, he opened up with Chris Gale and he looked better than Chris at the time. <laughs> Particularly difficult to look better than Chris Gale at the moment. I've noticed Twitter is beginning to turn against him somewhat. We just realised that he's old now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the end of that over. Yeah, I actually umpired um, Wesley Mitchell the other day um, and uh, he was... He was playing in the Saturday One team, so I don't think, you know, he was probably just getting some game time. Mm. Uh, but they, he came in low down the order, like, you know, seven or eight. 
and there was a 15 year old bowling and he put this poor kid into the the next door houses um, off that that old Ed's uh, AA strip um, <laughs> for about I think three out of five balls that he faced it was a bit of a mess and with absolutely no effort whatsoever I mean you just see the difference with those really top guys he's really great mm. he's a really good batsman gave Lutus a permanent 24 last week in an over Right, so uh, there are three slips and a gully in place, the catching point as well. And um, he's still bowling uh, around the wicket, a very tight line to this, this left-handed batsman, not really trying to angle it across him too much, forcing him to play. Mm. Titans are looking to get some sort of a break, or at least maybe two wickets before lunch, to just have a little bit more control into this game. Yeah, 15 minutes to go till lunch, and I think that will definitely be the plan. Two down in that channel. This time he does angle it across nicely. Well left by Sadal Ervia. Nine without loss. Yeah, and this has really got to be a period of consolidation for, um, for the Dolphins. They've just got to bat and bat and bat for this afternoon. Feels like it's been a fairly fair pitch as well. I mean, the, the batsman that uh, it hasn't had a lot of demons in it while we've been watching it. <laughs> <laughs> but but when the bowlers really have put the um, the effort in and and got the ball to climb on the batsman, that's when they have been able to get wickets. It's always about Centurion's always been about the length. There's a length where you just always need a hit, mm. and that's where the ball will do everything. It will, you know. There's always movement um, off the pitch or, or even extra bounce, and so. I think the extra bounce today from the Dolphins team wasn't extracted, but I do think the slightly quicker, uh, Darren Pavillon's quick, and you saw that in that in his second spell um, when he got those two wickets, he, he managed to get that extra bounce coming through. And I think Corbin Bosch might just be the guy to be able to do that um, for the Titans. Worked into the onside and no runners. The square leg is, is quite close in. He's actually, well, he's more a mid-wicket, isn't he? Um, standing well in front of Square. The ambulance is moving. Ambulance, I think, moving to the shade. Is he going to stop there? No, he's decided he's going to go and try another piece of shade. <laughs> I think the shade he had was pretty I cool. I think what they've decided to do is to go to McDonald's and get themselves a fire rand ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> it must be hot there. Sitting in an ambulance all day as a good rolling stop by Javish and Pillay. Is it Javish and Pillay there at the. Uh, Midwicket as the car train comes past on the Hennepsch River end, flying over the Hennepsch River, an altitude of about what's that? Probably 50 meters above the above the river mm. as, the, as it goes over the elevated section of the car train. I always love to sit on this side of the car train if I'm coming to Pretoria, so I can see if there's anything going on in the on the field. <laughs> I desperately try and watch. You always feel so rewarded if you actually get to see a ball. This has worked off his hip and uh, not enough on it to really go anywhere. Uh, Dada will come in and do the fielding. They jog through for a single. That is the end of the over. At the end of three overs, the Dolphins 10 without loss. Ervia is on... Oh, that actually came off the, um, the thigh pad. So uh, both batsmen still on four and um, uh, two extras. It's been an even even start, I think. There's uh, been some very good shots played by, uh, well, one each by each batsman. and um, But a couple that have gone past the outside edge, a couple that have hit, uh, hit the bat, well, one in particular that hit Bryce Parsons. <laughs> Ervia taking his guard at the pavilion end. Junior Dollar to resume. The slip fielders are Debrain, Harmer, and Mukwena with Neil Brandt at mid. Oh, yes, mid. Gian Clitter, the keeper mm -hmm. for the Titans. And, uh, and, and I think, yeah, uh, Gali is, is, is Jordan Hanman. Short and left alone outside the off stump. He watches it go through to the keeper. Keeper's quite a long way back. He's taking it below his knees each time that it comes through. Mm. Junior Dollars 
it's quite pacey, about mid 130s. Uh, mid mid 130s, maybe you can push it to 140 oh. on the odd occasion. Skids it through somewhat because he is quite diminutive. Yeah, and I think that's why it's it's hitting the keeper low. Yeah, but you also kind of feel as though this is not the best Centurion pitch you'll get. I think it's early in the season, but probably become a little bit better, especially the strips next to it. Mm might be the ones that get you but that one rises yeah that, that, one, that one was taken above uh, above waist height by clitter he's certainly hitting the keepers the keepers gloves he's uh, bending his back a little bit early on is uh is dollar and got an absolute snorter of a delivery first up from de pavilion at the end of that titans innings which uh, flew off the shoulder of his bat and was taken easily by um was it taken by the keeper or was it taken by by uh by gully yeah. she can't really remember mm. another one before was taken by gully oh so easy, the easy. Side. there's going to be two here it's sliding stop yeah look if 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 it, i think it's a little bit it, yes obviously junior's coming around the wicket to to saddle avi you can't get the ball to, to, to tail in that much. I think that is obviously it is his natural shape, but he's going to need to fight it mm. to keep it outside the off stump because that's where the rest of the field is. You know, he doesn't have a lot of protection on the leg side. Um, and if he's going to get it to come in, it's going to just be very easy for these two to just pick him off down the leg side. Oh. There we go. Definitely climbed on the batsman there a little bit and he uh, played it safely in the end down into the pitch. But uh, that's the sort of ball that uh, could, you could so easily get one that skids away over or into um, mm. the slips or the, or the gully. Twelve without loss now. Two balls remaining in this second over from Junior Dollar. Slips go down right arm around the wicket. Uh, okay. Skids his uh, half hearted appeal, um, but I don't think that touched anything as it went through. Good keeping from Kluter, with one ball remaining in this over. It's been an odd experience to be an IPL multi millionaire and be playing 12th or 13th man at a first class game with absolutely no one around well look I've got 40 million in my in my bank account I can do whatever you want I mean to be fair if I had 40 million in my bank account I'd also buy the rights to be a 12th man for a first class cricket team I think not for a moment suggesting that Chris Morris has bought the rights to be there I, I, I admire him I think, I think after the year he's had and all the drama around his non-selection and um, his ability, his availability for the pro tiers, even though he claims he was. Um, it's it's been a really weird trend this this whole year of guys claiming that they're available, but they were, and, and nobody called them back. Yeah. They ghosted them. Um, but I, I'm just like it, it speaks to the professional that he is, that he's even willing to do twelfth man duties, mm, mm. you know, and be a part of this side and still want to represent his country. Um, because remember. There was a time we were trying Chris Morris as our all round in the test side, then we moved away from him, then we went to Dwayne Pretorius, then we've moved away from Dwayne Pretorius, now we're on Vian Mulder. Um, we're constantly looking for for all rounders and guys playing, even in the in the limited oversight. And um, I think, you know, Christmas handed a little bit of a raw deal, but I, I get where the selectors were going, um, essentially, with the squad that they had. Oh, that felt awful off the bat. That, it just. <laughs> It it was a real a real clap sound like it had hit the hit hit the toe, mm. and you could you could you could f you could feel the painful vibrations up through the the handle just from the sound alone. Yeah, you know, I mean it's so fantastic that he makes the you know the decision to still be available to be you know twelfth or thirteenth in the squad. Well, I suppose you have to be if you're in the squad, mm. you're in the squad regardless of where they put you. I do think it's curious that there's no space for him in the eleven. Yeah, but I think he was coming back from injury, so yeah. got to get... Might well be that. that what today. a ball from Corbin Bosch. Um, actually, it wasn't that good. It just Bryce's, <laughs> Bryce's eyes lit up and he missed it entirely. Uh, but that's... Uh, 
bit better play at this time by Parsons, but he does catch uh, oh. <laughs> catch the man at cover who's hurting. <laughs> Ayak Domane fielded that with his chest. Yeah. Um, it, it, it bounced off the edge of the of the square and it, it popped up and he had to uh, effectively try to field that with his chest. He's hurting a little um, because he also has to bowl. He's first change. Mm. Um, because the, the Titans don't have that many bowling, quick, fast bowling options after Dala and Bosch. It's Gamane who's a, who's a medium pacer. After that, it's the two spinners. So it's quite interesting to see what Mandlin and... Oh, that's Which a four. The so that should go for four. Yeah, Dala's Easy. not going to get around there. Easy four just picked off his, uh, his toes. And... Uh, Bosch there coming around the wicket to the left-hander and angling it in and that time he was just way too straight and that's that's bread and butter for Parsons. It's actually quite interesting that a Titan side playing at Centurion are going in with, with four bowlers, three quicks, one, one, one spinner mm. and obviously Neil Brandt, the, the, the captain, who just gave the ball to Corbin Bosch, <laughs> he's, also a, he's also an off-spinner. So it, it, it's, it, it's a very interesting tactic because... A lot of the other teams want to go, like the Lions go with their, their, their pace quartet of Saboto, Magala, Sipamla and Duan Olifir. Mm. And that travels. Yeah. At time, I think Bosch just being defensive, keeping it outside the off stump and, um, you know, in that channel where he's, he's just wanting the batsman to let it go, give himself a chance to just get his, uh, get himself back into this over somewhat. comes in away from us here at the pavilion end and again in that channel where it's left alone by Parsons into the over after three overs Bosch has taken no wickets for eight runs Dahl and none for seven of his two and uh, the Dolphins now 16 without loss after five overs run rate of 3.2 still early days that's not too um, too serious one way or the other I do see that our ambulance has found itself a place in the shade where it can watch Ooh, the cricket. Nice vantage. It's looking very happy with itself to mm. have found a, a nice cool spot on nice a very hot day. Yeah. Uh, right hand is Cal Corner um, uh, from the pavilion end. He would, that, that would be a big hit. That would be 120 meters from the... Mm. Um, it's r just as we look at the scoreboard on the right under a big tree. <laughs> <coughs> Right, so it is going to be Dala to continue. He's still got his three slips and the gully in place. Cover point is quite close in as well. He's coming right arm over, angling it across the left-hander, but this one is straight oh. and on-driven <laughs> all the way through to the, um, the mid-on boundary and a oh. very appreciative round of applause coming from the, um, uh, Dolphins, the, the, the dressing Dolphins dressing room. room. Very, very good shot, that. That was just a half volley. And Saral Avia said, thank you very, very much. I can't actually see where the Dolphins players are sitting from, from us. There's a, their balcony is empty. <laughs> They're all inside watching. Would they be watching the... No, the T20 wouldn't be on yet. Is there a T20 at 12? Yeah, uh, West yes. Indies versus someone, isn't it? Yes, West Indies against Australia, where we need the West Indies to, uh, to walk out of the World them, yeah. Cup with a bang. Yeah, that would be a huge favour to us if the West Indies could burgle a win there. Well, look, if you want to start the World Cup with a song called We Are The World Champions, this is how the World Cup campaign is actually supposed <laughs> to be. <laughs> Defended uh, back to the keeper, uh, to the bowler rather, and no run. Well, look, look they've got the Spice Man. Um, what was Evan Lewis on there? They got, um, I think it was Fabian Allen as well on, on the on the... Um, on the on the on the on the record, Chris Gale. Obviously, he's a musician as well. Yes, he, he was supporting the the main man at the moment, Dwayne Bravo, who's also retired now. So yeah, it was a really lovely song. But some other team's going to use it. <laughs> and Dala just keeping it a bit shorter this time after having been punished uh, through the onside two balls ago, forcing forcing the the, the defence. 
Look, I think it's an end of an era. I think it's an end of an era that started for the West Indies in 2012. Mm. It peaked in 2016, uh, but they just couldn't replicate it. And it's actually quite interesting because obviously we're doing domestic cricket here. They haven't been able to get a domestic competition going because of COVID in the West Indies mm. because it's country versus country. Ah, yes, yeah. Uh, and so it's just now club leagues inside each country. Oh, that's a good these old men because mm, mm. that's all it is it's mm. a dad's army <laughs> um, but I was just disappointed that they couldn't bring in a quicker bowlers than the ones they had I love Jason Holder he should always be in your team but you kind of need the O'Shane Thomases, the Sheldon Cottrells you know to come through the um, who's that other kid um, yeah but they, they didn't do that in this World Cup you need to have super quick guys and then you need to have spin bowlers. Mm. You can't have guys in between. Yeah. That last ball from uh, Dala, uh, similar sort of shot that uh, Irvair had had played earlier on in the in the over, but uh, finding the mid on this time. And uh, he is trying to bowl that off stump line, uh, coming r- right arm over to the left hander. <laughs> this time, we're left alone by Sardal Irvair through to the keeper, and uh, the end of the sixth over. The Dolphins 20 without loss, the two men at the crease, Sardal Erver on 10, Parsons on 8. Uh, both bowlers have bowled three overs each, uh, Bosch has gone for 8 and uh, Dala for 11. Bosch is going to continue here from the pavilion end with his shirt hanging out. Well, something I noticed with older Unas umpiring old Eds the other day, they've become very, very particular about making sure that their team have their shirt tucked in. Well, that's, that's, the, that's the type of potential things I would expect out of all this. <laughs> um, the game has moved on. The they definitely are on. an old school club. There's no doubt about it, despite the fact that everyone plays in coloured clothing these days. Something I'm not a huge fan of. Just from a parent's point of view, it means you're constantly buying different kit. <laughs> right, so there is the uh, umpires are coming together to have a look at the ball. And we'll just see whether. Oh, if I'm the Titans, I'd want a new ball. This yeah. one's not working. Yeah, I'll give it a give it a go. <laughs> I feel so like this 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 apparatus I'm supposed to use to take wickets they, is not uh, functioning as it's supposed to. Going to keep the one that they had. Nothing wrong with it. Yeah. That's it. So yeah. sorry, Corbin Bosch, you're going to have to deal with this cherry for the time being. The other horrendous um, uh, innovation that they've had at club cricket at the moment is we play with pink balls now on a Saturday and that ball I don't, I'm not sure whether it's the lacquer on it or what but they just get hit out of shape so easily as Corbin Bosch comes in right arm around the wicket to the left hander angles it in onto that off stump and it is defended into the offside no run and um, when I was umpiring on Sunday we were noticing that the, the red ball which I mean was a four piece duke there shouldn't have been any problem with it um, was also really losing its shine quickly and the players were telling me that they reckon it's because they're not allowed to use sweat, uh, sweat and spit on the ball that uh, the ball does um, um, does does lose its shine I thought they quickly. were allowed to use sweat they're just not allowed to use saliva they're not allowed to use sweat off their brow you obviously can't stop them using sweat on their hands so you need a mm. chap with sweaty hands to uh, feel that covers and, and give the ball a shine every time it comes through to him uh. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the one guy took sweat off his brow and was using it to shine the ball. My colleague uh, warned him and the captain for changing the condition of the ball. <laughs> Much to everyone's bemusement. I, st- I stayed out of that particular fight. But, Do you uh, have, like, sanitizer? Yeah, so then the ball gets sanitized. And um, everyone apologizes and they get on with it. It's actually very interesting because essentially everyone's in the same bubble. You know, so, but I do get you don't want to transmit if somebody is a, is a, is a dormant carrier. Yeah, yeah. So that is obviously at at club level where no one's in any, in any bubble. But uh, but the those uh, they still aren't allowed to use bodily fluids on this mm. at at this level, um, yes. even though they are now all in bubbles these days. Left outside the off stump, no run. Well, it was interesting to see the level of bubble fatigue that you get. You get people doing ridiculous things like um, umpire Goh. Go, Where did Goh. he go? He, well, he went, he went and met friends for a drink oh, okay. um, or a coffee or whatever. That's um, breaking the bubble. Breaking the bubble, which is an astonishingly stupid thing to do. 
at the T20 World Cup, but the the ICC seemed to be fairly um, understanding about him. I was expecting them to read the. I mean, he did, he did get sanctioned and he's out of the World Cup now. But um, but I thought that their uh, their comments around it would be a lot harsher than they were, and they were actually quite understanding, saying this guy's been in the in bubbles for for two years mm. and was just desperately trying to get some sort of human contact. That was worked into the onside, and they come through for the single, 22 without loss. Well, we're still going to continue the bubbles for just a little while longer. You know, everyone's trying to get vaccinated this weekend. There's a vaccination drive before the fourth wave. Left outside the off stump and no run. What do you make of this? The, 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 new, the, the, the Cape Town test moving. The, 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 the New Year's test that was supposed to be in Johannesburg or, or, or here moving to, 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 to Cape Town on COVID grounds. Are they basically going to set up a bubble in Newlands and just play all the games down there like they did with the England club? I mean, it's a pity because I would like to have gone to go and see that. Because initially it was, it was set up for here. So India were going to play, I think, the tests up here. Yeah. They're going to move down south. Now everything's down south. I think it's just from an entertainment factor. Because uh, in as much as the players will be in a bubble, it's mm. a much better bubble to be looking at uh, a mountain and a beach rather than a car train station and, and a water tower. Well, I mean, if you're in a east. bubble, we can organise a photograph of a mountain. You're not supposed to be going to climb the land thing. Yes, but I think the bubble was a lot lax now. Because obviously England last year, those guys ended up playing, they were playing golf. Yeah, they went off to fan court and all sorts of things, didn't they? Look, I've got no problem with them being allowed out to go and play golf. Mm. Um, you know, I don't think we fully realise how onerous it is to be to be stuck in a um, in a hotel. And that said, if you go and tour India, um, such is the the fan enthusiasm that it's you a, can't go and walk it's, around it's outside an the hotel. Bubble, yeah. yeah. So, um, Ooh, here um, we go, uh, Tim. If you're listening, your man's about to bowl. <laughs> On our podcast, you were bemoaning the fact that he couldn't bowl. On a day four pitch at Centurion, so we're here. Here is Simon Hammer, day two. He's got Tina's to brain at first slip. Um, Seven hundred and two first class wickets. Sixty six thousand overs. That's plenty. Now look, Essex. Sorry, six, surely six thousand six hundred overs. Yeah, 6, yeah. Overs. I did, did the, math, the maths briefly in my in my head and thought if he only took seven hundred wickets, that's pretty appalling. <laughs> <laughs> so here you go. What? I think he was in the county team of the decade. So, as in a team of the top eleven players of the decade, or the team that was the best in the decade. Uh, top eleven players in the oh, okay. decade. So. Right, so he's going to come uh, right arm around the wicket into the left hander and just defend it. Here is a man at a fairly close mid wicket there. Mm-hmm. So you've got oh, a one he throws slip. it over his bowler's head. You've got one slip. You've got a fielder at uh, point, backward point. You've got that um, extra cover in for the catch, um, and you've got a conventional cover, and you've got a long off, mid on, mid wicket in on the ring. And uh, and as the ball finds that fielder at um, a cover, that is uh, Aya Kamani, who's now just still got a sore hand from that mm. previous that previous problem. You've got a sweeper <laughs> out mm. at point, as well as a fine leg on the boundary. But that's just Corbin Bosch getting some water and some advice. And there was an, inc- an incident in the very first ball of that that over, which. I thought the batsman didn't take advantage of it. It was played into this mid-wicket position. I'll continue after this ball. So he comes in again, right arm over. And he is played into this uh, offside, but there is a man at quite a close mid-off there. That uh, the mid-wicket fielded it and then threw it directly back to the bowler, but threw it over his head. And I would have thought that ball is still live. It's not a dead ball. Mm. And you, they, they would have been absolutely welcome to take, uh, to take some buzzers there. They didn't in the end. Good tight over this. One ball remaining in it. And uh, no runs yet. Oh, again, defended back to the bowler. Good, good openings um, over by uh, Simon Harmer. Maiden and... He's going to bowl a lot of overs Yeah, today. we're going to watch a lot. I'm sorry that he's not bowling from the sense that we can, we can see the... Um, 
the variations in this one a little bit better. We've obviously got uh, the, the batsman covering the ball from our perspective. There's going to be Corbin Bosch to continue from the pavilion then. Uh, but yes, the score is 22 without loss after 8 overs. Uh, that's a run rate of under 3 runs and over. Um, Erver is on 11. Parsons is going to be facing this over. He's on 9. And uh, Bosch at the moment has bowled 4 overs. Nought for 10. He's going to be coming right on around the wicket. Trying to angle it into the left-hander. Oh, a swing and a miss. Outside that off stump. Not the first one that we've had from Parsons today. Very loose from him. Very, very loose from Bryce Parsons. It was wide. Mm. Like I, I, I get I get that it was wide and and, and 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 needed to be hit, but oh where does Parsons normally bat for this team? Because you were surprised that he came he out as an opener. Four. He's not he normally mm, is an opener. He's not is he is he? I mean he doesn't yes. But he's been a little loose, I thought, fourth. for a first-class opener today. A shorter ball just left alone. Because, I, I, so, Bryce at, 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 at Gauteng was an opener. He, sometimes he would come in in the middle order. Mm -hmm. When he moved over to the Dolphins, because the Dolphins have obviously Sarl Alvia, they've got Keegan Peterson, uh, Max Ackerman in that top order. It was a question of where is he going to bat, mm. um, and also Grant Rulofsson who's who's still out, and because Grant would open with, um, with 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 Sardle. so you kind of expected him to bat where he was batting in the T20 Challenge at six or mm. or, or somewhere there five six, um, but last week he was batting at four, um, which was was quite interesting, obviously because. Um, he's a young player, you want to blad him into the side, maybe batting him down the order is what you want to do for the start. But today, opening kind of suits, and I think it's largely because you've got guys like Keegan Peterson who um, who, who took the gloves. Because normally, because that's the other problem with this with this Dolphin side, is that they, 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 their wicket-keeping situation is something that we need to watch out for, because Keegan Peterson shouldn't be your normal wicket-keeper. Yeah, he is um, <clears throat> bowling in the channel. This uh, I think trying to get Bryson to have an, a, a Bryce, uh, well Parsons to have a mm. um, another swing at one. Um, so he's he's just leaving it invitingly outside the that off stump. And at the moment, Parsons has been um, equal to it, letting it go past. Because yeah, the length that that Corbin Bosch is bowling can easily get you an edge. You know, it has mm. to be full and wide. It can't be. Ooh. Oh, that one! He really does angle in, and uh, uh, good, good final ball of the over. That, and we're going to get a, a, a physio to have a look at at Bryson. At, it did actually Bryce. hit him on the head. Yes, I thought yeah, it. I, I thought he managed to get a. And umpires calling yeah. for medical assistance and possibly. Oh uh, yeah, I did actually get him might on, be a the, on the ground. Helmet. Seems fine and happy enough, but uh, we will go through the um, the protocol. Mm -hmm. It's been a very good over, the spy Bosch. Just um, trying to wear Parsons down with, with patience and then getting that one to come straight back in at him. Physio is is that Cricket's version of killing them with kindness? <laughs> wearing a batsman down with patience? I think giving them a a half volley outside the off stump and trying to get him caught at extra cover is probably the <laughs> <laughs> killing him with kindness. Uh, he is going to um, the physio is on the on the pitch mm -hmm. and is um, while we, holding him lovingly. Yeah, while we they go through that, let's mm. have a look. Um, update from the other from the other grounds. Uh, Northern KP are three hundred and thirty three all out uh, in the innings break in Poch. The uh, Northwest are sixty one for four. Uh, Marshall on 16, Shailen Pillay 21, Heino Kuhn 12 of 28, uh, Nikki van der Berge and Senna and Mutasami are in right now. Um, in Cape Town, um, the uh, in Pal actually, the Rocks, obviously they scored 267, the Western Province are 61 for 1. Zubair Hamza is the new batsman in, uh, supporting Tony DeZorsi, who's on 25, Hamza's on 10, Yasin Valley 26. Um, elsewhere around the grounds in Division 1, 
because um, this is the other Division One game. The Lions are 158 for seven. Malusi Siboto, um, at 22 or 43, with some rear guard action. With Sisanda Magala, 25 or 52. These two have hit uh, have hit eight boundaries um, in their partnership, and so they're going on quite well so far. Um, the Lions lead by 62 runs in Kabecha. Uh, Division 2 cricket, you've got the Rhinos and Oates Hurden, they're 130 for 3. Um, Jordan Hadamon's brother, Ruben, is in currently. And uh, the wicket, you've got wickets being shared across by Sintu Majeza, Onke Nyaku, and Andre Milan, who's Peter and Yanaman's younger brother. And then the Eastern Storm are still batting in Willemo Park, 416 for 8. Um, they're going uh, strong. Dumelo Tokwe, 21 of 36. Um, he's currently batting with Kwezu Gumete, the new batsman in there. And yeah, that is the roundup. Is there another? Yeah, yeah that's, the, that's pretty much all the games right now across the different, um, across the different um, grounds around the country so every week we're going to have nine games of cricket or what is it four plus three seven games of cricket that's a lot of crickets and um uh but good it's uh it's excellent that we've got a, a thriving first class scene here in south africa mm. oh look i think the the restructure kind of helped and i think that's what cricket's going to do in south africa over the next couple of years you're going to Go into franchise system, go back to this, go into franchise system, go back to this, depending on mm. where the strength lies. It's just being able to essentially preempt it because I kind of felt that uh, we were meandering along with franchise cricket for a little bit too longer than what we needed. Um, Right, so it seems like uh, the uh, physio has given Bryce Parsons a clean bill of health. Um, didn't see whether they actually swapped out his uh, his helmet. It looks like he probably did. The physio's got a got helmets in his hand there, and we should all resume. One ball remaining in this over. <coughs> so now they are bringing a man into uh, back pad, which is the first time we've seen that today. And another update from a ground not too close from here, that is in Abu Dhabi. Uh, Australia have won the toss and chosen to field first. Bog standard for this T20 World Cup, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> it is, it is, it is. Um, Hayden Walsh Jr. comes in for Avi Rumpel, who looked every bit of his age in that, in that <laughs> last game. Final ball of the over. There is a back pad in. He angles it in to his... Um, the stumps of the left-hander got a bit of swing into the left-hander that time and uh, well played by Parsons it's the end of that over an over which took a long long time with all of the mm -hmm. uh, breaks uh, Bosch has bowled five overs now at Nord for 10 Palmer I'm sure will continue after his uh, his maiden over and I suspect this will be the first of maybe 40 overs we'll see him bowl today very good 45 minutes from the the Dolphins uh, pair mm. just Holding off the fort, you know, that's what you want, obviously, coming in with an hour to go until a break. Just, you know, don't lose wickets, consolidate, and then on the other side of the break, you, you want to just, um, you just want to put the bowling side under pressure. Um, Simon Harmer is in with one catcher, that's the slip uh, behind him, and lovely one. And quite an attacking off field as well, uh, they, they've got a man at... Um, quite a short, wide mid off. I'm not even sure what you would call that that mm. position, but he's on the square. Yeah, he's a catching. He's, um, he's a catch and cover, maybe? Yeah. Yes. But he's quite straight for it. it oh, it went straight to him there for a moment. Um, but this is squeezed out to cover, and they get through for a single. Mm. Lovely round of applause from the Dolphins team, just always being focused, even yeah. though they're following their guys enthusiastically. Mm -hmm. And this will be the first time that uh, Parsons gets to see Harmer in this, this match. I'm assuming he's faced him before, he must have shown as that is outside the off stump. And I don't no think run. he has. <laughs> I honestly <laughs> don't think Boris Parsons has faced Harmer before. 
Unless if it was in the, the T20 knockout, but I don't think they would aid each other. Parsons have played MSL? Uh, no. No, it was no, sort no. of before his time, wasn't it? it? No, it was right around his time. He yeah. was he was a schoolboy actually coming from Cares as part of that MSL team. Mm. But he was, he was, essentially he was uh, batting, he was, he was, he was like a backup cover um, batting uh, assistance for the team because when they okay. needed to play um, uh, 11 versus 11 they called some of the youngsters and he was one of the youngsters they called up uh, okay. and he then got to open with Chris because Timber wanted to come in at 3 Speaking of Chris our co-commentator does say that he is at Centurion said he would come and find us I don't know where he is <laughs> Centurion's a very large place Chris Yeah, very very large End of that over, um, very tidy over from Simon Arm. He's only gone for one run in his two overs. Um, it is quite interesting because you want to obviously slow the game down as the Titans, but not at this stage. You, you're going to try and, 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 and take wickets, but they don't have the firepower. They don't have the, the fast bowling stocks as yet. Because mm. obviously when the Proteas come back, uh, probably in that week of the 18th of November when they play in Cape Town against the Six Gun Grill uh, Western Province that's probably when you might see a, a Lazard Williams come out and, and assist but they're going to have to give up that batting depth for some, 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 some quick bowling which I think they should have done in this game as well mm. It's just a brief break in play because Saul Erdvier has decided to retake his guard. I think it's been quite a while since he's batted down that end. Um, and so just settling himself in before he faces Corbin Bosch, who comes in now right arm around the wickets to the left-hander and again angling it in, but it has worked straight to that man at mid-wicket, quite close. Um, he's, what, six or seven uh, pitch, pitch widths away from, uh, from the batsman and he feels well. No run. Oh, Chris has let us know that he's sitting behind us. There he is. Hello, Chris. Chris will be joining us <laughs> after lunch. <laughs> and he's like a statistician extraordinaire. Exactly. Unlike the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> and you, of course, are going to be on your way yes. back to our studios yes. to, uh, to run up our... To my house and to make sure that we have a broadcast on One World Sports Radio. Theatre of the mind, Paul. You're back to the One World Sports Radio studios, <laughs> which is wherever our Mac happens to be. Yes. Even if it is in your lounge. <laughs> it would have been fun if I brought it here. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would have uh, probably pushed the points into CSA's nose slightly more than we wanted to be. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was yeah. So we got that going, and then there's rugby afterwards. Um, if 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 we don't go to stage four load shedding. Ah yes. Yes. So we'll be in that second innings. It'll be rugby, cricket, or well, mostly cricket with rugby updates, and then after that, it'll be rugby all the way with um, uh, Dave and Otto. Yeah, we hope it'll be a celebratory uh, atmosphere in the Guys, last half an hour of the cricket. Whoever was the sporting god who decided to have all the schedulers schedule this weekend of sport <laughs> must be because there's so many. There's the Egyptian derby, Zamalek Al Ahli, the Milan derby. You've got the Soweto derby, the um, the Manchester derby happening today as well. You've got the, 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 this this culmination of Group One in in the World Cup, uh, as well as the Springboks playing, and then all this other autumn autumn nations rugby. I think New Zealand play um, might be England today or Scotland. No, no, no. Because um, they played Wales last week and the Springboks play Wales later today. Oh, there was a fire alarm at the Springbok Hotel this morning. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, that's well played by the Welsh. <laughs> I'm, I'm amazed that's not almost like just absolute standard for uh, the, uh, the hotel of the visiting team. Fire alarm at five o'clock on match day? Yeah. Oh, five. No, make it three. They need a struggle to get back. As a no ball there. No ball, which would have been a front foot call, I think. Mm -hmm. We don't have that, the, 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 the third umpire calling it from here. It nope. has to be happened there. Yes, Simon, as an umpire, do you train your eyes to look down, then look up? Yeah. Or is it so, just a, 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 straight, a steady look through, but you can see the line? No, you, you definitely look down and look up. 
Um, so you'll see the the umpire actually stands quite a long way back. I mean, he's a good two or three meters back from the stumps mm -hmm. there, which is something that has changed from umpiring in the early 80s, where the guys stood right up against the stumps and actually crouched down. Mm. As he comes in again and shows his frustration at the no ball by sending a bouncer down the batsman's end. It wasn't the batsman's fault, mate. Um, but yeah, so you 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 watch the front foot, and then what you often tend to do is, if the guy is close, you watch him all the time. Mm. If he's if he's easily within the crease, then you, you maybe focus down the other end. and But you will sense if something changes, if he starts moving back up again. Um, and then you will start focusing on that front foot. But generally, you always, yeah, you, you focus on the front foot and then look up immediately to the um, to the batsman. I was actually thinking about that earlier this week, I'll tell you in a moment, as he comes right on around the wicket into the channel, no run. That um, I would like to see some research done about um, eyeline from umpires. Uh, it doesn't really impact too much when you are umpiring at the bowler's end. But mm -hmm. if you are umpiring at square leg, you generally have to focus on the ball or the wicketkeeper's gloves or the back foot of the, um, of the batsman. Mm -hmm. um, and particularly if there's been a couple of stumping chances and so on, you, you, lo you watch that back foot. And I've found that if I'm watching the back foot, I can't see where the, the keeper takes the, takes the ball. Even though you're standing 20 meters away, you would think you could see see the whole mm. the whole scene. You can't. You, you're watching one thing or the other. And I got into a situation the other day as Hama comes in and it's defended into the... Well, uh, oh. they get past that man at the short uh, cover and they're going to jog through for a single. Where the keeper had been taking the ball in front of the stumps. And so I started focusing on, his, uh, on her gloves and missed a stumping because it happened quickly. And just as the back foot came in, I, I hadn't been watching to see what to what extent the batter had, had lifted that back foot. Um, and so it's an interesting debate, you know, where do you, do you, do oh, you put your eyes on? That's Again. how you play Simon Harmer, who's not getting any turn, just bowling it very full. Uh, a lot of arm balls from him. Um, and yeah, just get to the pitch of the ball and, and play it out. Saral's been listening to the Proteus spin um, discussions in Pakistan because he was there too. Oh yes. <laughs> so he knows. Get to the pitch of the ball. Defended into the offside and a no run. Yeah, it's been a good solid, um, solid start by these Dolphins batsmen. They've had one or two chances where they've uh, had a bit of a flap at one outside the off stump. Yeah. Certainly uh, Parsons has. I think Edvia has been quite, um, quite safe. Uh, mm. And again defended and no run. They've got about eight minutes to go till till lunch. So I think uh, they'll be very happy to shut up shop at this stage. And I think this is exactly what uh, the bowling from the Hampshire Bay end is going to look like for the rest of the afternoon. With various <laughs> variations happening from the pavilion end. And now they do decide to bring in a bat pad. That is Grant McGuena. Not quite sure why he wasn't there all along. Mountain of a man to be uh, fielding under the helmet. He's got some big hands. Not necessarily a high mountain, but certainly a wide one. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean that in the muscular sense. Yeah. He's quite close in there as well. Yeah. Part of the, I think he's a group of, of, of Soweto cricketers who are, are playing in this round of of, 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 of four-day series games. That is the end of that over. They brought the bat pad in for just one ball. End of Harmer's third over. He has gone for three runs. Bowled just the one maiden. And the Dolphins now 26 without loss after 12 overs, going along a, a fraction over two runs and over. Edvia is there on 13. Parsons on 10. I don't expect we're going to see too many fireworks between now and lunch from the Dolphin side, but certainly they will attempt to get some fireworks going from the Titan side because they're bringing Junior Dana into bowl from the Pavilion Inn for the first time today. Look, I think for the Dolphins, their plan would be to hold this game until uh, the Titans go to bowlers four and five because that's where they might be able to get a lot of joy um, out of this game. Essentially, the Titans just want to try and, and, and create a moment where they break this game open. <laughs> um, and, and that's a couple of quick wickets. Um, but, but it's not happening. So up until then, you try to dry it up. And that's why Simon Harm is so important to the side. And I think he might even bowl for the rest of the day today. <laughs> I think you're quite right. 
Oh, oh wow. such a great line. Really, really good fourth stump line by Dala and angling into the left-hander. So it's one that you, as a as a batsman, you have to be really confident to leave because that just nibbles back off the seam even slightly and it's going to hit the top of off. You see, now, the ball that was tailing in previously from Junior Dala mm. to the left-handers was always going to middle. So you, mm. you it was forcing the batsman to play. If he's now getting the ball to tail in just outside that off stump, that brings in a lot more questions for the, for the batters. Yeah. Now so have a, probably has to play the next one that does that. A shorter one and he does play it into the offside. Yeah, you're quite right. So we saw uh, Dala get driven through the onside a couple of times uh, earlier on this morning because he was that little bit too straight. But that that line was absolutely perfect if you're a, right, a right-hander right bowling around the wicket to a left-hander. With his natural natural shape of, you know, into the, into the left-hander. It's um, it's a really really lovely line, and I'm sorry that he actually bowled that second one slightly shorter. I would like to him actually to put just it back there. Yeah, just just put it back on that shorter, just short of a length. No, he's going to miss that one, Junior. He's not going to play it that one. Yeah, Even so. though I would have swatted that to point. <laughs> You don't typically be, uh, find yourself batting four minutes before lunch in a, on the second day of a first-class match. Well, as an opener for a <laughs> first-class match, but yeah. kind of gives you the levels. Mm. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. But I do think if it wasn't four minutes to lunch, I think he would have sought to try to swap that too, yeah. because that ball wasn't that great. Edvia has left very, very well today. Parsons, I think, has been a little bit more in- inclined to have a go at ones outside the off stump. Okay, a straighter one now and worked into the yeah. onside. There is a man down there at fine leg who goes down into long barrier. Just, just disappointing that he didn't want to give you that fuller one again. Indeed. I think he's maybe trying too many different things here. Yeah. No, because he bowled with fuller. It was great. Then he brought his, his, his length back and uh, a little bit uh, after that. And it just hasn't, ba- mm-hmm. hasn't worked. And he's just been dragging it back all the time. Um, but we'll give him we'll give, we'll give him a pass. It is this, the, the first over of his first spell. But that first that ball oh, it was lovely. Yeah. And I think now with Parsons facing, who has had a, but a, a been far more inclined to have a drive outside the off stump yes. than uh, Edvia has. You've got a field for, for you to bowl full. So just try try to. That's not going to work off the back foot. Yeah, there's a man at cover and no run. He has got a man under the the lid as well. So I think maybe. The plan hadn't been to nick off. They were actually hoping for one that is going to come off the splice and go to that catching square leg or forward short leg. But you can try and put out a plan. And so far, I don't think there has been. You know, yeah. you can bowl a lot of full ones, get them coming forward, get them coming forward, push them back, you know, get get them going. And, and, and right now, for the past, this past over, there have been four balls that have been short. Yeah. One's been very full. The rest have been too short. Again, um, just defend it off the back foot. So is that the end of the over? Yes. yes, that is the end of his fourth over, Not for 12. 27 without loss after 13 As overs. 12 o'clock, how train goes past. Yes. Two minutes remaining, so this is probably going to be the final um, final over before lunch. Farmer to bowl. I'd be kind of tempted to bring in one of the other off spinners for this final ball, before, the final over before lunch, see if you can't tempt a rare shot. I'm sure that Harmer is well happy to be settling into his rhythm all day from the Henups River end. Edvia will be facing, he's on 14. A man under the helmet at forward sh- short leg. Tienus de Brain is at first slip. Uh, they are just arranging where there is going to be someone. I think it's Dala himself actually is dropping all the way down to the um, square leg boundary which is odd because there's been absolutely no indication that the um, field is one the batsmen want to sweep at all this morning there is the sweep oh that's gonna very go fine and it is good for runs it was a, a, a ball that was drifting down the legs the, the leg side from Harmon not a great ball at all um, easy yeah, runs very, to close out the, the session Takes the score to 31 without loss. Edvia to 18. He would have been happy to have that before going into lunch. Oh, defended back down the pitch. 
That's a nice touch. Chris Gale and Dwayne Bravo led the team out to the middle today, so that's really good because it's probably their last games mm. as, as as international cricketers, and then they go back to being the members of Dad's Army. How many last games has, has Chris Gale had? <laughs> <laughs> More than Evander Holyfield. Simon, don't tell me you're going to see him next year in 2022 in Australia. Dude, I don't know. I don't know. That can't be it. He's retired about 15 times. Played into That's the other side. There is a man there, so they won't take a run. One ball remaining before lunch. I'm sure this will just be dinked back to the bowler. It's defended into the offside where and there is a sliding is... stop. Thank you, gentlemen. No. No, we're going to continue. Unless lunch is a Half past 12, surely not. Oh, okay. Sure. Oh. Right, so that is the uh, end of uh, Mpo Matlani's, um session. Thanks very much for joining us, Mpo. And uh, we look forward to hearing your dulcet tones uh, later, <laughs> later on, on this afternoon. Please, uh, please take your winning ways uh, to the protest. <laughs> And I'll be joined shortly by Chris TV, who um, is also one of our 1WSR.com uh, commentary team. Junior Dollar to uh, resume from this pavilion end. Right arm over the wicket this time. Oh, and he gets one to climb on Parsons, who tried to work it into the onside. Got himself in trouble there, and that really could have gone anywhere. And I think uh, Dollar will feel slightly aggrieved that that didn't go to hand. Good afternoon, Chris. Good afternoon. On about 45 minutes earlier than I anticipated, just because I think Mpo had engagement, so I'll be yeah. with you for the, the next couple of hours or yeah. as soon as... Mpo has, has, has to go and um, light up the fires of the 1WSR.com, uh, well, guerrilla cricket. Um, uh, I want to say laboratory. What are those things called? Studio. Right. Yes. As Dala in again right arm over, angling it across the left hander. This is worked uh, into the offside through a gap, and uh, they will uh, come back for two. There is a good diving stop there between the two fielders, uh, neither of whom I can see from here. Um, and I've left my binoculars a couple of rows back. But I'll definitely have them for the next. You session. are absolutely welcome to go and fetch them. I'm. Uh, uh, it was. Um, Pillay, I think, and uh, and the man who was doing the fielding was Corbin Bosch. Things feeling like they're beginning to happen a bit in this over. There's a catching leg gully, which is a very unusual position for um, for Parsons. And they they trying to get it up into Parsons' ribs here. He's been hit once already today by Corbin Bosch. And um, and so I think they're looking for that one that is going to get worked into the onside. There is the man under the the, the lid at I think bat, bat Grant McQuen has been under the lid. Yes. So far, he's on 93 first class catches. Oh, so wow, there's a chance okay. we see him pass 100 at least this season. It would be remarkable if he were <laughs> to do it in this game, I suppose. There's a, a a leg a leg gully which is not a position that I've seen very often, and that worked off his hips uh, quite comfortably actually down to the boundary where um, it is going to run away for four and I would say that's probably odds even you want him at least thinking about playing that shot and hoping that something's going to go wrong, to, wrong with it yeah I think that's exactly it the batsman about to go into into the break are probably thinking to play conservatively so by bowling a lucid delivery you may be catch them in between mindsets but that was put away pretty expertly yeah yeah no real no real problems there but we have seen him get into trouble playing that exact shot one that hurries onto him slightly could could get him in uh, into problems and this time uh, a, a fuller ball which has just worked very very easily through forward mid wicket that's going to run away for four and uh, i think the pressure definitely shifting uh, towards the titans here at least early on. I mean, yeah. there's, there's still a lot of cricket still to be played in this innings and in this match. You talk about Parsons falling to that shot. Maybe it's uh, just a left-handed opener for the Titans thing. I've seen Quinton O'Cock do that 
on a number of occasions. Obviously, he's brilliant off his <laughs> hips, but it also seems like every time I'm watching, if he goes out, that's that's the method that he, he chooses. Yeah. Quinton goes through a stage where he gets confident around about the 15 to 20 run mark in his innings and becomes incredibly vulnerable to hitting it uh, down deep with Wicket's throat, doesn't he? Oof. Oh, better directed ball, and uh, Parsons just drops his hand and lets it go through to umpire, no, to umpire, to wicketkeeper Clitter. That is the end of that over. Five minutes to go till lunch. Dala, been a little bit expensive, not for 22. He has caused some, um, some troubles for the batsman as well today. Yeah, and that last over doesn't help the economy. Uh, it was obviously looking a little bit better before that was indeed generally it's actually been quite a slow start by the the dolphins they've been very very cautious this morning um but they have hit the odd bad ball for, for four uh Edvio is going to be facing this second last over i would have thought before lunch unless they really hit a couple of boundaries here oh he has a sweep at this which is going to run very very fine it is going to come all the way down to the boundary just in front of us and um, off the face of the bat, so that will be given as, as runs. 45 without loss, and suddenly things beginning to, um, to flow the Dolphins' way. I would have thought they actually probably would like to delay the lunch break by half an hour once they've, they've got into yeah. this sort of form, eh? finally got their eyes properly in. We've seen it happen a million times, where a batsman looks in fantastic form just before the break, and they've come back 45 minutes later <laughs> after a decent lunch and lost it entirely. Exactly. If we're facing again, they've taken um, uh, McQuenna out of that bat pad and now put him into a, a short third man, a uh, short fine leg rather. He's defended off uh, his own bowling by uh, by Harmer. Edvia looking good, 22. Parsons on 20. Again, just defending. Collected by a man at short mid wicket. It'll be interesting to see throughout the season how much turn we get out of the Super Sport Park track. It's mm. not something we used to see in here, but if you think of the fact that they have Simon Harmer and then Aaron Pangiso sitting on the bench in this attack, mm. you, you probably want to optimise that and give them as much of a chance as you can. It does feel like a team that's slightly um, underclubbing from a bowling point of view. I mean, they're obviously expecting Harmer to bowl 40 overs and innings, I think. Yeah. Oh, there's an attempt to work it into the onside, but uh, a half an appeal. I think it was probably a little bit high and probably going down leg. They're missing, yeah, some decent bowlers that they've, for one or another reason, aren't on the side today. Dan Khalim, I think, is injured and replaced by Pile who, for the, as the extra batting option. And then mm. Chris Morris, we saw him running drinks earlier when the ball hit the helmet. So he rocks onto the back foot and plays this out into the offside. There is a man who's sweeping in the deep there. And he sends it uh, back in. That is the end of the over. Palmer has now bowled five overs, not for 12. Dala, five overs, not for 22. And uh, Corbin Bosch, not, uh, six overs, not for 11. Um, yeah, I mean, do, so Paul hinted that, um, that Morris might have been still recovering from an injury and that's why he's running drinks it seems like a, a curious uh, yeah it decision. could well be the most expensive bench player possible I mean the Titans aren't having to pay him what <laughs> Rogers done paid him I mean I suppose he is a senior player in the squad so he's he's fulfilling a, a mentorship and a coaching yeah. role as well um, but it did seem it did seem curious I, I think that this this Titan squad would look would look quite a bit more rounded with uh, if Morris was was coming in at uh, seven and bowling a bit. Dollar back of a length and no run. I think this will be the last over before lunch. Yeah, I guess Junior Dollar can dictate that depending on how energetic he is getting <laughs> back to his. And they are going to uh, they're going to take on the throw, come back for the second. Good running there by the batsman, in particular uh, Sadal Erve, who is running back to the uh, the the danger end. Was he holding his hamstring ever so slightly there? Oh, no, he was just re readjusting his, his pads. Yeah, we can't have another Titans opener go to a sort of <laughs> groin injury. I think that's why Dean Elgar's out. Yeah, I was, uh, at the level that I umpire at, there's often um, guys who don't get much exercise through the week who are coming in at sort of seven or eight. 
with youngsters batting at the other end and uh, torn hamstrings or pulled hamstrings are a regular occurrence on Hoppers 3 on a Saturday afternoon. My dad tore a hamstring trying to run and stop a gate from closing on a car once. Oh. Just, yeah, probably hadn't run in the five years previous and then that 10 minutes, 10, sec- 10 meter of a sprint. <laughs> Yeah, my, my, my daughter gets very frustrated batting with adults. She says they don't want to run, Dad. And there's a, a junior in her team as well, and she loves it because she knows if she calls her for a, for a single, she's going to come. I was listening to Jared Kimber's podcast recently and how important, especially in top-level T20s, the fast runners have become. And you almost want to pair batsmen off mm. with other players who can run at a similar speed because there's yeah. no point in having, like in the Caribbean Premier League, someone like David Warner opening the batting with Rakeem Cornwall yeah. who did open in a couple of those games because then you lose part of that edge that David Warner had you know of of how much better the running is when you compare you know Saturday 2 or 3 to a Sunday Prem game the running is so much so much better it's one of those things that gets gets noticeably better as the guys get further up the, the, the level yeah. well this has worked into the onside and they just jog through for an agreed single and that is the 50 run partnership that has come up it's uh, come up in 70 minutes 103 balls uh, Advia has scored 26 of those Parsons 21 three extras and I think that that is exactly what the Dolphins would have aimed for at uh, when they started this innings to be 50 without loss at lunch uh, they would well, one ball left we don't want to say take that. without loss too <laughs> but we can all celebrate in a moment Right, I'm around the wickets, solidly defended as he gets in behind that. Doesn't even wait for the keeper to, uh, the the, bowler, the fielder to collect it. Immediately puts the bat under his arm and heads off for lunch. That will be um, us for the next 40 minutes or so. And we look forward to joining you uh, after we've ourselves gone and had a bit of lunch. Make it quick, I don't want, like, yeah, it's fine, I'll be able to score for you, it's fine.
Welcome back to Supersport Park, Something just to the left of us here at Supersport Park. Um, if you have just tuned in, the news is that the, um, the Titans were bowled out for 424 um, uh, with, uh, with Bosch left hanging on 53, just six runs shy of his highest ever first class score. And uh, despite a few, um, a few worrying moments, uh, generally the Dolphins have uh, gone along very, very nicely. This opening pair of um, Sadal Erve and uh, Bryce Parsons. And it is going to be Parsons uh, to face Pamani, who is this is the first ball he's um, bowled this morning or today and straight away played into the offside. And uh, they're going to run through for two. So the Dolphins got through to 50 without loss before lunch, uh, absolutely ticking all the boxes that they would have wanted. No ball there, I think. A no ball called as well by umpire Brad White, who is standing at the head of Sugar End. Uh, the other umpire is Anna Jacobs. He's here on the northern end, the pavilion end, um, which is where we're sitting. Uh, Chris, welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now I'll get to do a whole full session. <laughs> Yeah, we, uh, you popped in with about 10 minutes to go, didn't you, in the, in the before lunch? Here comes Kamani, and again, this time it is a legal ball and angled across the left hander, and no run. I think probably odds even at the moment. Um, obviously, 424 is a big first inning score in anyone's book. Um, but the Dolphins, having managed to get to lunch uh, without losing wickets, would very much have been the first um, first tick. There is a, a silly Milan in place, which is something you don't often see at this level. Oh, he's made a swing and a miss outside of the off stump. Parsons was guilty of this early on in his innings uh, before lunch as well. And I think maybe just needs a little bit of time to settle himself in again. Yeah, I don't know how much faster that was in the previous delivery, but it got far more carry. The previous one dribbled through to Clutter at Wikikeeper. That one hit the gloves really hard. We were talking about sort of in the balance. The Dolphins will want to avoid something similar to what happened last week, where they managed to bat very well, bowl quite well, but just sort of ran out of time mm. in the end. These four-day games, the dynamics are slightly different to the test matches in terms of trying to get the game completed and get a proper result. I think it's very, very important to be on top of your points as well, isn't it? Um, I don't fully, I haven't really sort of dug into how the points work in um, in this latest iteration of four-day cricket, but uh, but even with a draw, you've got to make sure that you're, you're on top of the point system. And I know uh, with a requirement to bowl 16, um, 16 overs an hour, um, that is one of the places you can lose points um, on the log. And uh, certainly yesterday, the uh, the Dolphins were under a little bit of pressure to get their over rate up, and as a result, were bowling spin from both ends for a little while. Hamani in again, and a sort of fairly heavy ball that is just hit back back to him. My Parsons didn't really get much of that at all, and no run. Fifty three without loss. Parsons is there on twenty three. Edvia is on twenty six. But as used before lunch, Harmer bowled um, five overs. We actually thought we would see nothing but uh, Simon Harmer from the, uh, the head of River Inn. So interesting to see that Khamani has uh, started the bowling um, after lunch from that end. Right arm over the wickets and angled across the left hand who just drives it out to mid-off. No run. Yeah, that's the beauty of having a spinner of the quality of Simon Harmer. Is you can just have him on for 40 overs in an innings just non-stop perhaps mm. they're looking to change ends perhaps they saw that the pace was offering a little bit more in his first few overs but. yeah he never really seemed to get the batsman into trouble um in these five overs whereas uh, bosch certainly did he he rattled uh, parsons once on the helmet um dala had had a couple of a couple of good deliveries that uh, um went past the outside edge oh there's a well, I think that was actually the leading edge. I thought for a moment that might be worth an LBW shot. But it seems to have just got the leading edge and gone on the bounce to uh, the man at first slip, who I think is Tish Stabrain. Oh, Tina Stabrain. Tina right? Stabrain, yeah. Um, he was definitely first slip before we went to lunch, so I'd mm. imagine he'd, he'd still be in that position. It is going to be Corbin Bosch to continue the bowling from this uh, pavilion end. So I think you're right. I think there's... They've had a look at the pitch, realised that there's not a hell of a lot of turn. 
and so um, an opportunity to maybe have a couple of overs of seam while everyone is still fresh um, will be the way to go. Yeah, bowlers are so at the mercy of the pitch, especially spinners. Like their seamers on a, a dead pitch can still make something happen on the right day. Spinners, if it's not turning, that's really, really <laughs> going to be a long day slog. Indeed. Two slips and a gully in position. There's a conventional point, conventional cover, and a slightly wide mid off. Fairly straight mid on. Mid wicket is uh, within the ring. And it's just in the channel outside the off stump, no run. And there's a man at a uh, deep fine leg. Um, so very bog standard field. This is the sort of field that you use to uh, to teach kids about where what the names of the of the positions are. Everyone exactly where they should be. As the car train comes past. Yeah, bit of free cricket for the passengers. <laughs> It's telling them poor. I always like to sit on that side of the car train so I can I can have a look, see if there's anything interesting going on. It's better from Bosch just forcing Elvia to uh, to play. He's looked very solid today. Um, the chances have mostly been given by by Parsons. I think Parsons is a slightly more aggressive batsman, or certainly a, a less patient batsman. I think is probably the um, the truth. But they batted it more or less the same sort of rate. Edward is there on 26, Parsons on 23. Yeah, you could almost argue that they're competing. Oh, no. <laughs> Ignore everything that I said there. <laughs> but pulled in front of square and uh, it goes past the man at uh, that mid-wicket and away to, to the boundary. Good, solid shot there by, by Edward. It was... It was banged in short, but just sat up and waited to be hit. Yeah, I think, I mean, Parsons is not in competition for an international opening sp well, um, spot. Yeah, he's not at this point in no. his career. So I'll over, I guess. He's, like a lot of South African openers, if he's going to get a chance, it's going to be quite late in his career. He was the reserve opening batsman when we went to the West Indies recently, but I think he, he, even he would have understood he was unlikely to get a game there unless one of Markram or Elga went down. You don't see young opening batsmen getting opportunities in the national side. I think that's a position where you really want a senior head. Mm. No, I agree. And they've, you know, they've, they've cycled various people um, against Dean Elgar over the years, but I think certainly second yeah. with Markram, I don't, I don't see a, um, a change until, um, until I suppose Elgar is the next, the next one to possibly retire yeah. out of that, that process. And so. the other players that they've cycled have all been of that experienced age. I think recently, obviously, it's been Peter Milan, Stephen Cook, Hanno Kun are the sort of players that have opened when one of the this normal Elga and Markram is not available. And then they were all over 30 when mm. they made their debut. Right, I'm around the wickets, uh, but just in the channel outside the off stump and left well alone by Parsons. In terms of young South African openers, obviously we've had Graham Smith and Ada Markram. I think Avi de Villiers, in, since readmission, has been the youngest South African test opener. Mm. He was just 20 when he made his debut. And that, and that, I mean, you don't think of Avi de Villiers' as career's famous test opener. <laughs> Avi de Villiers, he very much changed roles. I think that's just identifying talent and finding a way to put them in the side. Yeah, I mean, when you, those names you mentioned were, were or are all exceptional, exceptionally talented cricketers who, who would have been selected to open for any test team in the world while they were in their um, in their prime um, maybe not necessarily Markram but but certainly uh, Smith and and and, and de Villiers <coughs> there's I mean there's a lot of steady batsmen who are making big runs in in four day cricket at the moment yeah there's a lot of competition for that opening spot I mean we saw Eddie Moore last week score a fair few runs I know a lot of people are Hunting his name on social media as a possible replacement in that side. Yeah, it's not our opening pair is not something that I'm desperate to replace on the Proteus side. To be honest, I think um, we've got two guys who are who are solid and um, and certainly in Elgar's case, I think would probably make most teams in the world. Yeah, I don't know exactly what Elgar's injury timeline is looking like. I think he has an adductor tear. And that can be a bit of a mixed bag. One hopes mm. that he's he's fit and has a bit a few games under his belt by the time India come here at the end of the year. In that channel across the right hander from Khamani, 
and uh, no run offered, or no shot offered rather, and no run received. 31 um, is Elvia, Parsons is on 23, the score 58 without loss. Going along now at three runs and over, helped by that four in the previous, um, in the previous over. Just the two slips in place, the gully has been moved out. He's actually in a catching cover now. And second slip far more forward than first slip. Mm -hmm. Almost exactly where the ball went in the previous over. You would have had to get quite low that, that the outside edge that went to the second slip region. Yeah. I guess it makes sense. The thicker the edge, the more it's going to slow the ball down. And so second slip can afford to be a, a bit further forward. I'm yeah. not, uh, quite new to this, this Titan side. I think on some cricket reference sites, cricket archive that I was talking <laughs> about, this is still technically Northerns that he's playing for. And I think this is just a second game. He did very well when he was playing for Border. 123 wickets at a shade under 20. So he comes in right arm over and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, who was that? It's, uh, Edwin had a, a bit of a swing at that. That's pretty much his first false shot in his uh, in his innings today. Um, got a very very thick uh, under edge and into the into the pitch, and collected by the bowler no run. That could have so easily cannoned onto the stumps. I think it's, it was that that sort of shot where you see guys play on. I think he maybe got more of it than I than I gave him credit for. Yeah, it's difficult. We're obviously behind the batsman at the moment and also at a slight angle, so a lot of what the delivery is doing is slightly obscured by the man. Defended to that man who's at that catching cover, who had been at um, a, a gully a little, a little, well, in the previous over. No run. On the offside, there is a sweeper. Which sort of a deep, really deep point sweeper. Yeah. It's a curious position, that. I mean, that's very much an, a limited overs position. I guess it's a seamer coming sort of across the batsman, and so mm. there's every chance that he cuts it into that region. I just think when you still have a lead of 360-odd, uh, you might want to have him somewhere where he could conceivably take a catch. Left well alone. As, uh, he actually changed his, his um, delivery there to right of around and um, fairly innocuously left alone. It's something you see some bowlers unwilling to do for whatever reason. The right arm bowlers bowling to left-handers stick with over the wickets, even though I think in the last few years the numbers back bowling mm. around the wickets. Even if it's just the novelty factor, the more a batsman's faced a certain type of bowling, the more used they are to it. Mm. I think if you mix it up, you just give yourself slightly more of a chance as a bowler. I think bowlers can be quite conservative around anything that disrupts their rhythm. And um, I never like to see a bowler change from right arm over to right arm around um, if they've been unhappy with their line. Right. You know, I'd far rather see them fix it from the area that they have. I mean, that doesn't really happen at this level, but it's something you see happen at club a lot. Um, I, one, one of the, the um, angles of delivery that I've been most impressed with lately are, are off spinners. Who are coming around the wicket and and um, firing it sort of into the right hander and then having it straightened onto middle stump is if you if you have a guy who can bowl nice and flat and fast um, as an off spinner that can become a very very useful useful angle but it, uh, you don't really see that at um, at uh, provincial and, and national level too much as uh, he has a bit of a cut at this it goes on the bounce to a diving Zep McQuena at um, uh, at the wide gully? Uh, I don't think so. I think it might be... Oh, yeah. Is it? Okay. If that's where it ended up going. Elsewhere <laughs> in the world, I think there's just been another wicket in the West Indies Australia game. Hazelwood's got Shimon Hedmeyer. Any South African fans listening will be supporting the West Indies in that game. At the moment, they're 91 for 5 with about 7 overs left. I've only got so much emotional energy available. I'm, oh, swing and a miss. There is a bit of an appeal. Um, I don't think that came anywhere near the bat. But um, if it brushed anything, it maybe brushed his, his shoulder as it went through. And um, again, Parsons just looking a little bit vulnerable to, to getting impatient. And uh, he just needs to spend a little bit of time getting his head back into the game, I think. 
after the lunch break. Yeah, I, I only have so much emotion that I can spend yeah. on, on, on cricket this afternoon, and I can't get too invested in the West Indies losing. Yeah, if I'm going to have to care about England versus South Africa later. At least we'll know exactly what we need to do in that English yeah, game later on. Probably going to be bowling them out for not very much and then getting it in 12. Let's hope it's not. Let's hope it is something that will at least make it a, a doable game. Yeah. And then if that all goes poorly, at least we have the Springbok game in the evening to, to try to take our minds off that. <laughs> I heard you and Paul talking about the fact that this morning in Wales, twice a fire alarm woke up the Springboks. I think <laughs> once at just after four and once at just after seven. Whether that's intentional sabotage from the, <laughs> the, the locals or just a happy coincidence. I'm very surprised that that sort of thing doesn't happen more often, actually. Sabotage. Yeah, or like that sort of fairly light-hearted sabotage where it's not, you know, no one's getting hurt by it. Well, this is, yeah, slightly less light-hearted. I think there's accusations. Michael Jordan, I was playing the NBA Finals against the Utah Jazz whilst they were in Utah. He's convinced that he was given an intentionally, a pizza that gave him food poisoning mm. very intentionally. Well, there's, uh, the New Zealanders still to this yeah. day are convinced that 1995 World Cup was robbed from them for exactly the same uh, the same reason and I wouldn't want to be anywhere near a Jonah Lobo with food poisoning right, so Bosch having done some running repairs on his um, his boot so coming in again right arm around uh, two Parsons who this Ooh. time drives doesn't really get very much of it goes through to mid off no run 58 without loss with one ball remaining in the 21st over Yeah, I think it makes for a much better story that food poisoning otherwise that the South Africans won that. Otherwise, mm -hmm. we wouldn't have a, a Clint Eastwood film. Well, exactly. Yeah, there, there's some moments in human history where um, where the gods the gods notice what the what the narrative needs to be, and that 1995 win was absolutely that. Final ball of the over, and left outside the off stump, through to the keeper. That's the end of the 21st over, 58 without loss. Edvier's there on 31, Parsons on 23, and the partnership also, 58. 72 overs left in the day. It's going to be a long, a long day's, uh, day's cricket still. Yeah, very warm here in Pretoria we're talking about. There's a small chance that we see some rain in the final session, but hopefully it leaves at least this session alone. Yeah, there are some thunderstorms building on the southern horizon. Um... So, at the very least, that's where my house is. Hopefully, if we'll get some rain, even if we don't. I have a dog who is convinced that if it barks at thunder, eventually the thunder goes away. Idiot dog. Khamani bangs it in, and uh, Irvi is able to just sit back and cross bat it through extra cover for four. It was uh, a cut that went in front of square. Very, very well played on the app. And uh, the to total goes through to 62 and Edver onto 35. Yeah, this is one of my favourite parts of the game when you haven't lost a wicket just yet, so figuring out what the partnership is is as easy as looking at <laughs> the total. It is indeed. And I think having reached their first goal of 50 without loss at lunch, these guys will certainly be eyeing triple figures now as they run hard here um, to the man at cover, but they're not only going to get the single. Uh, when I say cover, what is he? He's a deep, a deep point. Yeah, that's Grant McQuenna again. He's been moved all around the ground so far this morning. Just, just the two slips in place. And really, those are the only catches around at the moment. Otherwise, it's very much a bog standard ring field. Oh, I suppose there is this man at the catching. Is he going to be a catching mid wicket? He is indeed. A uh, catching cover, rather, sorry. Mane angling it across the left-hander, left well alone by Parsons, and no run. The umpire just letting Khamane uh, know that he's running on the pitch a bit. Shows him where he's standing. First warning, sir. Not sure if it was actually a warning, I think he... Uh, I think that was just a friendly reminder by the umpire. 
yeah, he's going to be getting different advice from Simon Harmer, saying, please do as much as you can to, to <laughs> run on that pitch. So there's a little bit of purchase for him. There's no reason why he should be running on the pitch. He's burning right up over. It's something you often see the guys do as this is hooked away down to a fine leg, but he manages to keep it down. It goes on the bounce to the man down there. Um, Corbin Bosch. It is Corbin Bosch down there. Thank you very much. And they go through to a single. When he played that for a moment, I thought he might have he he might have got it um, down that man's throat, because that that is one of the ways I think they've been looking to possibly get Parsons out. So that's interesting that Hamani is going to come around the wicket to um, to Edvia, but stay over to to Parsons. Yeah, whether it works or not, I really do like the, the thinking behind mm. it and the conscious effort to, to bowl differently to the two different batters. Left alone there, and no run. Yeah, it's nice to know that there's a plan. Is one of those sort of features of cricket, isn't, isn't it, that often after, after the lunch break, the, the guys do do things differently, and then just gradually over time, it gets eroded back down to, um, to the game drifting. Which, um, which, which is where really top ca captains come in, where you see evidence of thought happening in the last half an hour of a two-hour session. And I think that thought does bring the energy up mm. in the field as well, and you, you can create chances that weren't there. Yeah, it's nice to know as a, uh, as a player that uh, the captain is mulling things and, and not just um, s sort of rocking back on his heels at first slip and s sitting with his mind in neutral. And I think all of the very, very best captains are able to get that out of their, their team, that sense that there is a plan, that there's a greater scheme of things. Right, so the end of that over, Man is now bowled three overs, not for nine. 64 without loss after 22 overs, round about the three run and over mark. It is going to be Corbin Bush to continue from this end. He's going to be bowling right arm around the wicket, as he has done all day to the left-handers. Two slips in the gully. Ooh. Oh, shorter ball, and it Enough. gets over the um, the diving, and it, there was bat on that as well. Yeah. So, uh, so it is four runs to his total. It would have been a fantastic catch, but yeah, Corbin Bodge very disappointed that that has gone down. That's the biggest chance that we've seen so far in this Dolphins innings. Absolutely. I wonder whether he, I don't think he even got a, a touch on it. I mean, the uh, the wicket keeper. I mean, clearly came off the middle of the bat just about. But uh, he got enough, uh, the batsman got enough on it that, that he was able to get elevation over the keeper. And they have been pinging in that, uh, that shorter one, two Parsons, uh, every now and again, trying to get him to do, do things. Curiously, they haven't got a man back on square, so they're not looking to get him caught. I think they are looking to get him caught behind. Yeah. Uh, this time he's way too straight, if anything, down the big side and it's easily turned off the pads to um, is that Junior Dala down there I think Yeah, who does the fielding one run takes Parsons through to a somewhat lucky 29 Evie is there on 36 69 without loss of yeah, 22 we'll, we'll see how costly that uh, it's harsh to call it a drop but it was a I guess a drop from the wicket keeper there yeah. oh. certainly uh, a chance if not a drop yeah so yeah. 24 Parsons was on at that point at the end of the day, we'll see exactly how many more he manages to get. Left alone by Edwe, who's left quite well all day. And no run. Yeah, I don't... He's going to have to ride his luck, I think, if he's going to get himself sort of past 50 and up, up towards um, triple figures. I think he's he's looked vulnerable all day. Not, not in a... Um, not in an uncertain sense. I mean, he's he's hitting the ball nicely, but he's he's looked impatient. I think is probably the word I'm looking for. And uh, and sooner or later he is going to uh, smack one straight at midwicket or or get an edge. Again, left alone, taken low down by the keeper. Two balls to come. Bosch has bowled well, not for twenty one in his ninth over. Yeah, I think that impatience that you describe from Parsons is often just a symptom of youth. We saw, I, d I didn't mind seeing it during the CSA T20, but that under-19 side, mm. they seem to, to want to jump to third and fourth gear a lot earlier than you see 
more senior players and that can be very effective but it's something that the players do slowly figure out defended uh, for the inside half of the bat and through to Moran. Yeah, I think what also happens is that under 19 level, you have been the best player on the field right. since you were eight. And so you haven't yet got to a level where where you're no longer the best guy there out there. And it's the fit. Um, they can't just throw their hands at everything. That's the end of a uh, tight over that uh, had a chance in it. And so Bosch will be happy enough with that. I think moral virtue to him. Not for 21 of his nine um, his, his nine overs. And the Dolphins, 69 without loss. Still a massive 355 runs behind. Yeah. Though. Yeah, very early days in this game. Still, but yeah, big targets to go there. And you, you hope that there's enough time for a, a proper result. Yeah, I think if uh, if you put 424 on the board, things have to go very, very wrong for you to lose that game. Um, and I think that already the Titans will be feeling reasonably safe. So this is played on the up. Oh, some poor fielding down at, uh, at point there, but um, not enough to, uh, to cause an extra run. And then in anger, he overthrows it as well. Is that McQuenner again? Yeah, it yeah. yeah it's, it seems almost disrespectful to, to send one of the... Although he hasn't played for the Titans a oh, huge amount in his career, a senior player on the side, doing most of the fielding now out in the deep, having to mm -hmm. do lots of running, the 34-year-old Grant McQuenner. Just dropped into the offsides. Uh, the second slip has to jog around to collect that, and they go through four single see if we can get on top of who it is at second slip there. Uh, it's probably, it is still Tennis to Brain. First slip is... Oh, first second slip is slip Simon Harmon. Is it? Yeah. Oh, okay, there we go. So that's normally... Tennis to Brain, this is left alone, it goes through to Clitter. No ball called again by umpire Brad White. Yeah, Jen Clitter, who, as far as I know, is unrelated to the man with the same surname playing in the opposition but I, there's at least some link where it, I think it's pronounced actual but it's spelt Achille very close to Achilles mm. and then uh, Gian Clota born in Atlantis so the Greek connection between the two <laughs> Clotas and I guess the mythology connection Hamare coming in again and driven straight to the man at a catching uh, catching cover He's one of the big men of the Titans team, trying to see who that is. Uh, he'll turn his back now. It is uh, Brunt, who is um, in cover. Yeah, Neil Brunt, I think, was schooled in the UK and went to Cardiff University, and I'd imagine there he's probably Brand. Yeah, I was about well, to say that. He's, yeah, he's, he's, he's no one's Brunt to that side. He's one of the world's lever shades. It again into the offside and collected by McQuena, who this time does collect it cleanly and sends it to the African. Yeah. Okay. And I, I think he very much went to the UK as trying to further his cricket, even as a schoolboy, mm. seeing opportunities there. Didn't quite work out, but now he's South Africa and especially the Titans game. Yeah, absolutely. What does he do? Neil Brown. In terms of? Uh, like batting and Oh, batting he's batting. opening batsman. He's, yeah, I mean, okay. almost a like for like Dean Elgar replacement oh, really? in that okay. being he's, a, he's captain in now. He's an opening batsman who mm. bowls a little bit of a slow left arm spin. Yeah, I didn't mean what is he. Right. Did, I, did I, he don't what, I don't, I don't know week, what he yeah. was studying <laughs> whilst he was at university. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, full time cricketer at the moment. Okay. Money coming in from the uh, Hennep's River end. Right on around, really bangs this one in, but um, uh, but Elver doesn't really get too much of it and uh, pulls it away to Milan, who collects it, hands his hat to Hwane, and it will be Bosch to continue from the pavilion end. Yeah, talking about Tux, I think both the Herman brothers, the one playing today, and yeah, Jordan Herman playing mm. today, and Ruben Herman also products of Tux. And I'm trying to figure it out because Ruben Herman's my age. And I remember playing 
provincial action cricket with someone named Ruben who looked vaguely like Ruben Herman, mm. but I'm not sure if it's <laughs> the same guy. I didn't realize you played provincial action cricket. Uh, uh, only in yeah, grade eight. Oh, okay. It wasn't usually, there were lots of very good cricketers there. And then also me and a few other guys who, yeah, it was limited competition for the spots there. But yeah, play, Brandon Glover is now playing for the Netherlands. He was there. I think Curtis Campbell also played there. Wandila McQuaid Quite a few guys who went on to high honours. Anurk Nokia was also, I, I mean, I never played with him, mm. but he was a, a high level action cricket player up until about the age of 18, I think. Did a lot of pace or five steps. Yeah, no, I can imagine he must have been a real handful. Bosh still right arm over and just in that channel left alone by, um, by Parsons. I would be inclined to not overthink about into Parsons too much, just leave it dangling outside that, yeah. that, that fifth stump line and, and, and wait for him to come after you. And that decent bounce that seems to have caught him mm. a couple of times, including that, that delivery that ended up yeah. just hitting the glove and then running. Yeah, so maybe once every 12 balls, bang one in. The opening partnership. That's exactly what you need when you are chasing a score that starts with a four. <laughs> exactly. Even better. It's been entertaining cricket, from uh, certainly from Parsons. It's been very, um, very solid, and um, but it's played some good shots in his own right as well. Defended into the onside and collected no run. How are things going in the in the Caribbean? Not the Caribbean, in the Middle East. Can you see <laughs> yeah. that? Can you see the, the West score there? Indies 116 for five oh, okay. after 16.3. I mean, South Africa almost restricted Australia to to a score around there. So the, the West Indies are giving themselves more to, more to bowl at than South Africa did, but I don't think their bowling lineups quite as mm. effective. There's the men in green. Left outside the off stump, no run. I think the Titans would have really wanted a, a breakthrough early on as they came back from lunch and just a sense now of people settling into this middle session. And that window can close. If you're gonna take a post lunch wicket, it's probably most likely to be in the, that first two or three overs. Mm. And yeah, the longer they're out there, the less likely that wicket is to to come up. And we'll recognise the moral virtue when they bring Harmer back on, I suspect. Oof. Does bang this one in, but it's fairly innocuously over. In stretching to bowl the yeah. effort, Bowley has bowled a no ball. So that'll be an extra one for the over. Two balls to come. Six extras so far this, um, this innings. One leg by and five no balls. Paul earlier was talking about the fact that Corbin Bosch was part of that 2014 World Cup, uh, and 19 World Cup when mm. he signed with Kaki Sarabada. He managed yeah. to take nine wickets there at an average of 14.66. Vintage year that, wasn't it? I remember watching, watching that baby Rabada and being yeah. so excited about his future. I think this has probably come off uh, the legs of the batsman. Yep, there's the signal from umpire Jacobs. And uh, two, two more to the extras. Eight extras now, and the score eighty without loss. I guess it makes sense that the World Cup winning side ended up being one of the best under nineteen sides we've had in terms of producing domestic talent. Obviously, Adam Markram, Cookie mm. Sorabada, Andila Petlokaya, but I think even Sibonelo Makanya and Jason Smith were part of that side. And the other Yassin Valley. Shorter ball and beautifully pulled away straight to the square leg boundary. Really, really good good shot that. And just so, so in control. Um, Parsons, when he does hit it, just looks fantastic. He, bowled, he, he played a beautiful um, square cover drive uh, before lunch as well. And just looked like he saw that as big as a house. We were also yeah, talking about related cricketers earlier. Uh, something not quite the same. Some our South African domestic cricketers managed to produce two players named Yassin Valley mm -hmm. that are not related in the slightest. So an update there shown on the um, on the scoreboard that the, the over eight is minus five, which I'm assuming means that they're five runs behind 
the um, the, the goal goal rate. We'd have to work that up. Yeah, so maybe that'll be the thing to bring the spinners back on, rather mm. than just giving up on seamers <laughs> trying to get the over eight back in check. Because some long run ups in this yeah. Titans bowling attack, Junior Dalla and Corbin Bosch really do come in off a, a decent jog. Five overs is a a long, long way to be behind after twenty five overs, unless that might be calculated over the course of the the whole match. I'm not sure. But if you're five overs behind when you've only rolled 25, that's a problem. Shorter ball through to the keeper, no run. Yeah, I think you're right. They're going to have to bring um, spin on both both ends to try and to try and bring this back. But there should also be a heat modifier on that over eight. So I think on a hot day you need to give the bowlers a bit of leeway. Walking back to the top of the mark, energetically slightly more challenging. Uh, yes and no. I, I, I certainly never heard that suggested uh, to me as an umpire that. Uh, one thing you are allowed to do as an umpire is um, suggest an extra drinks break, and that would obviously um, come off the over it. Uh, and at this level, um, loss of wickets as well is given as a, a, a time a time bonus. Yeah. So he has indicated, I think, that he's going to come right on over the wickets. Yeah, the yeah. way that he has been bowling to Parsons, he's now going to continue to over it. And just angle it across a little bit. First slip, I think, took a slight step to his left. Oh, and this is driven, but it is collected by. Is that McQuinn there? Or oh, no, it's probably Junior Dollar in that part. Yeah, Junior Dollar. Three balls remaining in this over. It's gone for 13, which is not bad in the context of the game, I think. Uh, the overall run rate achieved is 3.3. They were down at 2.2 for a while, but they've they've scored yeah. reasonably briskly since lunch. And even in the couple of overs just before, there were some loose deliveries. I think um, Junior Dalla went for a couple of fours mm -hmm. in an over. Obviously, we saw that Corbin that four off Corbin Bosch's bowling, and yeah, a couple of no balls as well. Worked into the onside, and it is collected by Madon, who just. Uh, fires it back at the non-strikers end but they get easily through for a single 85 without loss now both batsmen on 38 no they're not sorry 38 <laughs> for uh, Erve and Parsons for the first time today ahead of Erve's scoring rate he's on 39 which means that that drop catch is now up to 15 runs mm -hmm. are we counting that as a drop catch? do we think that he I got think, a, uh, touched, oh he has a bit glove. of a, 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 a attempted pull here but it goes straight back past the bowler uh, it's getting it surprisingly long way down the field there um, as uh, as Junior Dollar is able to pull it in and they come back for three I think Parsons will uh, be a little bit lucky there and in Abu Dhabi Dwayne Bravo has just been dismissed and I think that this is his last T20 international so there's a fair bit of jubilee around his dismissal he's, he's giving the crowd a wave at the moment, the West Indies 126 for 6 after 17.3. Yeah, so that's not nothing. If they can get themselves to 140, 150, we've seen that that's been eminently defendable at this, uh, this World Cup. Oof. Oh, he gets an outside edge and it goes past the, uh, the man at second slip. Um, I'm not sure it would have carried to a third. It would have bounced just in front of a yeah. third, I think. And uh, rather streaky. Four there. Um, and that's I think the first uh, the first four that Edver, uh, the first chance that Ever has really given in this um, uh, in in the innings. Yeah, you were talking about that bump ball that went back to the bowler earlier, but that's yeah. he, he strutted away from that shot as if he fully intended to do it. <laughs> you got to swing, swing hard. It is going to be Simon Harmer who joined the attack. Um, is it a sign that things are getting hot and we've given up a little bit of the plans that were made so optimistically over the lunch table? Or is it a case of needing to get the overrate back under control? Or just remembering that yeah, Simon Harm is a, a good off spinner, maybe the, the foot marks true. Yeah. have <laughs> Very much started so. to take effect. Not a hell of a change of end for Harmer. He wasn't as effective as we've seen him from the other end, but there's a chance that that changes. So he will uh, be bowling, I think, right on around the wicket. And um, he will have one slip in place. 
no sign of uh, the helmet coming out for a back pad that he had before lunch. The man had a catch and cover. His mid-off is fairly deep, it's sort of back on what would be the one day international circle. But on slightly closer to him, there's a sweeper out on the offside and a sweeper on the leg side at uh, backward square leg. Comes in right arm over the wicket, floats it up and just defend it back to him from the batter Parsons. Both batsmen at the moment on 42. 92 without loss. It looks... Sorrel over has found a spike. They don't know whose spike it is, but he's handed it to the umpire. Everyone's checking the, the bottom of their shoes. <laughs> Again, floated. There's a good uh, diving stop by, uh, I think it's Khamani there yeah. at the, in the cover region. And so no run. Yeah, you know, is all about building, building pressure. Uh, he was guilty of uh, bowling a little bit too straight just before lunch. Got swept twice before. Oh, it's the same sort of line that he was there, just drifting onto leg stump, but defended back down the pitch, and I ran. Again, drifting onto that leg yeah. side a line, and it is worked into the onside, so mid-wicket is going to run back and chase. He slides alongside it, fetches it. And the batsmen go through for an easy two. Parsons now on to 44. And um, the total 94 without loss. Yeah, a little bit more flights on that last one. And as you said, straight down leg. And not a huge amount of turn, although it didn't have time to turn either. Again, air and played into the onside. No run. Yeah, nice to have um, Simon Harmer back and... And bowling in the four-day competition. One of a number of guys who are uh, back in sunny South Africa. I think just having senior players in these squads to impart wisdom and advice mm. is, is valuable. As well as obviously testing players with, with their skills. I mean, he has come back at a time where, for the first time in my memory as a South African cricket fan, we've, uh, we've actually got a, a, I wouldn't quite say an embarrassment of riches of spinners, but, but certainly a decent stable. Of international spinners and particularly with white ball cricket the yeah. fact that we're willing to leave out Imran to here without even phoning him to, <laughs> to explain why um, because we've got three three decent frontline spinners is, is fantastic it's a unique experience as a South African fan yeah I think Imran here is partially responsible for that he really showed that even on South African pitches world-class spinners effective in the white ball game I know mm. Tabray Shamsi gives him a lot of credit for teaching him and also just showing him that it's possible. Yeah, yeah they, they were very close right from the sort of beginning of, of Tahir's sojourn. Did, did one of them date the other one's sister or something? Or I seem to remember there was not, some story. Not, not as far as I know. Oh, okay. <laughs> we worked into the offside and uh, no run. I know there's the story that Tahir, no, one run rather. Tahir did come to South Africa because his now wife was in South Africa and that's that's what motivated it I do think there was a family connection and on Shamsi's end I know that Shamsi's girlfriend or wife is the, the person who's cutting his hair at the moment or at least has given him a few haircuts in the last year that he's been speaking about okay I've had a couple of partners give me proper haircuts over, over, over time as they've called it um Khamena comes in right on over or driven to Madoff no run 43 to Erve, 44 to the batsman facing Parsons, 95 without loss now. It's been a good, solid opening partnership. This from the Dolphins pair, they're going to be uh, really, really happy with it. We had spoken about the the first goal had been to get to 50 without loss at lunch, and they've now relatively rocketed along to yeah. 95 without loss. Oh, short! And it is pulled, it is in the air, he chases back for it, but it is going to fall safely over the head of uh, McQuenna at, uh, mid uh, is that McQuenna? At, at Long On. At Long On, it's sort of deep mid on. Yeah, he's not quite Long On, yeah, he's mid on. Yeah, I guess he was running towards yeah. Long On. If he was at Long On, there's a chance it went, it would go straight down his throat. Parsons has been vulnerable to the short ball. And once again, just showing some of his impetuous, impetuous, Impetuity? Impetuousness? 
<laughs> You're the one like that gets I'm, paid to write things. I feel like I'm missing a syllable there. <laughs> Impetuousness. Yeah. People know what I mean. Straight to one and just played into the onside where it is collected by the midwicket. And uh, no run. Let's have a look who is that. Who's, I think it is McQuinney at, uh, at Madon. Beefy chap. It looks like he can hit, wield a long willow if the need is required. It is indeed McQuinney. Again, relations. I think Grant McQuinney's brother played a couple of games for Gauteng back in 2012, but didn't manage to, to stay there for too long. Strays onto the leg side, does Kamani, and uh, they go through for a single. It is collected by the midwicket who runs around. And that takes Parsons, uh, takes Irve to 44. Parsons is there, is to face on 45. He's definitely batted a little faster than his partner since lunch. I think he was about, what, 10 runs adrift when we went to lunch. But it's now on par. Sons had to. <laughs> Sorry. Come on, he bangs it in, yes. and again he has a. Oh, was that that was a catch that went to the man at mid wicket. He stuck out a hand, and uh, grasped it. And I think, um, I mean, the plan is now you just keep on banging it into Parsons. He's going to give you chances. I think possibly Saddle Irvin is needs to walk down and just take the young man aside and say, look, there's. There's a whole afternoon of batting to be had here if you want it. Don't throw it away by hitting one straight to mid-wicket. Yeah, in fact, there's a rather bashful um, body language from uh, Bryce Parsons as he walks to his senior partner. Uh, I think he's getting a, a slight dressing down from Irvia. Parsons is on 46 now, Irvia on 44. I would be inclined to um, to keep bowling some pace at uh, at Parsons and keep on yeah. keep on banging it in. Although he's scoring quickly now, it does give the bowling side a bit of hope that yeah. something can happen. Yeah, if he goes on to a big score, I think uh, the, the Titans will feel aggrieved <laughs> that they uh, they they've definitely had plenty of opportunity um, in the last sort of forty minutes of his innings. Just rocks back and defends back down the pitch. He hasn't really tried it on against the spinner at all, has, has Parsons. It's only been against the, the seamers that he's right. he's shown himself to be impatient. Whereas against Harmer, he's been um, he's been very circumspect. Although, yeah, we'll see if that continues as he sees more of the spinner. There's yeah. a chance. He oh, here he comes down the the, the the pitch and he hits it straight back at Harmer. Um, I think that was into the pitch, so it wasn't a chance of a catch. So it seems like that is what it is. He was just slowly figuring out Harmon <laughs> before he did line him up. Yeah, you can feel him. He's, he, he's bristling now. He, want, he, he, he wants to get things moving. Works this off his hips, and he's going to jog through for a single. 47 without loss. What's his... Um, have, you, have you got his stats up there? So, uh, yeah, he's got a first-class average of 29.4. I think he, he played for Central Gauteng before this. Didn't average a huge amount there, but obviously he's still very young. I think he averaged a shade under 27. But playing for the under-19 side in the ODIs, or the mm. U30Is, he averaged 39.11. And obviously we've seen what he can do with the ball now as well. So useful to have a, an opening bat who can turn the arm over. Rocks back and just knocks it away into the offside. That is the 100 partnership that's come up. It's come up in 162 minutes and 178 balls, 14 fours. And uh, that's very, very much the second box ticked by the Dolphins. Third box ticked, I'd say, by the Dolphins today after having bowled out the Titans. Right. Is the fourth box then just overtaking the opening partnership from the Titans, 109? Certainly a moral victory, I would have thought. Parsons doesn't seem to be two inches in that. He wants to uh, um, entertain what crowd there is. I wonder whether possibly his girlfriend has shown up after lunch, so he wants to show her that he can swing the winner. I see there are some people in uh, what the closest thing the Centurion has to boxes mm. in those 
What would you call those? Yeah. Almost like lodges yeah. on the just above the grass bank on the car train side of the field. Now, this was the first ground to have that, that sort of setup. I think it's subsequently been replicated at Paul. Um, just trying to think, does Poch have something similar? No, I don't think so. But uh, I remember these being quite a unique feature of, of Centurion back when they were when they were added. One of the more unique grounds this in world cricket. I think probably the closest to this are some of the New Zealand grounds. Right. With a similar sort of grass all grass the way around. And, yeah. Yeah. and it's your favourite fact that it's now oh, it's the only city named after a cricket ground. Mm hmm is indeed Centurion, as Junior Dalla's back into the attack named after well named by my grandfather's friend best friend he, he won the competition to name the cricket ground and then subsequently for Woodberg followed suit and became um, became Centurion we just need to name London Lords and then we're away Lords, I think, named it's all that it sounds it's named like it's named after a lord. I think it was named <laughs> after someone called Thomas Lord. Oh, okay. The same thing as Sabina Park sounds like Park is just describing the ground, but it's named after a lady who was called Sabina Park. Oh, really? Yeah. It's, uh, oh, I love I love that as a uh, a little nugget. Do we know what Sabina Park did? To I think she was a un it's an unfortunate story. I do think that she was a slave in the oh, West Indies. Okay. So it's actually Sabina Park Park. Yeah, so I guess you can debate which park the park is named after. But also, sort of make, there's a link between Centurion being in Pretoria, with Pretoria, the ancient city in Pretorians, and then Centurions, all old soldiers. Uh, what? So the, sorry, Pretoria is named after somebody Pretorius, isn't it? Yeah, but there was oh, also the Praetorians, an, but there was also oh, okay. ancient. Yeah, I mean, certainly it was named Centurion precisely because it was the nor the then Northern Transvaal Cricket Union's hundredth year. Oh right. When um, what what was if this was it was a new ground? What, what did Northern Transvaal? Where did Northern Transvaal play before Centurion was here? That I mean, Northern Transvaal didn't even exist. When I was born, so I'll have to, I won't nerd off. Oh no, they definitely did look. because they. Um, I remember watching them um, in the days that Mandy Yuckett opened the, the batting for them. Um, Barnard was the captain back in those days. What is his name? Lee Barnard was the captain. Um, they were very much an also ran team. They, they would regularly get thumped by the Transvaal Mean Machine. And I remember feeling quite sorry for people from Pretoria that they had such a useless cricket team to support. So, so, so Northern Transvaal played at Berea Park up until 1986. Mm -hmm. And they played at a few other grounds, been called their home grounds, even more than one at the same time. They've even played at Loftus Fasfelt as an occasional venue in the 50s. As Dala thumps this one in and has just worked into the onside. Yeah, so that must be what I remembered then, is that 1986 I would have been old enough to be a cricket fan. And would have remembered. I, I, I never, certainly never watched cricket there, but I would have remembered then if they moved from there to this current ground now, Centurion. I think that's what that's that's what I must remember as as this being a new ground for them. And for those curious, the West Indies actually ended up posting 157. Oh wow! In that game. Okay. So, game on. Everything's still interesting. Our hopes are still in danger. <laughs> oh. Uh, Banged in short, and this time Parsons does get all of it and plays it very, very well in front of Square and it uh, rockets away to the boundary. And that does bring up his 50 as well. It Importantly, you can hear his teammates cheering on. That's his second 50. He got 45. Second first class 50. His first, for Central, his first was for Central Gauteng. He got 45 in the last game, so he's in a decent run of form. 90 deliveries it took him to get there. He's certainly been on a bit of a hurry up in the, yeah. last, uh, the last half an hour. So, um, much much more solid game uh, shot that uh, and I think if he does begin to really uh, grow in confidence and get his iron he could become very destructive indeed what is his first class, his highest first class score I'll happily get that I don't have it down I think he might have a single hundred hundred but he's still obviously very new to the mm. domestic game just 20 years old 
so it will be harder to resume. His high score, in fact, at, at least in first class cricket, is fifty two, and all domestic cricket is fifty nine. Yes, okay. so okay, that, that being on fifty one now, you'd imagine that high score is about to improve. Whether you can, well, I think it's a bit of a bit of a lottery at the moment because he could he could very easily hit one straight at mid wicket at some point. Well, that has been the theme of the innings so far. I think it's mm. been dropped twice: once on twenty four, once on forty five. This is uh, Edvier just rocks back and works this into the offside, and they jog through for a single. That takes him to 49, and the total to 108. So they are one run away from beating the um, the Titans' opening partnership, and one run away from Sardal Edvier's 50. He has many, many first class 50s. Right. I wasn't really telling you. I was sort of, sort of asking, I suppose. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, he definitely does. Yes. As Parsons knocks this one into the onside, and that takes him to uh, his tied highest ever first class score, 52. Yeah, so Sorrel over has 34 first class 50s oh, and 9 first class 100s. And I think he's this season he's closing in on 3,000 runs, at least for the Dolphins. I think he's got 300 or 400 odd runs mm -hmm. to go there. And about six hundred runs to get to have six hundred runs to reach six thousand runs in all first class cricket. Sure. It's a lot of Saturdays spent out in the park. That he never got his protest cap, did he? No. So I mean, whether he actually got a cap or not, I'm not sure. But he you know, he went out with the side to the West Indies, but didn't manage to get a game mm. on that occasion. Yeah, that does happen to players and you feel quite sorry for them. Sean von Berg, similarly, when South Africa went out to Sri Lanka and he was the backup spinner and mm. yeah, you just go watch the whole turn, don't actually get to have a go. Sean von Berg, I think, just became the leading wicket taker in South African first-class cricket. Obviously, that's semi-pro and professional mm. combined, but 423 wickets in first-class cricket for Sean von Berg. So you said leading, so that's... Of the current players? No, I think that's that might be since readmission and since everyone's oh, been oh, able to play oh, cricket, but in first only, class cricket. Only in domestic first class cricket. Yeah. Not, okay, so yeah. because obviously some of the international guys would have got over that, I would have thought. Oh uh, no, well, what, I mean, what's our what's? No, the the our South African players will have more, but I think that's just domestic cricket. But okay. that's franchise cricket and okay. the, the semi pro stuff. Okay. As, Dala comes right on around the wickets and it's worked into the offside by um, Parsons and that takes him to 53, which is his highest ever score in first class cricket. And it takes the total to 110, which uh, takes us past the um, nominal uh, uh, milestone of now the highest opening partnership in the match. And Sadal Irvia to face on 49. There's a bit of gardening. One slip in place. Catching Gully is quite close to the bat. Very close to the bat, actually. As Dada comes, bowls a heavy ball into the pitch and defended into the offside. No run. Yeah, so that Sean van Berg stat, that's excluding Tess, but he's just ahead of pretty impressive bowlers like Vernon Philander mm. and Keshav Maharaj. It's an interesting sort of stat that, isn't it? Because it's it's a recognition of journeyman status to an extent. Well, not really journeyman, but a um, you know a solid provincial player who's, right. who you know who isn't isn't ever going to have a, a national career. Although Vernon Philander, second on the list, had quite an international. Career. Yeah, he oh flash outside the off stump by Ervia. That is uh, a real chance there. Um, I was quite surprised to see that it was Irvier who played that. I was about to go into my spiel of Bryson, Par uh, Bryce Parsons once again. Um, but uh, but Irvier there actually showing some of his own um, uh, impatience. You know, it's a curious one. I mean, do you, you know, obviously you or I would be absolutely thrilled to be included in a Sri Lankan tour with no expectation to, to play. Um, you know, I mean... There must be guys who never get even close to that sniff, as this has worked into the onside. And that takes Ervia through to his 50. It's 35th first class 50. And, we will and wait. his yeah, 44th score of 50 plus. 
103 deliveries he's taken to get there, so just slightly slower than the man at the other end. And 173 minutes this innings has been running for now. So just shy of three hours. Yeah, I think if you don't have to, going to have an if you aren't going to have an extended test career, you almost want to do something like Tienis De Bruyne's had. He's played the 12 tests, but he's managed to get 100 in one of those 12. Mm. High score of 101. To be able to say that you have a test 100 must be unbelievable. I know that it's a, a bone of contention for Adam Bacher that he's stranded for life on 99. And there's a few players, yeah, with high scores of 99 in Test cricket. I think Shane Warne's one of them, and at the moment, Mitchell Stark's highest ever score in international in Test cricket. Anyway, is 99. Oh, is it really? That's so interesting. Yeah, when you don't even have the highest Test match score in your marital bed, that's a, that's a problem, isn't it? Has, has uh, Elisa Healy. Elisa Healy scored a test match home? Uh, she definitely would have one day hundreds. Obviously, the yeah, women don't play yeah. as many tests as the men. I'll have Beautiful shot this, by the way. It was uh, um, Dala straight onto the um, the onside. And it was just clipped off his off his legs um, by Parsons. Ran away f uh, to the boundary. And that takes Parsons to 57. Error is there on 50. The total is 115 without loss. We are going to take a five minute break while they have trips.
and we do have, we are back after drinks with Simon Harmer continuing here from the pavilion end. Simon Harmer to resume from oh, just out, past the outside edge there and uh, muffled appeal. No run. 115 without loss now. Parsons is on 57. Irvia facing is on 50. Bit of turn and bounce there from Simon Harmer. They work this to mid off and jog through for a single. 116 without loss as the clock ticks past 2 o'clock in the afternoon. One ball remaining in his ninth over. Harmer not for 19. Hasn't really troubled the batsman today too much. Defended by Parsons. That is the end of that over. So he's after nine overs, not for 19. There's Simon Harmer, as I said. Adala is not for 39. Uh, Corbin Bosch, uh, no wicket for 30. And um, Aya Khamani, he's no wicket for 25 of his six. 33 overs gone, 116 runs the score, 3.5 is the run rate, and still a deficit of 308, <laughs> there's still so much batting uh, to, be, uh, to be done here by the Dolphins to get themselves back on par in this, in this match, but they could not have asked for a better start. Slight delay here, yeah. we get ourselves organised. There is a change of bowling. Is this going to be we're, we're, uh, Neil Brown? Yeah, maybe they're going to look at spin from both ends. It is Neil Brunt. He's keeping his hat on, which makes it look like he's not going to bowl. But I think he does yeah. plan on it. Keep the batsman darting. <laughs> yeah, so as I was saying, the Dean Elgore most like for like replacement with his left-handed opening the batting and a bit of left-arm off-spin. Well, he now has taken his cap off. Handed it... To again, it's Grant McQuenna. It is Grant McQuenna again, is it? Okay. Uh, no, it's Junior Dollar. It is Junior Dollar. And uh, so he's just moving people around a little bit. Uh, there is a delay while, um, well, I think this is Grant McQuenna who's actually putting the, the pads on um, down at the fine leg boundary. Third, uh, fine leg boundary. Um, he's uh, putting on the short leg pads and the helmet. So, um, yeah, a job that either goes to your best fielder or a junior player. In this case, <laughs> Grant McQuenna must be highly rated with the pads on. Or was late to practice on Thursday. Oh, he's now decided to run off the field and fetch something else. Probably his box. Yes? <laughs> this is the sort of delay that, uh, that irritates umpires. They like you to be organised and to know what's happening next. And to suddenly decide when, when the bowler is at his also mark. Also going to have to have someone take a, his hat from him. Uh, yeah, no, this is this is village cricket here. A, a no, this is from mind the games to put, put the bats on <laughs> off. Maybe that's exactly what it is. Maybe it's mind games. Right, so there he is, still faffing with his, his pads. And he's zipping up his uh, the bottom of his pants. And he has his blue helmet and he has his box. And he's almost ready. I do like bringing in the short square leg. I think it does put a little bit of pressure on the batsman. No room for those false shots. It is oh, very, very first ball. Did oh, I thought he maybe got a, got an edge there? It's um, well, I think he must have because it went to Tennis De Bruyne at slip. I can only assume that that's, that bounced just in front of the the slip. But already the mind game's working. Mm -hmm. Uh, just dropped short, we, we're hearing from our chaps at Pitch Vision. Um, and uh, another chance there. So, uh, are we calling him Brunt or Brand? What have we decided? Brunt, I think, is Brunt the is coming in left arm over the wicket. And if he's playing in England, he's Brand, but for now he is Neil Brunt. Worked into the onside, they jog through for a single that takes Irvia to 52 and the score to 117. And now we get to see how Parsons is going to react to this slow left arm orthodox with the short square leg in place as well. 
the mid on is quite deep. Well, he turns this into the onside, but uh, there is uh, Ayakamani there who's patrolling that mid wicket region. At a sort of catching mid wicket position. Short square leg, slip in place, catching cover. Oh, and he dives across to try and field off his own bowling, does get through to Gina Dalla, and no run. Certainly things feel like they're happening whenever yeah. Parsons faces, doesn't it? I mean, it's he's an entertaining guy to watch. Must be a nightmare if you're a parent or a coach, though. Very stressful. Yeah. Good over in the end from Brunt. Oh, a chance at a wicket, that didn't quite happen, and then economical stuff, whether that's the batter's seen him out or mm. just him putting it in the right areas or a combination of the two it means that he's yeah, gone for just the single there. Yeah, he'll be happy enough with that. A chance of the very, very first ball that he bought. Yeah, it, the fact that they're spin twins it makes it sad that Aaron Pungi's a potted squad's not playing. I'd love to see him and Harmer yeah. bowling from opposite ends. Maybe later in the season we'll be treated to that. On the right arm around the wicket, just floats it into the uh, the left hander who uh, drives it to mid off and no run. It's not quite the same, but I'm also always sad about the fact that we never got to see Yasser Shah and Said Ajmal bowl at opposite ends. Their careers just missed out on mm. overlapping for that Pakistan side. Evia rocks back and plays this into the offside, and they just jog through for a single. They'll be more than happy to pick the gaps here and um, not take too many risks. Well, I think Irvia will be happy to do that. I, th I suspect Parsons will uh, will want to have a dance down the pitch every 10 balls faced or so. The mid off. Just rocking back, uh, sort of back halfway to the boundary. The mid on is actually quite a long way up for Parsons. I would have thought yeah, he would have. We've got a lot of quite close infielders mm. almost in short catching positions for the miss hit, almost challenging. Parsons to say have a go but mm. if you don't get it right it's probably going to go up in the end into someone's hands as that's this played quite does beautifully a really really good shot laces that through the offside and so that runs away for four that takes him uh, to 61 so into a new decade for him in terms of higher scores and the, the total to 122 without loss are you able to have a sniff around and get us some scores from around the country? That would be quite oh. nice, to, nice to know. Yeah, unfortunately, Crick Info don't update those immediately, so it means I'll think happily Paul go was, through all the YouTube And Paul was getting them from, from, I think that he found a super sports site that had the scores that were being updated. I'm not 100% sure. I tried to find it and couldn't. As this one goes on with the arm and is just defended by Parsons, no run. So we do have the Pearl Rocks taking on Western Province at the moment, and Western Province are 146 for one after 59. Tony DeZorzi there on 58, Zubair Hamza on 63. Again, just defended into the offsides. No run. That is the end of Simon Harmer's 10th over, north for 24. Uh, the Dragons are playing the Knights at the moment. The Northwest Dragons 149 for six with Hawken and Portgita at the crease. Pumalanga are taking on Southwestern Districts and Pumalanga 229 for 7 with Cock and Henricks there at the crease. Whitehead bowling. It's going to be Neil Brand to resume from the Hennops River end. He had a chance in his previous over. Let's see if he can replicate that. He bowls this one too straight and is easily turned around the corner by Ervia and collected. I think that that is uh, Bosch down there. That's Fine Meg who does the fielding and they jog through for a single. And in the game where everything's been happening so far, that Lions-Warriors game has been interfered with by rain at the moment, as we see the Warriors are batting again. That's really the third innings sure. of that game. They're 15 for two, but rain at the moment. Played safely down to Madon, and they just jog through for a single, and I think there's a real sense here of um, this Dolphins pair just gradually building and building and building this partnership uh, without taking too many risks. Yeah, they did a very good job of seeing out the new ball. Mm. Low run rate then, but it's just gone up and up and they're starting to capitalise as it softens up and this field inside tires out a little bit. Yeah, and I think we might see an hour of spin from each, each end here now. 
uh, as he rocks, he tries to work that away and uh, misfielded by the keeper, but I don't think he got an edge on that. I think Brunt's only bowled in one of those innings where the Titans played the Warriors last week, but he managed to take one wicket for just two runs. Oh, okay. So a real power player coming on in that case. Well, I'm assuming he came on to bowl to be a number 11. So, <laughs> I can see. It, it, it's, it's, it's not like he broke an opening partnership and they took him off again. He would have taken himself off as well. He worked into the onside. They go through for a single 55 to Edvier. 62 to Parsons at 125 for that loss. Right, so they're now moving um, McQuenna from a the short leg to a silly Milan. He's keeping his helmet and everything on. Straight away worked through the gap where McQuenna was, and they come through for a single. It was the Warriors' number eight, Marco Janssen, that he dismissed there. Okay. Another one of the brothers, he and his brother Dwana, playing for different sides, I think. Marco Janssen playing for Warriors. It does feel like there are a lot of brothers playing at uh, first class cricket at the moment. Yeah, so and unfortunately, it doesn't answer that nature versus nurture thing because they very much have the same nature and nurture. <laughs> Well, I was thinking about um, about Corbin Bosch's life. So he must have probably never known his dad. When did Tertius Bosch die? It was the sort of late 90s. So Corbin must have been, I don't know, six or seven, if that. Um, yeah, so 2000 that Tertius Bosch passed. Okay. Um, okay, so he maybe would have been... Yeah, so he was about six. Right, so he wouldn't he wouldn't have really known his dad except by reputation, um, and yet he still managed to get himself up to first class cricket level. Right. Um, so I think that's got to be a fairly strong argument for nature, for uh, nature rather. Yeah. Um, except that, of course, you know, if that is, if if playing cricket is the only way you can connect with the memory of your father, then maybe that is um, a fairly strong motivator anyway. Abu Dhabi at the moment, Australia 33 for no loss after just 3.2, so uh, things not looking too positive. Here we'll we go. We'll do our best to ignore that over the next hour or so. Yeah, when Finch is not even bothering to wear a cap or a helmet. I'm a huge fan of batsmen batting in caps to spinners. It just feels good. Yeah, I guess you're not at risk of being bounced, but you are at risk of if you go down for the sweep and get that top edge into your face. <laughs> well, the first the first wicket has gone down in um, Abu Dhabi. And it's the helmetless finch. It is the helmetless finch. <laughs> it's gone. The golden finch. And that is the end of Harmer's 11th, uh, 11th over and a, a maiden over for him. North for 24. 125 without loss. So what is the next milestone for these two now? Are they... Oh yes, 125, you can target in 150. Yeah, so yeah, I suppose one, 150 would be the next step. And I suppose they're beginning to think about about T. Um, that's, you know, can they still be together at, at tea time? You know, what, what we called Silly Madon at school was a lot closer than Silly Madon is at first class level. You know, we would have been pretty much halfway down the pitch, whereas I've never ever seen a first class player any closer than, than that is actually. Oh, and that's precisely why, because he played fairly easily right past his left boot and they jogged through for a single. And with the, the ladies cricket that I'm involved in, I'm really, really trying hard to persuade them to use attacking fielders in front of the wicket much, much more than they do. They seem very reluctant to have anything other than a circle field. As we the reverse sweep comes out for the first time today, and uh, he works it down to fine leg, but um, a fielder does jog round to collect it. Not quite sure who that is who's doing the fielding down there. I'll tell you in a moment. And they come through 4-2. It is Pillay who does the fielding. 
And some of the cricket guys informed us, yeah, that Corbin was six when Tersh was passed, and Ethan is his brother. Ethan Bosch was three at the time. Oh, okay. There's another aspect of that that might add to the because, yeah. I think I'll, a lot of people who are I'll listening have, to uh, cricket on a domestic cricket on a Saturday are probably on top of that story yeah. already. Otherwise, no. Well, you're I want, welcome to to uh, research it yourselves. Yeah, I, I was I was just I was just wondering in terms of the upbringing how that how, how that whole side of the story impacted it, but we will do that off air. Oh, the later it feel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that was more that was more wishful thinking than anything else. It wasn't a proper it wasn't a proper appeal. We hadn't really had a proper LBW appeal today at all. I think there was one just before we came back on air after that last drinks break. Oh really was there? It was okay. a, a Simon Harmon delivery LBW appeal that looked alright, but it was turned it turned down in the end. Mm. You never really know at this at this level without all the really close-ups and the Hawkeye and everything. Mm. Simon Arm, I'm sure, will feel aggrieved. Well, it is going to be Hammer to continue. Right, Hammer around the wicket. Again, just a solid forward defensive by Irve. And the score stays on 129 without loss. Slightly shorter, and I think Irve must have thought about at least trying to pull that yeah. through through mid on, um, or mid wicket rather. But uh, there is a man there, sort of on the edge of the the square, for exactly that shot. And he decides discretion is the better part of valor. Again, big stride in and a forward defensive. I think Harmer's bowling textbook off spin here, really g getting the batsman in those two minds, darting mm. it and attacking the wickets. Any false shots, and he's really in business here. Very yeah. thick inside edge on that one that dribbles up the crease, so it didn't turn quite as much as uh, they expected. Get some of the dust onto his hand, improve his grip. Certainly not getting the impression that he's he's turning at miles, but his flight and his line has been perfect yeah. today. And the top level spinners, I guess, you use everything in your arsenal. You're not just depending mm. on the spin. You can use the drift, obviously unaffected by the pitch, and just the speed of it, the length of it. Uh, do you, they do think about maybe trying to squeeze a single out of that, but they don't get it, and that I think is um, no, is that is that the third maiden wick, uh, uh, maiden over for Homer in a row? I think uh, he was. 10 overs, not for 24. So at the very least, the second. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, circumspect so batting since it's been all spin. Mm. And I, I think a lot of that's the way that they've placed the field as well. As we now see, it's a slight change in plans as a lot of the fielders are really out on the boundary. Maybe trying to prevent Parsons attacking too much. That does seem a little bit curious because they weren't... Um, it was hardly like Parsons was, um, I guess was he, having a go at him. Yeah, he's doing his best to ignore it, mm. I guess, and not go for the big shots. It's fired quite fast and flat by Neil Brandt. Yeah, so at the moment it's a very wide, deep third man. Uh, we have a long on, we have a mid-wicket on the boundary, and then a, a fine leg on the boundary as well. So four men all the way out. It's almost the implication that Brandt is going to bowl a deliberate bad ball at some point yeah because he hasn't looked like he's going to be hit, and hit you just hope that Parsons all. eyes light up yeah. and he forgets that there are four men out on the boundary just dinked into the offside and they are going to jog through for a single Sardal Irvia has heard me and decided to take up a cap so that he looks like a proper test match batsman from the late 80s and it is his baggy cap as well. So I don't have to have disapproving conversations about baseball caps at first class level. Yeah, I guess in the the red ball stuff and the white clothing stuff, there's not quite as many baseball caps. No. 
uh, he br immediately brings the reverse sweep out, which is not part of the plan when we're talking about conventional cricket. And uh, there is a attempt to diving stop here. It he does manage to knock it back. And good fielding there by Pillay, who rather messes up my praise by overthrowing it. <laughs> Still stopped it from being four, so... He did indeed. And they come through for three, though. That brings Irve into the 60s. He's 61 now. Parsons to face. He's going to be on 64, and the total is 133. Two overs remaining, two balls remaining in this over. Left. Because McQuinn is there, he's forcing the runner to be right out on the, the fifth um, pitch. Again, flatter, faster delivery. And um, the batsman did call for a drink in the in the previous over, so he's going to also swap out his helmet for a, a cap. Yeah, I think and Get a bit of a drink. Mid-30s out there. The Disney fact that you can it. actually see how flush they are from here. Yeah. <laughs> really, really, really Every really player out in yeah. that field is glistening. Yeah. This is a day where I would happily bowl with a cap on. I'm actually surprised that you know, at least spin bowling with a cap has not been something that's just become standard. Because there's no real reason not to not to have your cap on. But I think you can be very superstitious, or at least to the extent that you want everything to be the same mm. all the time, and switching between wearing a hat and not can certainly, be enough to put some bowlers off. Certainly bowling with a cap on is, is very common in women's cricket, um, but usually that's a response to, to hair. Yeah, because you don't want your hair in your face with the mm. ball coming straight back at you. Yeah, the other option where your Marazan cap and has to tie your hair back after every single ball you've ever bowled in international cricket as he skips down the wicket now and uh, or they have a bit of a shy at the stumps yeah I think if that had hit there's a chance that Sahil Ove had not made it back in time mm. but the throw in the end about a metre wide of the stumps at the non-strikers so Ove actually does have a a baseball style cap on whereas oh and he comes down he lofts this one over the man at uh, Madon and that is going to run away easily for four what sort of captains here are we going to see from Brunt is he going to leave <laughs> that man a long on out or back his original plan and bring it back in right now we've got McQuenna running to the long on boundary wearing pads that he put on to field a short mid wicket or short mid on yeah, well, considering how long it took him to put the pads on in the first place, I think he can bloody well keep them on for a while. And I, at least they're those lightweight pads, the yeah. specialist fielding pads. Worked into the onside. There is a shy at the non-strikers end, but they get through easily. Yeah, so sorry, so, so Parsons is wearing his baggy cap, but it is a Sina uh, baseball-style cap that Irve is wearing. He's wearing the, the full Hollywood, uh, Hollywood Betts Dolphins baseball cap, whereas Parsons has got his... Um, his dolphin's cap on. Palmer in again floats this one down and is driven into the offside, but it is uh, fielded by Khamani and no run. Plenty of air, and they knock it straight at that uh, Madon who's. In a curious sort of position, so he's far enough away that you can hit it hard at him and still get a sil uh, single, um, but was a little bit too close for any catch, but he now is dropping back a bit. Yeah, just outside the ring, yeah, one on McQuenna. About two-thirds of the way back to the boundary. Oof. Uh, one, one went on with the arm there and um, hurried Parsons a little bit in the shot and hit him high up on the leg. No real chance of a, an LBW, I think probably going down leg a little bit as well. That is the end of the 41st over. 140 without loss now. Uh, Sadal Irvi is there on 63. Parsons is on 69. And uh, the deficit's coming down quite, yeah. uh, quite briskly. 284 now. So 80 odd runs away from avoiding the follow on. About a third of the way there. Yeah. And have a nice oh, in fact, it's more. It's 150 was the, the follow on target. Uh, 150 deficit, isn't it? Yeah. In four, four day, day game. Yeah. This I know because it was part of my level two exam last week. I know that from that <laughs> that test that we played against Zimbabwe, that four day test uh, yes. with the pink ball. Uh, 
is going to be Edward to face, and he oh, straight away brings it, out the. Really. Uh, he's claiming that it's it, he played it into the ground. My initial reaction was it went into the ground. Um, and I wonder whether we're going to be able to rewatch this on. I think the umpires are going to have a little conference there. I, it wasn't given out. I didn't see. I definitely thought he played umpire this into White the ground, stick yeah. the finger up, but this side, the bowling side, is absolutely convinced. No, not out. <laughs> Simon's just going across to look at the replay. I'm sure we'll have uh, a yeah, decision really from see. him. Okay. You can't. You can't really see, but the angle that it went up to, um, to uh, uh, Yeah, it is. It, uh, um. It was yeah, Tudor yeah, to Brain, yeah, yeah, to brain at, at first up there. The angle that it, went, it, it, it flew to him, it either would have had to have bounced or been a, a top edge. And to be honest, it flew too fast for it to right. be a top edge. It felt, it felt like it bounced. And to be honest, the Dolphins players don't look terribly aggrieved by the whole thing I think they or the Titans players I think the, oh, the Titans players, players will be sorry, very yes. pleased yeah, yeah <laughs> sorry no. <laughs> the, the Titans players don't look particularly aggrieved by it is what I meant um, interesting little moment actually yeah I guess yeah. good umpiring from uh, Brad White too it can be very easy to fall for the celebrity appeal there where mm. it almost wasn't in doubt from the field inside yeah and so then go confer with your colleague yeah good umpiring See, uh, Parsons now tries to work this into the onside, gets something of a leading edge, and it just goes out to the offside and no run. Now, I was umpiring the other day against, oh, you don't umpire against people, but uh, <laughs> you, <laughs> for an old Eds match where um, a Rudabut player claims that he hit it back at the bowler with a bump ball. And I was at square leg, and the shot was played behind his front foot, so I couldn't see. But when it, when, as he hit it, I, my immediate reaction was that it was a bump ball. Um, but my colleague at, um, at the striker's end was certain that he hit it cleanly. And so, and so it was given out, much to the chagrin of the, of the batsman. But uh, you, go, you go with your colleague and you back him in those circumstances. Big stride in and defending it into the offside. Just getting the sense maybe that Parsons has um, tried to get his head back in the game a little bit and sort of play for the long haul. We had, we had an entertaining period for about half an hour, didn't we, straight after lunch? And, um, and apart from that one where he skipped down the wicket now, uh, what, about two overs ago, he's, uh, he's been pretty yeah. sure of I think he also is a little bit more comfortable against the spin than he was against the, the shorter pitch bowling, where he was trying to hit himself out of trouble a bit. I would be inclined to maybe every every ten overs give a couple of overs of, of flat out seam from somebody right. at Parsons. Yeah. You know you don't have to you don't have to keep one end bowling seam the whole time, but I think it's worth testing him. As a, this is Edver this time who does use his feet, but plays it without any real malice at mid on, and again is able to take a single despite hitting it quite hard straight at the fielder. Yeah, it would have been a single either way, but ended up being misfielded as well, so mm. it was slightly more casual than it could have been. So he does drop back a bit for Parsons, who thinks about coming down the pitch, and then works it into the onside. No run. Into the onside, someone's phone is buzzing. Not mine. Okay. Mine just keeping it muted quickly. Bit of air, a slower one from um, Harmer. Defended into the offside by Irvia. They'll be very, very happy with this partnership. 143. 
that's definitely already an opening partnership that a pair can, can take to bed at night feeling happy about themselves. Defend it into the onside, no run. Yeah, the, the long way off, it's still, unfortunately, we don't have comprehensive domestic stats, but I can tell you the highest opening wicket partnership in the four-day franchise series is 333 between Graham Smith and Andrew Puttick. So Graham Smith holds that record and then also holds the record for the highest opening partnership in test cricket for any country with Neil McKenzie. I remember them doing that against Bangladesh, 120 odd. Gosh. That last ball, by the way, was hit straight at, at uh, hit into the ground and then straight to um, Khamane. Uh, who's uh, at that um, fairly close cover and he feels it well every time he gets the ball he's, he's muttering about his hands so I don't know whether he's just fielding with hard hands today or whether he is actually carrying a bit of an injury um, but I've seen him quite a few times wringing his hands after fielding right, Neil, Neil Brunt to continue he's going to be bowling two Parsons He drives this straight at a tumbling McQuenna. No run. No, that was in the days when Bangladesh really weren't a threat. Right. Uh, it was at Bangla in Bangladesh. Yeah, that yeah. was. I think, oh, I can double check, but I think mm. it was in Chittagon. Um, Looks to turn this on to the onside and slightly irritated with himself that he missed out on that. Although I think our highest opening partnerships in recent times have come against Bangladesh as well. Dean Elgin mm -hmm. and Adam Markram really dined out when they toured here. Mm. Yeah, Bangladesh go through stages a bit. I mean, they're having really played incredibly well against New Zealand and Australia at home. Um, have been have been yeah. woeful this this T20. I think game. that can be the difference. There are very very strong in Bangladesh conditions mm. at the moment. I mean, they beat. Australia and New Zealand, I think both 4-1. Either mm -hmm. way, they won both that series. Even if it was a slightly weakened Australian side, they, they can be so good domestically. In tests as well. Mm. Have they won a test against a top-tier nation? I think they beat England in Bangladesh. The game where Mahedi Hassan Maraz made his debut and I took five and six in each of the innings. I can double-check that. Okay. That was, I remember that because I think Mehdi Hassan was the first test player that, that I saw who was younger than me. <laughs> That's always a, a seminal moment, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Mine was Paul Adams. Who I think is the second youngest player to play for South Africa. Victor Mpitsang is the youngest mm -hmm. South African test debutant. Really? I, yeah. I would have got that wrong in a, in a quiz. I would, have, I would have said Paul. Yeah, I guess Paul Adams had a far more mm. illustrious career for the South African side than Victor Mpitsang is. I think it was a bone spurs issue, mm. but yeah, he he got was obviously picked on potential, and then he had a, he did play domestic cricket for a long time after that, but didn't quite earn another call up for the South African side. I'm not sure whether we were talking about it on air or during the lunch break about women possibly playing longer format. Yeah, uh, I think it was uh, during the lunch break. And but one of the problems that they've had is that they had a a fairly intense um, bubble-driven round-robin tournament uh, First year, but. Yeah, towards the end of last month. And they played, I think it was 350 over games in four days, something like right. that. Um, and a couple of injuries have resulted from that. I guess the more you start doing that, the, the more the players will start to adapt. Mm. And it won't be an issue. We were talking about the fact you have to have long format game in any women's series even if it's just the one mm. and that's how you get the level up we saw some really good cricket between Australia and India women recently that it did include a test that was unfortunately didn't get to a, a result other than a draw mm. I think a bit of rain and eventually we'll see all of those games be five days as well I yeah. imagine yeah I've got no problem with it even being even if they start at, at, at two day cricket as long as you've got two innings cricket I think well, would be would be important but that's where you do need two sides that are at a similar level because yeah. it really can expose differences and it's not doesn't make for good watching but yeah India Australia that that ends up being a good game yeah I, mean, I would certainly like to see any of the top four of which I would include South Africa yeah. in um, playing each other in in multi-day 
women's cricket. And I mean, it does happen. Obviously, the women's Ashes is set up differently to the men's Ashes, where it's a point system across the three formats. But mm. yeah, you definitely have to have tests when it's England and Australia. For sure. Harmer coming in right on around the wicket and uh, has uh, bowled a very steady line. They do have a bit of a bustle here, but in the end, taken fairly easily. And they go through for a single 145 now without loss. Parsons into the 70s, he's on 72. Elvier is on 65. I mean, he has been in the 70s already. The shadows of crows circling the ground. Lots of thermals for them to ride, I'd imagine. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and defended into the offside, no run. Yeah, it would, uh, certainly not the possible corpses of the uh, the Dolphins bat batsmen that they might be interested in, but possibly some outfielders who might be dying of boredom and or... Yeah, dead morale. Yeah, oh, dead morale. It's not Save that your boredom, main, yeah. yeah it's not. <laughs> this has been great batting, and they, they come through 4-2. Elvia goes on to 67, 147 now, just three runs away from that 150 run partnership. It will almost certainly be a breeding pair and perhaps a, a fledgling companion flying over the ground here. Lots of, um, at this time of year, lots of crows showing up in that, that three formation. A little bit of discussion between the batsmen as much as anything else. I think there wasn't too much around the fielders. Mike Neil Brand to continue. Okay, so the over rate is now plus nine. I don't honestly know how we could have gone from minus five to plus nine there. Unless it's an average where they're working out where you think you're going to be at the end of the day if you carry on at this rate. I think that might or be what that If what it's that minutes ahead rather than overs ahead. Uh, is it? Might be that, yes. I think you might well be right there. Either way, the spinners have remedied the issues that the, the Titans were facing with over rates. Indeed. And Brand has bowled well. It's into his seventh over now, not for 14. So sort of two and a half runs and over, nothing and on the door. And those half chances that we were talking about, the exactly. balls just dropping short or reverse sweeps that hit the ground first. There has been danger there. Mm. Worked into the onside, but it is fielded by Khamani at, um, at that mid wicket. This time to the short catcher at that silly Madon, Aquena. Quite surprised at how close the um, uh, the helmet behind the, the batsman is to Tiernus de Brown. Yeah. I would have thought another couple of meters behind would have been would have been safer there. Uh, they play it straight to Madoff, but he is a bit closer than McQuena has been when we've been bowling from the other end, and so they're not able to take a, a single. In fact, the f f field is a lot more conservative for for uh, for Neil Brunt. We had spoken about it earlier. The man at at deep mid on, at deep right. mid wickets, at deep backward square leg. None of those have have really attracted um, shots at all, and I would think yeah. that I would think that encouraging the batsman to, to hit over over the wicket is probably a little bit more sensible. I think that's exactly it. We haven't seen batting mm. that's demanded a, a defensive field like this. Defended into the offside, no run. You might find that there is um, interest from the um, from the Titans side in actually slowing everything down and right. and. Yeah, I'm, I'm, the, uh, I'm not an expert at all in the Byzantine way that, that points work in, in these sort of competitions. But I think there's a lot going on and behind the scenes. I it? guess if run rate becomes any sort of pressure, if the batsmen feel like they can't get it away, what mm. this does is it means that they're not going to target Brunt because of that defensive field. There's a chance they see a slightly more attacking field for Harmer mm. and he's the thinking anyway from Brunt would be that he's the guy that they try to target and well, he's more likely to be a wicket taker but now we, we have do see Corbin Simon Bosch in, yeah. taken off the seam option that you wanted to see Corbin Bosch who was looking dangerous 
right at the beginning of this innings, a couple of half chances. Yeah, I'm very, very happy with that. I think that uh, mixing it up a bit, you can always go back to Homer after a couple of overs. Yeah. But I would like to see, um, I would like to see just a little bit of seam interspersed uh, every now and again, so that we don't get in a relentless um, spin. We might also, it might this might also be that they were waiting for that signal on the on the scoreboard that they were back ahead of the over it. Yeah, I, I don't know if you want to be basing too many bowling decisions around that, but it can be. Well, because it has a point's impact. I think that it's uh, it is something that is quite serious. Um, or that the certainly the captains are expected to take right. seriously. Right, so two slips of the gully in place. That second slip quite close, quite a long way ahead of first slip. Deep square leg and deep points are the men on the boundary. No fine leg or third man. Oh no, there is there a, is fine, a fine, fine leg, leg but yeah. quite a wide fine leg. Very defensive leg side field that. I mean, there's not a unless he is going to bang it in and and, and try and get them to pull this. Um, I would maybe have that guy a little bit closer than if that was the case. We get to see how this experiment slowly plays out. Elsewhere in the world, Australia 82 for one after just nine overs. So that game looking like it's going to go the way of the men in yellow. Which largely wraps up their, their semi final ambitions. Well, wraps up South Africa's. <laughs> yeah, it just means that South Africa yeah. need to beat England by more. Mm. Left alone and through to the keeper. Oh, two men in the covers who are reasonably close to the uh, the batsman. Sorry, I'll over doing a little bit of gardening there. I can't imagine the pitch hasn't seemed to have too much. It doesn't seem to have too much that you can actually do to it. It still looks pretty fresh. Right, I'm around the wicket as he has bowled all day in that channel, just left alone. And he will have to do that again. Are a few storm clouds building ever so slowly on that uh, that southern that southern horizon? But uh, the actual rain is a long, long way away. I mean, it's over the horizon; we can't see it at all. And the ones that are a bit closer are still baby clouds, not yet anywhere near building up to storm capability. As again, this is left alone outside the off stump. No run. Two balls remaining in the over as the umpire signals across to his colleague. It's always interesting to me that that, that doesn't change. Even though you've got an electric scoreboard where everyone can see how many how many balls are remaining, the umpires still keep their clickers, still still keep track of, what, of, of what's going on. Which is a good thing because the scoreboard is frozen in <laughs> Super Sport Park. Uh, he makes this uh, much, much fuller ball, and it is flicked off his toes. That was exactly the bad ball that Edivere was waiting for, and he plays that through mid-wickets uh, for four. That takes him through to 72. And the score's fine. The opening partnership, 151 now. Uh, for 151. Just unceasing between these two. <coughs> and yeah, no matter how the, the packed leg side field didn't do much to defend there because both of the the deep leg side fielders mm. are quite well, one's square and one's a widish fine leg. Yeah, and so, that, was, that, that was a good example of um, uh, of, of Bosch actually running out of patience before the batsman. He had had three balls in a row that had been left alone outside the off stump, and the he lost it somewhat and. and played a, a fuller one searching for that Yorker and it was just unfortunately um, in the slot and flicked away far far too easily yeah I do wonder if seamers are more prone to do that than the spinners you put more effort into each delivery and then when nothing happens you yeah. can't get the temptation <laughs> the material cost of, uh, of of being left alone just generally um, slightly more impatient personalities in general aren't they fast bowlers as compared to just about everyone else on the cricket field but it, yeah, equally it must be frustrating if you're a spinner and you get hit around a bit. You don't have that bouncer in your arsenal. Mm. You can't take it out in the batsman. You just have to hope <laughs> that they don't continue doing it. Is going to be Neil Brand to continue. 
and this is worked into the onside as well. Um, the same sort of angle as the four that we saw. Uh, this, of course, from Parsons though, and it is fielded easily. No run. Rocked back. And it is McQuenna this time who comes around and does the fielding. More of the same, just staying in the crease, working it into the onside, but with no real intention of scoring off that. At 151 came up of 47 overs. 3.2 the rate achieved. It's pretty bog standard for first class cricket these days, I think. I've done it before we different years how test run rates have gone up and down i think in most formats tests and odis the sort of late 2000s or early 2010s is where it peaked mm. with fielding restrictions bat restrictions coming back i think there's a little bit more in the in it for the bowler again yeah i, I remember you you sharing that with us on air and uh we also dis discussed, you know, who who was batting in those days. I mean, it was an Australian team that could score at will and deliberately tried to score at very very fast um, rates too. Um, and at, at probably at a time where places like Bangladesh were um, were just cannon fodder. And I guess when the big three took time to play other sides. Mm. Right. So that was a was that a, a maiden over? I think it was from. Um, Neil Brunt. Uh, from Neil Brunt. So he's now bowled eight overs, not 14. I think that's actually his second maiden over in a row. Uh, Bosch is the other batsman, uh, the other bowler at the moment. He's been a little bit more expensive. Uh, well, a little more. I mean, three runs and over. Yeah. Uh, oh, Brunt's the only of, uh, as the part time, he's the only of the five bowlers to be going at under two and over. Mm. Maybe that's the defensive field. He's the captain. He wants his economy <laughs> rate to look good. He's got that. Yeah, it run out deep for him. So, a little bit of discussion as he moves his field around, tries to get the man at square leg a little bit straighter. Right arm over, so straight away into the bouncer, and this is worked around to uh, Pele, who's down there at a deep uh, square leg, and they scamper through for two. Good running there by the batsman. Edver goes on to 73, 153 now without loss. I don't really get the sense that those two men out deep are, are part of a leg side trap. I think it is just defensive. Yeah, just, just in case mm. Coleman Bosch goes a little bit straight, or just insurance that he can attack the wickets without worrying about straight down leg and conceding the boundary. Good uh, angle there. The ball did come back after it pitched uh, so that the keeper took it to his right hand side but I think the ball was probably slightly wider when it went past the stumps than it subsequently looked and those have been the deliveries from Bosch that have looked the most dangerous that the ones that spike up just around waist high past the batsman on that fourth or fifth stump line mm. just tempting the edge he does have two slips in place still and a gully there is a man sweeping on the offside Right, I'm around the wicket and straight in that that channel where we know he got frustrated in the last over bowling there. Who's going to win the battle of the minds here, Ervia or Bosch? Yeah, I have the feeling that Ervia has a lot of patience there. I don't think he's going to to fall into that mm. sort of trap. That's the mindset of a, a, a <laughs> yeah, an opening batsman who's been playing domestic cricket for just over 10 years. Yeah, I mean, this is this is absolute bog standard day at the office for him, isn't it? Plenty of sun. Pitch not doing very much. No ball called. As a Bosch just stretches for a little bit more effort there. He'll have to bowl that one again, I'm afraid. Yeah, and the only real signs of impatience that Edva have had are the reverse sweeps. And these days, yeah. actually, the, the reverse sweep is such a, a practiced 
an accepted part of their arsenal that it's not necessarily a sign of um, of, of impatience. I still... Yeah, the false shot percentage from the reverse sweep is probably similar to the regular sweep, but when you actually do go out to it, the scrutiny from <laughs> the spectator seems a lot harsher. Now, I was quite appalled when I discovered that my daughter was being taught the reverse sweep very early on in her career, um, and then subsequently encouraged to, to play it as much as she liked during matches. Um, she seems to have shelved it, shelved it for the time being because she prefers, uh, she prefers batting long to batting spectacularly. But I think it is a sign from modern coaches that they are, they are willing to let the kids experiment and to do the stuff that they see on TV, which, yeah. which I like. I and if you teach them when to use it, when there is a, a gap there to exploit that, it is a genuine option. Worked into the onside. Um, not quite the sign of impatience that maybe we saw beforehand and that he didn't really, wasn't really able to get hold of it. But certainly having bowled two balls in that channel, he then came back onto the stumps. And we'll now get to see how Parsons is going to negotiate Bosch this time around. Yeah, we haven't. I don't think we've seen Parsons face not Bosch since, in this. Yeah, not yeah, since he's come back, back on for this new spell. And I think straight away we'll see uh, we'll see a shorter ball to see. That is, yeah, ha what has looked dangerous. Mm. Although you know, the ball a lot older now than it was during Bosch's first spell. Oh, he <laughs> floats one right up, and it lands up being a full toss outside the off stump, and Parsons doesn't really get as much on it as I think he would have liked and it goes straight to the man at that sweeper and they just jog through for a single he goes to 73 Edivere is there on 74 and the total is 156 they're doing a good job of exchanging the lead of leading run scoring this innings the, the two opening batsmen for the Dolphins it's gone to and fro yep. at the end of the day we can try to graph that <laughs> As we might, as it is going to continue with spin from the same as well. Uh, yeah. It does look like we are his brunt again. It's a ball from the Hillops River end. The end that is governed by Brad White. And Pele is waving his arms around its uh, cover, but I'm not sure whether that's an intention to bowl or whether he's just stretching himself as. Uh, it's played on the bounce to a tumbling McQuenna. Right. Defended. No run. What time did we come back from lunch? It was 10 to 1, wasn't it? Thereabouts, yeah. yeah. So we must be closing in on the end of this second session. So three o'clock is when is when tea will be taken. And then we could be in for a marathon final session with at the moment forty four overs still to bowl. If the, the weather behaves. If we'll the weather keep behaves. an eye on that. Works into the onside, they'll take an easy single here. Oh, certainly, we don't look like we're too close to having any yeah. issues yet. It's been a good day for cricket. Definitely a good day for watching cricket. Well, you can ask if the players agree. <laughs> well, now that we've managed to get the air conditioning working in our commentary box, it's thoroughly pleasant. Again, worked into the outside, and they're just going to trot through for a the most desultory of singles. 158 without loss now. The sounds of a football match coming from one of our colleagues' <laughs> laptops in the We can the pretend press, that that's box. happening nearby, whatever <laughs> sport grounds that aren't Super Sport Park and nearby <laughs> Super Sport Park. Now we're still at the, 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 not quite the stage of having COVID crowd noises pumped in. Not far off. Right, that is the end of that over. After um, after 50 overs, the score is 158 without loss. Edivere on 75, Parsons on 74. Run rate of 3.2. 43 overs left in the day. And the Titans now 
we think 10 minutes ahead of over 8. We think that that's how that's, that works. So probably about 3 overs then. Yes. Yeah. And bear in mind that you, you always look at the... You, 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 you essentially get an extra over in because you have to start you know, with 30 seconds to go in the, before, before the cutoff time. So, so it's essentially four overs ahead. Right, some discussion, we're pulling the second slip out to a gully. There is a man at cover and at mid-off. And at mid-wicket, very bog-standard field. This is defended into the onsides. No run. Yeah, still those two men behind square that they've had for Corbin Bosch, the yeah, square leg, mm. wide -ish, fine leg. Yeah, he, I mean, he, he hasn't tried to feed them nearly as much as, as you thought he would have. Yeah, I don't know if the ball's gone to fine leg once in this mm. most recent spell, but a bit of insurance there in case he does stray a bit too down leg. And it isn't Erve the one who, who's going to hit it there, it'll be passing if it does happen. Uh, left outside the off stump and no run yeah good speed and good carry there but it counts for nothing when the batsman's not interested and the umpire has decided he's had enough of having the sun glint off the uh, the pitch in front of him so he's moving across to the offside so he'll have the sun at his back it's always a relief when you've you've worked and worked and worked for it and then eventually you decide no I'm just going to tell the batsman I'll be standing it off sir Yeah, we'll see. It doesn't look like the man at deep point has any issue with the umpire being there. Yeah. Shorter ball and uh, Irve reacts a little bit as it maybe just brushes his glove on the um, on the handle of the bat. But he handles it very, very well, just dropping it into the onside. Fielded by McQuenna at that quite short mid wickets he basically region. yeah he, that's where he's fielding but he had to run to almost mm. exactly where umpire white was that short square leg that joke of when you move a fielder that's where the ball <laughs> goes in this case you move the umpire now i've been thinking quite a lot about whether mid, uh, square leg is a is a reasonable position to have because you don't actually see a conventional square leg very often in cricket anymore but i reckon as an umpire i would take a catch every two games at, at square leg this has worked into the onside. Will the fielder get around? He does a very, very good job of uh, diving that pillar down there, and um, he manages to save certainly two runs. That takes the score to 160 without loss. Edvira on 77, Parsons on 74. There is a sense here, I think, of everyone being quite keen for T to come. Fifth ball of the over, right arm around the wicket, are oh, just in that channel. And it actually bounces just before the keeper, but they weren't really thinking about a run, I think. Yeah, Bryce yeah. Parsons still very much on the ball, was <laughs> ready to run to the other end, so I'll have yeah. <laughs> happy enough to yeah. <laughs> face the final delivery of over, no need for anything definitely, silly there. Definitely considered a dead ball when it went past him, and he wasn't expecting the keeper to st stuff it up at all. So one ball remaining. And it'll be down to whether or not the um, the umpire walks briskly to the other end, whether we get another over in before tea. Oh, actually, the cloud shadow has come over the ground now. Will this be the last over, the last ball before tea? Let's have a look. Long runner from Bosch, right arm around the wicket. Bowls the bouncer in. And the batsman certainly is very, very keen to walk for tea. Yeah, in fact, three o'clock has ticked over. So that will be the tea break. We'll be back in about 20 minutes uh, to give you the final session of the day. The Dolphins at the moment, 160 without loss, trying to chase down that first inning total of 424. The deficit is still 264. Sardal Irvia is there on 77, Bryce Parsons is there on 74, we will see you in 20 minutes.
Well, welcome back. Uh, first ball after T is bowled by Neil Brand from the Hamps River end and just worked into the onside uh, by Parsons. By Parsons. No, no, sorry, that is Sorrel over here. I was uh, looking at the Sorrel over here, was funny. No, they're in two. Oh, okay, <laughs> Parsons. <laughs> I, I was watching because between this game and the Warriors game, I think we've averaged out a normal amount of wickets because <laughs> not too many here today but the Warriors find themselves 18 for 5 against the Lions same shot That's again at George's part. and they run through for 2 sorry you said 18 for 5 yeah. against the Lions down in St George's Park Lions uh, well they uh, the Warriors scored 96 I think in the first innings there yeah and then the Lions scored about 117 put the Warriors back in 18 for 5 Don Olafia has taken 2 Magal has taken 2 and I think Lutoso Pamela took the last there's uh, plenty of air provided there by um, uh, by oh, there's actually Harmer bowling from the same, from the, from that that end. They've, they've swapped over, and um, so they they go through for a single. 164 uh, now without loss. Uh, sorry, they didn't take a single there. Parsons is uh, facing and plays a textbook forward defensive. He's on 78. Irvier is on 77. Uh, the Dolphins have batted right the way through the lunch, uh, the the um, the middle interval, the uh, interval. What do you call it? The middle session, lunchtime session. Ooh, Ooh well, it's bold him. Fantastic he from to, Simon Harmer. Yeah, I think he, uh, I think he, it came sort of down under his bat and uh, and bounced back, and he is very very upset with himself. Yeah. That is uh, the end of any uh, hope that I think he might have had to get a his debut. Test uh, test hundred here. Well, first class hundred. The first class hundred, yeah. Sorry, first class hundred. Was Maybe it was yeah. made in testing <laughs> hundred, yeah. So it's not a roll doll book because that's Parsons' displeasure there. Just yeah. uh, hopefully that it's at least some <laughs> of our listeners is Parsons' pleasure. A short story by Roll Doll, but finally the first wicket falls. One hundred and sixty-four runs in. Bryce Parsons gone for seventy-eight runs of one hundred and fifty-two deliveries. Eleven fours in that innings. He's very disappointed. He's taking his time mm. walking off the field understandable yeah it must be bitterly disappointing to put in all that effort and then very shortly after the tea break yeah I don't think they're going to be able to get him off the field he's yeah in fact McQueen is coming jogging all the way down to maybe give him a bit of a shove <laughs> <laughs> yeah he, I don't think I've ever seen a batsman take this long to get off the get off the <laughs> pitch <laughs> he, really, he is irritated with himself time darts and so he's already out for the next <laughs> dance <laughs> as it looks like Keegan Peterson's going to be the man coming in at number three for the Dolphins. He scored 56 against Western Province last week. Mm-hmm. And quite nice to have such a big partnership and then have a South African test batsman come in as your number three. Absolutely. Maybe disheartening for the Titans, but positive for the Dolphins. But yeah, one might bring two. Well, we don't know exactly how this is going to go from here. Now, I was about to say that you and I are no strangers to, uh, to commentating for entire sessions where wickets don't go down. How is the hell? 140 yards <laughs> off, about 350 deliveries on a very, very the, slow morning in the UAE. One of the longest days of my life. I ended up having a panic attack that evening when I thought of having to do a second day of test match because I think we cancelled it in the end. Yeah, but it's almost it was almost a good thing that not that many people were listening, so we didn't disappoint people by yeah. not doing another day. It would have been a real curse if that had actually garnered some interest. Simon Arnold looks like he's going to change his line of attack to Keegan Pierce in the right-hand bat. He's shifting Sal Irvia over to the other side, so he's going to be coming in right arm around. Oh, right arm over. Right, right arm over, yeah. It will be finally Simon some conventional Arnold. cricket. Right-hander to right-hand, as God intended. McQuenna has, um, has come under the, uh, the helmet. Uh, that's why he was jogging down following um, Parsons all the way down to the, the boundary to go and fetch his helmet. And the first ball, uh, Peterson uh, plays it quite strongly back to, to Harmer. And uh, that is the end of, finally, a successful <coughs> over for the Titans. Harmer managing to bowl uh, Bryce Parsons, who was furious with yeah. himself as he, he walked off. Um, I think it was a fairly unlucky dismissal. He, he played it into the ground and then it sort of snuck back under his bat uh, to bowl him. That was my impression anyway. I don't think he, he just missed it. Um, but uh, but having having ridden his luck a little bit, I think uh, I think he can he can feel that he's he should be happy enough with a score in the mid seventies. 
Yeah. It could well, very it easily have been a score in the 20s. Yeah, he, well, that's the whole thing. He was dropped mm. on 24 and dropped again on 45. So, I mean, he, he did a good job of making the most of those lives. Didn't go mm. all the way to 100, but still a very positive innings to follow up the 45 that he scored last week. All right, so it will be Ayad Gavane who is going to take over. He's bowled six overs so far today. He's gone for 25 runs. <clears throat> he has two slips in place. And he bowled the entirety of his first spell from the Hanops River end. Now he switched mm. over to the pavilion end. And in fact, they brought him on straight after lunch. Um, that was when he, he bowled his first overs. So obviously he's uh, a charismatic man in the dressing room who gets included in the coach's plans during the breaks. That they seem to bring him on straight after the breaks each time. Bowled past the um, outside the off stump. Ervia lets that go. And it goes on the bounce through to the keeper. No run. And yeah, in Abu Dhabi and Australia have managed to beat the West Indies by, by I think nine wickets in the end, if not eight wickets. So South Africa, <laughs> the work cut out for them this afternoon. We'll That's going to give be an update on that as well. Ever just rocks back and flat bats that through the covers. That runs away for four. That's going to take him into the 80s. He'll be on 81. And uh, the score goes on to 168 now. Gets the partnership off, off the mark. McQuenna diving across and the covers there wasn't quite able to stop it. Is it McQuenna? Yeah, it's a tendency to call everyone McQuenna on this in this in this it is it's indeed him. Oh a, a almost bullet. a checked shot, yeah. yeah really. Ball it should have been played out into the offside. He ended up getting a monster inside edge and it it uh, went through to um to mid wicket. Sort of in between shots where he half rolled his wrist over the top of it but yeah. didn't commit all the way in the end he survives and there's no harm done there. Oh, it's Makanya actually who's fielding it in the covers and McQuena who is um, at mid-wicket. As we were saying, Sibonelo Makanya, another one of that 2014 under-19 South African side that lifted the World Cup in that year. Another very, very straight ball and uh, played into the onside. Quena does the fielding and uh, play acts throwing it at the uh, at the striker's end, keeping himself amused. He seems like a bouncy character in the field, clapping his hands, trying to g his men up. Just the one slip in place now. There is a gully as well. Still the man um, on the sweeper, on the offside boundary, and on the leg side boundary. But a catching with wicket. Another quite straight ball that is just defended into the offside and no run. Quinner again clapping and walking across into the offside. Does that mean that he's is he just coming to chat to Makanya? I think he is. And walks back onto his side of the field. He might have been going to that pitch on the right to get a bit of sandal sawdust or something on his hands. I saw him rubbing his hands. Yeah. Well, a long way to go. I'm sure there's patches that he could have used on his own side of the field. And again, driven and Makanya does the fielding. Good tight over by Komaini. And at the end of seven overs, he's naught for 29. So five runs off that over. Dolphins 168 for one now after 53. And we're going to see some more Harmer after he gets that wicket. He's obviously got a man who's just come back from tea, but also the fresh face of Keegan Peterson. So if there's a time to hit, it's right now. Yeah, I think they'll desperately be hoping that, that one brings two or three here to get themselves bowled back into this match somewhat. I mean, still with a, a lead of 256 in the Titans, so this has hardly been a disaster, this opening partnership, but um, uh, <clears throat> but the game is in danger of drifting to a, to a draw if yeah. they're careful. Especially considering we're only one and a half days into this match. And yeah, four-day game, mm, and yeah. risk of rain all throughout the next couple of days. I think we'd have to see something quite interesting to happen for. 
a result to come out of it. Well, hopefully it'll happen in the next hour as Peterson flicks this into the onside. It goes past a diving uh, McQuenna at uh, a short square leg. And in fact, it runs all the way to the boundary where it evades uh, a diving Pele, I think, is, is the man who's been sweeping on the, on the leg side there and runs away for four. So Peterson off the mark. He goes to four. The partnership to eight. And the score... I think it's 172. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's the um, scoreboard is a little tricky today and it's managed to freeze again. There we go, 172. The other scoreboard is still working. Slipping a short leg in place. Oh, and just turned into the onside past the tumbling McQuenna, who, I mean, it was hit strongly enough that it wasn't really a chance. Sometimes those stick. And it comes through for two. Well, certainly Peterson has looked very confident in his first uh, five or six balls that he's faced in this in the innings. But just stoically defended this time, no run. I don't know the exact reason, but I think Keegan Peterson wears 93 when he plays for South Africa, but here we see him. And 29. And you know, 29 feels like quite an arbitrary number. Whereas 93 is, I have Probably to double check, I think it's the year of his birth. Yeah. yeah. Which is the year that I matriculated. That dates both of us. <clears throat> yeah, I remember the oldest I've ever felt. Well, I was invited to give a valedictory address to a matric class. And, oh, again, just worked into the onside. He's he's a candidate here for for holding out to to um, to short short square leg if he's not if he's not careful. He's he's hit it both past yeah. both hands of uh, of McQuella that that over, but each time with confidence. So it hasn't really been a problem. No, so I was invited to a valedictory. First time I'd ever given a valedictory address. So, so I thought, well, maybe what I should do is is Google, you know, when a seventeen year old was born and to figure out what. Uh, what sort of things that happened around about the time that they, right. were, they were tiny children and discovered only then when I, when I worked it out that they had all been born in 92, 93, which was when I matriculated. Right. And I felt very, very old indeed. And that passage of time is ceaseless if you think this year's matrix were born in 2003. Oh, good Lord, yes. And yeah, of course, because my son is matric yeah. now. He is a 2003 baby. And yeah, great Nords this year were born in 2015. <laughs> well, somehow that feels even worse. 2015 yeah. was literally like couple of weeks ago. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. That's it, is going to be um, uh, Aya Kamani to continue and uh, knocked into the offside, no run. So England have won the toss and have in, in charge and decided oh. that they're going to field first. That was literally our only chance, wasn't <laughs> yeah. it? Well, something remarkable could still happen. South Africa put out an unchanged lineup in that game. It had better be... I mean, we, 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 we're going to have to score 200 and, and belt them. Yeah, I'll, I'll get the old med run red calculator out at some stage. I'm sure a lot of people on Twitter have done so already, and we can figure out exactly what South Africa needs to do. If, yeah, every one of our batsmen fires, easy enough. Defended into the onside, no run. Yeah, I'm reasonably sure that we... Look, I mean... Coming third in that group is probably par for where we are. But I think that game against South Africa, uh, the game against Australia, rather, was within our grasp. And that is going to end up being the big difference maker in this group. The fact that we fell to them and they get those extra two points. Mm. So Mario comes in again from the pavilion end and it's worked off his hips, but he's not going to get a single... Who is that enthusiastic chap down there? Who's? I don't think it is. That's square is leg. It, yeah, Javier Pillay. Is it? It is indeed Pillay. Yeah, the man is. I think was an opening batsman, but since he's joined the Titans, has found himself in the middle order a little bit more. In this game, anyway, he's coming, replacing an all-rounder. Mm. The Titans going for the extra batting depth. Danger Khalim out for this game after playing very well in the last. I think he picked up a, a bit of a niggle there. So I'm walking around. Call it backstage, yeah, around the ground. <laughs> Hit into the pitch and um, bobbles over the bowler and uh, down to Madon, who does the fielding. I'm trying to have a look at who that is. I think it's Neil Brand. 
who's fielding in that classic captain's position at Madon Madoff. It is indeed. Turns for the fifth ball of his over. Right him over, angling it across the left hander who just drives with no real problem. Colin Down Bosch. to Bosch at, uh, at Madoff. And uh, no run. So probably the two tallest fielders, maybe outside of Tiennes de Brain at Madon and Madoff. Mm. There's some logic to that. Yeah, I'm always struck by how big professional cricketers are as a general rule. I and mean, obviously you have the Bavumas and the Petersons right. of this world. But um, every single time I've shown up at a Wanderers practice and there's been someone unusually big there, it's turned out to be one of the Lions guys coming through. I think, yeah, <laughs> people in general, but sportsmen in particular, are getting taller. Mm. There's an interesting thing with that where often you find the the shorter batsmen are better at playing the short ball where the taller batsmen because they were so tall at junior level almost nothing was coming at their heads and, to, and you don't face it mm. until you start playing more senior cricket so the extra few years of short batsmen honing their skills against balls around their head mm. does end up serving them in the long run yeah I mean it's very very true Amy my daughter is, is tiny and she is the only player in her team who's had balls signalled as, um, as as bounces at her level. Right. It's very, very rare to bowl bounces at, at, in, in women's cricket. Um, but she gets them reasonably regularly from decent bowlers anyway. Whereas the taller girls that just never gets up above their chin, so it's not a problem. Until you suddenly have to face <coughs> Shabu Ishmael. Exactly, yes. <coughs> Shibu herself is not, not exactly the tallest person on the planet. She's about 5'1 or something, 5'2". I think probably closer to 5'5". Five, five. I think she's sort of Is Fidel she? Edwards height. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Defended and no run. So that's Simon Harmon getting through his over reasonably briskly here. So this is his 18th over today. He's uh, bowled uh, by miles the most of, uh, of anyone. And actually, Bosch is the, the, the second most used bowler. He's bowled 13. But Harmer used to really, really piling on the, uh, the volume of overs. He, he's probably bowled the most of any South African player in, in the last 10 years, I would have thought. Definitely in the yeah. last few. Between, yeah. And the amount of overs he was bowling in county cricket. I mean, as a spinner, and then he just kept taking wickets, so you just keep him on. Mm. Just a massive number of overs. I mean, he's probably in line for the player who's bowled the most overs in the world, actually. In, in I, I don't really know what the domestic cricket looks like in a India, lot of the eight, example, yeah, yeah, in Pakistan. Yeah, I mean, there's probably spinners in some of the leagues in India who are bowling 40, 40 overs a, a Saturday every single, yeah. every single weekend. <clears throat> uh, defended. And that is the end of that over. 18 overs bowled by Simon Harmer. He's... Taken one for 46. He's the only success that uh, the Titans have had uh, today with uh, that ball that squeezed under the bat of Bryce Parsons, took the top of his off stump and uh, let, left him disconsolate and very, very unkeen to leave the field of play. 78 was his score, which is his highest first class score ever. And I think you would be, have to be slightly churlish to be desperately unhappy about scoring your, uh, a, a landmark like that. Yeah, but I, I think, think he clearly wants his hundred. Yeah, you can be very disappointed, but he'll probably look back at it in a mostly positive way. Mm. After right arm over the wickets uh, by Kamani, and it goes through to the keeper, who's still taking it quite low um, down near his ankles. You were talking about most overs bowled. It's always absurd if you look back at cricketers from about a hundred years ago. The sort of numbers uh, yes. that could exist. So. Wilfred Rhodes, I think, played more first-class matches than anyone. Mm -hmm. He played over a thousand first-class matches, and just every one of his numbers ends up being insane. He took over four thousand first-class wickets. Jeez. He bowled about yeah in modern six ball overs, the equivalent of about thirty thousand overs in his career. Yeah, as this is beautifully driven straight straight back past the bowler, just misses the uh, the non-striker's stumps, and uh, that runs away for four. And it takes Irvia to 85 now, 
and the total to 178 for one. Oh, and that's a lot of cricket. So this is from Impor. Apparently, if South Africa wins by about 57 runs today, since we're batting first, mm. I think that puts us ahead of Australia. And when you put it like that, it's, it still seems plausible. We'll have to see how that game plays out. Can you work that out without knowing what the first innings total is? I, th- I, I think I think you can because you... If you're batting first, you divide oh, it's the way net run gonna, rate works. It's going to be a run rate as opposed to, yeah. <clears throat> so uh, uh, that's assuming no one's all out. Well, no, it would be just because you will always work it out. And I guess overs, assuming right? both teams bat the mm-hmm. 20 overs mm-hmm. or they're both all out mm-hmm. and making a count as 20 overs. So 57 runs, that's that's the target. So you can't, no conservative batting it is go big or go home for the South Africans I in can, that first innings. I could imagine that you could probably attract odds of 200 to 1 for uh, a, a, a score of South Africa win by more than 50 against this England side. Uh, it's probably, yeah, 200 to 1 are the, the insane bets. I've got, <laughs> right now, I have a bet on for 400 to 1 in the NBA. Okay. Just because I had four and left in my account and <laughs> had nothing else interesting to do with it played into the offsides and there is a sweeper there who collected that and so they just jog through for the single that moves Ervia to 86 there's going to be Peterson to face um, the pace of Ayakumari for the first time today yeah. <clears throat> it be interesting to see what the plan is here for the right hander bowling to the right hander Two slips in the galleon place. Lots of men on the off sides. Yeah. The only men on the leg side, that fine leg, is sort of catching mid wicket and the short mid on. Oh, oh, oh! Straight back past the bowler. He must have got fingertips to that. And it could so, so easily have been a second, uh, second wicket there. And then Neil Brunt relays it to Corbin Bosch and they stop it from going over the boundary. But that is another little half chance. Romani has been really good off his own bowling as it's yeah, fielding off his own bowling. Great reflexes mm. that time. Just not quite enough as it made its way yeah. past him. He has a very deep follow through as well. So he was close to the batsman there when it, when it came past him. Um, I mean, those have, those have to hit you basically if you're going to have any chance of catching them. Oh, he is feeling a little bit irritated by showing everyone what he should have done at the top of his runner. Anyway, his uh, blushes were uh, saved partially by the effort of the two big men at mid-on and mid-off. Again, Keegan just playing it into the offside. He's been very proactive, has, uh, has Keegan Peterson. Yeah. And uh, has, has looked like he's keen to get the game, get the game going. At St. George's Park, the, uh, the Warriors are steadying the ship slightly after being 16 for 5. They're now 29 for 5. <laughs> I, I was ready for that innings to conclude almost immediately, but... They're putting up a bit of a fight now. The what Warriors. is the record for the lowest first-class score in South Africa? I seem to remember it happened not so long ago. It was when, when we were already in existence as 1WSR.com. Um, yeah, I guess South Africa's produced some spicy pitches recently. I think 62 is the lowest domestic total that was in 2011-12. Oh, that's quite a lot higher than I thought it was. Okay, I thought we'd, we'd had a... Uh, a, a day where where someone had been bowled out from the thirties. That's me trusting Andrew Sampson's stats, which I think you have to do. Uh, yeah, no, that's... fair enough. If Andrew said it, it must be true. I guess that's Division One. There's a chance there was a a semi pro game that's mm. still first class that had a lower total than that. We've seen some really low totals in this T Twenty World Cup as well. I think this is just about the lowest scoring T Twenty World Cup we've ever seen yeah there hasn't been a single game where the batsmen have really run away with it has there except when you get those one sided games with a sort of top three side against one of the former associates that are Mm. yeah playing punching above their weights a little bit yeah and because there's been an enthusiasm for winning the toss and bowling and the top sides haven't ever really come out and, yeah. and, and posted 200 plus and rather bowled them out for 60 odd and then got it in 6 overs defenders out into the other side by Peterson no run not quite sure what Sorrel Ever is doing there with his 
hands splayed, almost like he's trying to dry his gloves, as uh, Peterson wanders down the pitch, attacks Simon Harmer, and just knocks this safely over the infield, and that's going to bubble a couple of bounces and into the mid-wicket boundary for four. That takes Peterson through to 12. The total 186 for one now. I have to correct myself. That 62 is the lowest score that the Dolphins have ah, ever posted. Okay. Well, they're very safe there. They've passed that by 120 odd runs. Yeah, the lowest total in any domestic game is 28 by the Eagles against the Warriors all the way back in 2008. Ah, but okay. recently, the Titans posted just 53 against the Dolphins in Durban. So, these same two <laughs> sides. Yeah, I suspect quite a different pitch. Right, so there's now some discussion. They've, uh, they've got a very defensive onside field here. I'll t describe it in a moment as uh, this time Peter uh, Peterson just rocks back and hits it quite hard at uh, Bosch, who's fielding at a backward point. So they've got a short fine leg. They've got a conventional mid-wicket and a fairly deep um, mid-on who's sort of back on the ODI circle to that sort of distance. Then there is a man at a deep mid-wicket who is about 20 metres off the boundary, and the square leg is also about 20 metres off the boundary. So one, two, three, four, five guys on the leg side for that final ball of Harmer as uh, Peterson jogs off and swaps his bat with the 12th man. And uh, didn't even get a selection of bats. So he's obviously fairly confident with which uh, which bat he, he wanted. It's obviously left out. But it wasn't like he broke the bat because he was happy to face the the additional ball with the old bat, having signaled that he wanted a new one. So I'm not quite sure what was going on there. Maybe he's bringing the big bat out, the heavy bat. In the Cape Derby that's going on at the moment, the Rocks versus Western Province, Tony De Zorzi is on 98. Right, well done, Tony De Zorzi. So we'll keep an eye on that as well. With, uh, oh, really good shot, just rocks onto the back foot and plays it out to the sweeper on the offside, and they jog through for a single that takes him off the Australian Nelson and onto 88, but puts the total onto the Australian uh, second Nelson of 187. Yeah, 13 short of 100 and. Double hundred. Mm. Tony De Zorzi now on ninety-nine. Former Titans player, of course, Tony De Zorzi. Yeah, and uh, our fellow commentator Dave Mitchley will always tell us that he is uh, ex alumni of DJ Coaching, where Dave is, is one of the one of the coaches. My only Tony De Zorzi party the story is that I was at a party with him once a couple of years ago. You were at school with him. You no, he's a kids boy. Oh, is he a kids boy? Yeah. I thought he was a hands boy. Okay. You were at a party with him? Yeah. Did, did you play uh, garden cricket? Uh, no, I think you, Ooh, as a cricketer you a... probably try to avoid that. <laughs> you get enough of it in your day job. Bit of a chance here, outside edge uh, from um, uh, uh, from Keegan Peterson and it flew through a vacant uh, second slip area, maybe third slip area. There is a first slip and a, um, and a gully in place. And uh, Aya Kamani definitely thinking, feeling that I think a little aggrieved. So was uh, De Zorzi already a professional cricketer when he was there? I mean, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, he would have been that. He played SA under 19s, and I think he was playing for the Titans okay. at that point. So now a bit of discussion as to. There's certainly a much more attacking field for Kamani than there is for Simon Harmer at the moment. It only took that one shot over the infield for the captaincy to become very, very negative for, for Harmer. Okay, they're now bringing uh, that gully into a second slip. In fact, probably a second and third slip is where those slips are standing. Uh, yeah, that is, is, so for, definitely the first slip is, um, is the same depth as the keeper. So straight away, that's a way of telling that that's a second slip angle. Um, and then a third slip next to him. So the first slip, uh, is, is vacant. Never a huge fan of trying to spread your slips out like this. It, it, it's, it messes with everyone's mind in the, um, in the cordon. A little <laughs> late and it didn't actually happen, but we, <laughs> the, the, the record for the Dolphins opening partnership is 176. Oh, wow. And we got okay. to 166 today, so it was closing in on that. That's a surprisingly low record. 
I suppose when you play most of your um, your cricket at, at Kings Mead, which is maybe one of the slightly juicier pitches in the in the country, this is just knocked into the offside by Peterson. They come through for a single. Everyone moves across for the left hander. Wide first slip still in place and a gully now for Erdvia rather than the first and second slip that Peterson had. Man at catch and cover. Man almost directly behind him at a conventional color cover. It's Quenner at catch and cover and Makanya at conventional. Angles across and left alone by Erdvia. Who is on? 88. Two fat ladies, 88. Also, Kakisa Robada's test number, not the number on his back, but he was the 88th okay. South African player to play red ball cricket post readmission. What are we on now? Are we uh, just over 100? I, I can double check. I think Andy Lippert for Quire might have been the 100th player. That's, a, that's a, a good pub question. Who's the 100th player? A oh, full ball and driven well. But it is going to be fielded by Neil Brandt, Brandt, who fires it back to the keeper. That is the end of that over by Kamani. He's bowled 10 overs now, 0 for 42. Uh, although he has looked uh, looked like he could have been in the money a couple of times. Um, I'm assuming it is going to be Harmer to continue, 1 for 51 of 19. The total at the moment, 192 for 1. Ervia is there on 88. And uh, Peterson on 17. He's looked uh, looked attacking and keen to get things moving. So let's see where the... Uh, it looks like they, they are going to replicate again that fairly negative field. In fact, they brought the one guy in who was um, in that defensive midwicket two-thirds of the way back to the boundary. They brought him into a conventional midwicket now. Uh, so there's a, a square leg who's not that far from the bat, about the same sort of distance that... Um, than an umpire would be. The umpire's not there because he's standing it off So because he's had the, the sun in his eyes. Oh, and just goes on with the arm and hurries Peterson a little bit. He plays it into the onside. No run. Yeah, so conventional square leg. There's a short uh, fine leg. There's a man at a conventional wide mid-on and a deeper mid-on as well. Uh, he brings out the reverse sweep through the gap down to third man for four. Very, very... Is it just short square leg? Where? No, long stop. Ah. <laughs> the other thing is... Direct, directly behind the keeper. As uh, Peterson now rocks back and plays a conventional cut out to the um, that, uh, that square off boundary. Very, very good shot. He is looking bristling with confidence, this young man. The other Zubair Hamza thing, he made a, batted at number five on test debut. Hashim Amla batted at number five on test debut. Only one other South African batted at number five on test debut in between them. In between them? Um, you, you won't guess it because it was Don Olafia as a night watchman. Oh, goodness. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is one of the most arcane <laughs> stats I think I've ever heard in my life. That's what happens when you force me to do cricket commentary and statistics about 50 days a year. So I, I come across those things. Get it into the offside, no run. Edvia definitely beginning to tighten up a little bit. You can see him stretching a lot in that, um, that non-striker's position. Uh, faster ball by Harma, just defending, uh, uh, varying his, his pace, and his, uh, not so much his line, but certainly his pace quite a bit. It's a good, good little, little battle here between, between Harma and, and Peterson. Peterson has rocketed to 25. Not sure how many, how many balls he's faced, but it can't be very many. He's, he f I feel like he's been going at a butter runner ball. He's faced 27 balls for his 25, 28 now. And so that brings up, uh, well, in fact, the 200 is, was, was up for that, that four. Sorry, I'd missed that while I was, I was talking some level of rubbish. 200 for one after 60. Uh, actually, WhatsApp an umpire to ask what how this overrates graphic works. Let's see whether he whether he said anything. Not one of the umpires on the field. We need not to one of the umpires on the tell, field. Tell yeah. the listeners and the viewers. He says umps always work in minutes, not overs. Therefore, yeah. Um, so, so is that eight minutes out of schedule? Are the yeah. Titans at the moment? You don't get bonus points for bowling too quickly. You just avoid penalties 
foreboding. Exactly. Foreboding. Yeah, lovely, lovely shot there by Salover. He moves on to 89 with that. It just missed the dive in Makanya and was picked up by the sweeper on the offside there. We can hear the strains of God Save the Queen as uh, one of the, our colleagues outside of our, our commentary box is uh, um, watching the the feed from, where are they playing? Abu Dhabi? A Sharjah. A Sharjah. <clears throat> yeah, I've, we've known that they're playing England and Sharjah for a long time because the concern was the Sharjah boundaries are so short. You play England there and you could concede something monumental. But it has actually been quite a slow batting pitch mm. for whatever reason, which doesn't bode well for the South Africans batting <laughs> well. But yeah, we won't be too focused on that game, but we'll give the odd update as we monitor what's happening here in Centurion. If it gets interesting enough, they might put it on the big screen for the players to watch as well. <laughs> this game is not quite that boring yet. Uh, it, would, uh, it would show a lack of faith, I think, in the... Um... It's, not, it's, not, it's not saying anything about the cricket that we're watching here. It's just a chance that South Africa could get themselves in a very interesting position against the English side. As Peterson defends this back down the pitch. And no run... Hermione now has bowled ten and a half overs for 43 runs. The only wicket, of course, to have fallen is uh, Bryce Parsons, who scored his highest ever first-class score today, 78 runs. Feels definitely like he missed out on a, a hundred there. 33 overs remaining in the day, weather permitting. There definitely is a sense that the thunderstorms are coming closer. But, um, There's a chance they arrive just as stumps. Yeah, I think it's going to be that sort of thing as this is defended into the offside with Moquena doing the rather enthusiastic fielding a live wire that he is and no run 201 for one two overs remaining in the 11th over in uh, sorry in the 11th over of Kabani in the 61st over overall this partnership has rocketed along to 37 most of that thanks to Peterson, who scored 25 off about 32, 33 balls. 31 balls. Thank you very much. We've got some house martins who are wheeling away in front of us. Doing what house martins do. We've got a fair bit of bird watching today with Simon's. So, <laughs> so far on the list, we've got the crows, the starlings, and now the house martins. Yeah, we haven't had um, we haven't had a holidays today. Always a favourite with the visiting uh, UK uh, press call when when we have holidays in the outfield. Usually at Newlands, I think, rather than here at. Um, in fact, here at where was it that we had a pair of Egyptian geese? In fact, I think it was also at Newlands. every golf course in South Africa. Yeah, no, it was a, it was at Cape Town <laughs> where. Halfway through, I think, one of those internal matches between England A and England B, or whatever. Oh, yeah, they call so that England, was Paul, England oh, and England Red. And Paul. Yeah. We had a back game there as well. And there was, a, there was a pair of Egyptian geese which marched their goslings across the outfield at one point. Driven into the offside. No run. That is the end of that over. And is it drinks? No, it is an informal drinks break. As Sadal Irvia decides he needs uh, some refreshment. On birds. Oh, in on, fact, on. he's taking um, he's taking a pull as well, which I assume is a salt pull. To do we still still take salt pulls? It seems like a um, dreadfully nineteen seventies idea. There's little electrolyte drinks that are mm. specially formulated and probably cost about eighty rand a pop because mm. cyclists buy them and they've got a lot of money. Oh uh, yeah, well I mean, yeah, they don't cost eighty rand a pop, but they yeah. are charged at eighty rand yeah. a pop, I suspect. <laughs> and we've got a couple of, well, at least one blacksmith lap wing there. Yes, three it looks like. <clears throat> we're talking uh, I'll apologize in advance for this joke we're talking about the crows earlier there were three crows 16 more and it would have been a pandemic COVID-19 oh, <laughs> no that is really really bad <laughs> although amusing in its own way I, I, I was I was not I, I didn't get there before you did <laughs> a feral pigeon this just wanders past we're rocked up 
depending on your, your views on them. This is thrown back to Simon Heimer. A 201 for one. Simon Heimer into his 21st over now. He's taken one for 59. This is defended off the back foot by Peterson, no run. Oh, by Erve, rather, and no run. The left handed Erve. Single slip in place. Just the one sweeper out on the offside and the one man backward of square on the leg side. He Oof. drives quite hard down the ground. Uh, there is a tumbling stop at Madon, but they are able to get through a single. Uh, wasn't miles away from Simon Harmer, but never really looked like a chance there, I don't think. They go through for a single. That takes Irvia into the 90s. And South Africa has scored their first boundary of the evening, and hopefully one of many, many more. And they go to five without loss, with Quinton de Kock having scored four, and Zariza Hendricks on one. But we're not going to follow every single one of those, those runs as they go. As, because Keegan Peterson here has driven this one out into the offside and that has run away for four as well. He goes on to 29 and the score to 206. Certainly beginning to move things along, along is, is Peterson. I suspect Edvia will be um, somewhat uh, circumspect yeah. while he's in the 90s. That's very much uh, a pattern that displeases some pundits, the fact that almost all batsmen do slow down in the 90s. Yeah, I don't think it's it's, it's unreasonable. Just, uh, Glenn Maxwell, I don't think, does. He doesn't seem to care, but for the most part, people respect that three-digit mark and make sure that they get there. Yeah, it's also you, then you're far more likely to be out between 100 and 110 mm. than you are between 90 and 99. Yeah, it's astonishing how often people uh, get out in the sort of over immediately yeah. post uh, 100. Relax their guard a little bit. Mm -hmm. and, I think that's something Vera Kohli spoke about about five years ago, that he, he would find himself getting out for small hundreds if you, such a thing exists, mm. and he wanted to focus on turning those triple-digit scores into big triple-digit mm. scores. Something that um, Monos Lovis Kartnik does very, very well. I think, I think his first three test match hundreds were over 150. Is that possible? I seem to remember it. I'll, I know that uh, Shivnaran Chandapal has the highest average of any batsman oh, when you get hundreds, oh, his okay. hundreds are the biggest. I think that's aided by not outs because for a long time he was a very good batsman and a weak West Indies mm. side so people can collapse around you and you can get a not out. But yeah, when he scores hundreds, he scored big hundreds. He also seemed like someone who wouldn't change his mode of batting once he's got a hundred. Very determined yeah. player, Shiv Chandapal. Yeah, he had a very. We we always joke about it being compulsory to dis, to describe uh, Dean Elgar as nuggety, but uh, Chandapal is just about the dictionary definition of, of 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 that sort of really nuggety limpet like batsman. And oh, this, uh, uh, did that actually come off the uh, gloves? The I back think. of the bat, or the either way, it was a no ball. So and it was given as runs, so it did indeed come off the back of the bat. Disappointing. There. That was the spiciest delivery we've seen in the last yeah. half hour, but maybe it was, I don't know how far that front foot no ball <laughs> was, but <laughs> yeah. that might be 18 yards, and that's why it was so quick. Because I can tell you, the, the batsman's not looking happy at all. He's walking down the pitch and, and indicating to the world in general, I think, rather than the umpire in particular. But uh, he, felt, he felt somewhat aggrieved there. Was it, was it a, a horrendously big no ball, I wonder? We also we were just talking about Shiv Chandapal and we've been talking about brothers and relations all day. Shiv Chandapal must be one of the few players to have played a first class game with his own son. Oh wow! Uh, a few years ago, I think for Guyana, he played with Tajnaran Chandapal, who was his son, who was nineteen at the time. Okay. Thereabouts. Obviously, it used to happen a lot more in the the old the hundred years ago, where mm. I mean, you'd have a whole family of graces <laughs> playing in the same first class game. I was actually thinking today, watching Chris Gale, that the the only reason he hasn't played international cricket with his son is I don't think he has one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's one of only two current players playing international cricket to have debuted in the 90s. Him and Shah Malik, I think, both made their debuts in 99. Driven just down the ground and fielded uh, by Neil Brunt and no run. Yeah, I mean, Gale's 42 at the moment. If you think someone like Mickey Arthur was 36 when he became coach of South Africa, sure. there's different ways to go with your cricket career. Mm. 
You know, for a man who I'm sure absolutely loves his job, I've never seen anyone who looks as thunderous as regularly as Mickey Arthur does. He's also the coach who seems to get the most camera time. Yes. Uh, no one else gets put on screen as much as Mickey Arthur. Look, I think he's good value for the, yeah. for, for the TV editors. As this is driven into the offside and defended. That whole experience of, of that ball, which I think hit the back of the bat, actually, of, uh, of Erwe, has um, definitely caused him to, I think, just um, try, and, try and really focus and get his head back in. It seems yeah. to have changed the atmosphere of the, the field slightly. Mm. There's a certain tensity. He's maybe it's just my imagination Tension. looking a lot, a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> it took a while for me to get there. <laughs> a lot more fidgety in between balls as well. Right, I'm just uh, left alone, and so we are now with two balls remaining in this over. Uh, uh, I was going to say South Africa. The Dolphins are 211 for one. Um, Peterson is on 29, but the man facing is Irvia, who's on 94, thanks to that very lucky... Uh, well, it's, I suppose not lucky because it was no ball, so it wouldn't have counted if it had gone straight to the keeper anyway. But it was scored straight back past the keeper. Left alone outside the off stump. I think he's going to be happy to just let this over go. The bowler almost running all the way to the batsman there. Massive mm. follow through. Yeah, he's got it. I mean, that's partly, I think, why he missed that court and bowl chance uh, earlier. Was that, that was off, um, that was off Peterson, wasn't it? He drove it straight back in. Um, but uh, Kalani was, was well past the halfway mark of that, uh, of the pitch where, where, where that yeah. ball came back at him. As we see Corbin Bosch doing some warm-ups there. I don't know if that's him trying to signal to his <laughs> captain or if he is going to be joining. It's oh, a oh, ball. Oh, that must have been a bump yeah, ball. I think it was a bump ball straight back at him. And he was, he was quite keen to, to try for the shy, but he was already shying before the ball had got to him, I think. Fair bit of energy in that over, though. Yeah. No, Definitely that was brought the intensity back. Inter interesting stuff going on. And uh, I think with the arrival of Peterson moving things along and Irve. I think we'll begin to open up a bit once he's got, got past the, the triple figures. Or maybe not. I think he might be the sort of batsman who, yeah, who tries can, to just carry on. Yeah, people bat around him. This mm. is a Dolphin side with a lot of aggressive players that can go around an anchor like Irvia. Yeah. 30 overs remaining in the day. Which, considering we are now at 10 past 4... Would they be able to run till 10 past 6? No, yeah, I think we're going to have to keep an eye on the light as that storm comes yeah. in. It's already, I mean, it faded notably in mm. the last half hour. Definitely still playable at the moment, but... Oh, I've even not got my sunglasses on. I wasn't even sure. I had to check quickly to see whether, <laughs> whether I was wearing my sunglasses or not. Uh, yeah, you're right. It, it has certainly been um, become darker. Well, I mean, it's a little bit cloudy. It's not, it's not by any stretch yeah, of Yeah, but that's when I'm going to be appealing for the light just yet. Mm. Especially because I think they are enjoying that time at the crease as we see Neil Brunt, the captain, back into the attack. He's coming left arm around the wicket into the right hand. I don't think Egan Peterson's faced him yet today. No. Simon Harmer was obviously bowling from that end. Well, from the other end. Ball well. on the leg stump and worked into the onside. Um, much, uh, much more attacking field for Neil Brunt than for, than for Harmer. They've only got the three on the leg side and there isn't a sweeper on that leg side. So he's obviously feeling that he um, he's uh, he maybe deserves a more attacking field than his his star spinner. And to be the bearer of bad news, South Africa have lost their first wicket at Sharjah. Reza Hendricks has fallen for two. South Africa fifteen for one there. Oh dear. Lovely sweep there from Keegan Peterson. You were talking about the lack of deep fielders on the on side. That's ended up it's running away the to down to four, the uh, uh, fine leg. Down to fine leg, and they are going to run away for four. <clears throat> so that takes the score to 215 now and the 50 run partnership is up after 47 minutes and 70 balls this is definitely the fastest scoring we've seen yeah. through the day and, and we spoke about the chance of one bringing two that has not been the case the Dolphins have just carried on on their merry way since the fall of Bryce Parsons yeah well if anything have accelerated because that 51 partnership 33 of them have been scored by Keegan Peterson ah oh, this is definitely Oof. drifting towards leg and uh, I'm surprised that even had a, um, a shot. 
it looked in the air like it was it was heading well down the leg side. I think at this point you hit the pad, you appeal. <laughs> exactly. You're far between. Yeah, it's important to clear the pipes every now and again. Again, angling it uh, into the legs of Peterson, who works into the uh, the onside. They do have a chance for two here, and they take that fairly easily. I think it's McCunia who's doing the fielding out there. No, it's not McCunia. Javesh and Pile again, he's been Pile, on the okay. onside for a fair part of the day. Driven straight back on the bounce to uh, Brunt. And that will bring the end of Brunt's 10th over. He's been um, very parsimonious. Nought for 22. 22 for nought, we should say. Nought for 22. Nought for 22, actually, if you're a bowler. Yeah, I think 22 for nought is... Is for if you're a bowler. You used to be able to do... Not even in the days of 22-man cricket could you <laughs> quite get... <laughs> Yeah, I keep talking about cricket from 100 years ago. I think WG Grace did play a lot of games against sides with 22 players. Oh, wow. Okay. It is going to be Sarul Irvia to face the bowling of Junior Dollar, who uh, will be bowling from this pavilion end. Hands his floppy cap to Bosch. A rule that the umpires are thrilled with, that uh, apparel can no longer be handed to the umpires. And I think we, when, even when COVID is a dim and distant memory, that rule of or practice of handing stuff to the umpires will, will not return. Well, it does mean that we get to see the occasional player with three hats on, two pairs of sunglasses. <laughs> it's a fun competition that's been going on through the T20 World Cup. <laughs> 217 for one after 64. Edvir with six to go to his milestone as a dollar comes in right arm around the wickets and is just in the channel. And no run. In fact, you see how much uh, Ayat Kamane uh, follows through when you compare yeah. him to Junior Dala, who's a good couple of meters closer to us after, after having delivered. Junior Dala, a man whose full name sounds similar to an American restaurant because I think he's Carl Junior Dala, and there's Carl's Junior is an American <laughs> fast food place. Carl's Juniors, what do they make? Hamburgers. Uh, yeah, I think it's very much generic American fast food. <laughs> lots of oil, lots of meat. Right on, full uh, ball, well, full toss really, and it's driven straight back past the bowler to a Bosch who does the fielding. No run. Bosch reminds me a little bit of, um, what's the name of the South African who, who opens the bowling for New Zealand? Neil Wagner. Neil Wagner. He's got a similar sort of vibe on the field. I've been trying to th think who he who he reminds yeah, me of. I think sl maybe a little bit taller, slightly broader shoulders, mm. but maybe that energy. Yeah. And defended into the offside. The gully will trot around and collect it. And uh, there is no run. Who do we have at the gully there? It is... Oh, it's Simon Harmer. It's been, yeah, moved from second slip, round a little bit. Yeah, so the only field is outside of the ring at the moment. We've got a deep fine leg to the left hand and then a man at deep points or offside sweeper, whatever you prefer to call that position. Uh, Gala... Uh, Gala... Gala... Uh, tries the, um, the bouncer and it's just left to go past that looks like the sort of bouncer where it just sticks in your hand a bit mm. more than you expect and you throw it straight at your toes it uh, definitely gone into his shell a little bit the only scoring run he's he's had in the last or scoring shot he's had in the last 15 minutes has been that one that came off the back of his bat and went past the keeper for four other than that he's uh, he's been becalmed somewhat This is a straighter one, but he just plays it into the onside where uh, the midwicket will do the fielding and applaud his own efforts. It being McQuenna, who has clapped after every ball right the way through the day. The news from Sharjah is South Africa 20 for 1, with one ball remaining in the fourth over. 
and it's not looking great there. <laughs> It will be tragic if we beat England and still don't go through, I and mean, that would be just horrendous. As this is worked into the onside and still picked up by Neil Brunt, who is at Amadon, and there is no run. That is the end of that over. No shadows present on the field as it is. Yeah. Starting to darken even more here in Centurion. The deficit now 207. So past the halfway point for the Dolphins, and they've lost just 10% of their wickets. It's not <laughs> quite how cricket mats works, but... Well, there was a period for a couple of years where South Africa was was scoring half their runs um, with the bottom five. I can't remember who was, who was in our top order in those days, but it was a, a perpetual problem. I remember Alan Donald rather grumpily saying that he was tired of having to come in and and act as a batsman. As, uh, Brandt uh, plays this into the offside and they go through for a single. Thank you very much for the uh, the refreshments. It's, uh, one of our chaps has brought it through. Do you want some water, mate? I'm alright, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, it's beginning to look a little bit more ominous. One after 65.2. Peterson now to face. He's on 36. Could he get to his 50 before Edgar gets to his 100? Not inconceivable, the way the two have been batting lately. At St George's Park, the Warriors are now seven down for 41 runs. Susanna Magala is on a forfer mm -hmm. at the moment. So they're still in the money for possibly that lowest ever first class total that we were talking about earlier. What did we say? It was no, it, uh, 28 it, was the lowest total, wasn't it? Yeah, and I'm, I'm not sure what the Warriors' lowest score is, but played into the offside and they just jogged through for a single with Peterson now to 37 and the partnership to 56 <clears throat> for Edipier the man drops down to a deep fine leg there's a man that's oh, straight into the silly uh, Madon but it is on the bounce there's a man at a deep um, deep third man, which is an unusual position for a, a spinner. And again, just tuck, tucking Edgar up and he plays it back to that man at Silly Madon. That is the end of the over. It is at the end of Brunt's 11th over. He's uh, um, taken no wickets for 25. And they score 220 for one after 66 hours. Junior Dollar bustling in to come and uh, bowl from the send. Having dispensed with his hat, I think he's given it to. Oh, no, Tennis Brain was wearing two hats earlier. Okay. Just a bit of a reorganisation of the field at the moment for Peterson. Yeah, they're ahead of the over eight, so they can afford to. Mm drag their feet a little bit to make all these changes. The men outside the ring at the moment is just fine leg and a, a deep point. And Peterson pulls away, not quite sure what upset him. Uh, I think guys were moving in the field. He has a look around. Now he settles to face. The second slip is very, very close to him. Oh, and he drifts onto the leg side and just picked up easy as you like off his toes away to the mid wicket boundary. And that takes Peterson into his 40s. He's now 41. And uh, the partnership goes on to 60. And the race is on that you're talking about. Maybe <laughs> 100 or Peterson's 50 exactly. first. Exactly. At the moment, my money's on Peterson, I think, for that. There's certainly no sense that Edvia is going to dance down the wicket and go to his 100 with a 6, that's, that's for sure. And in fact, he hasn't really played an aggressive shot for quite a while. He's just been nerdling it around. 
Daly and again right home over. Oof. And That's oh, up. straight <laughs> to mid-wicket. Very, very soft dismissal. Didn't even really hit it hard. He just he just dinked it into the onside. Yeah, sort of in between shots. Didn't commit all the way and ended up... Yeah, fantastic catch in the end. Yeah, no, he had to time his jump. And I think that was uh, Makanya. Yeah, yeah. Makanya. Uh, so Peterson has scored 41 runs in 58 minutes, 47 balls. And it was caught Makanya Baldala. Uh, a soft dismissal. And they will take a drinks break. So we will uh, be back in about five minutes. Well, you join us after the drinks break where um, Gina Dahl has just taken the second wicket of the Dolphins and plays the, uh, well, the uh, Ackerman plays his first um, shot beautifully through the offside and immediately that runs away for, uh, for four. Um, so uh, Marcus Ackerman off the, the, uh, the mark straight away just looked so, so comfortable for that. And I think uh, Dahl may be guilty of um, giving him a fairly easy start to his, uh, his innings. 
That uh, takes the Dolphins through to 228 for two to 66 and a half overs. Yervier is there on 95. We were looking forward to at least uh, a bit of a race to see who would get to their milestone first. Oh, as a full toss is bowled to um, to Ackerman. And uh, the square leg umpire does signal that that was below the um, uh, below the waist. And so no, no ball issuing. Uh, Ackerman is there on four. Irvier is still on 95 and has been uh, in the 90s for quite a while now. Dalo, right arm around the wicket to the left handed Ackerman, who uh, just defends with us into the offside. No run. We've had three of the four batsmen that we've seen today have been, um, have been the left handers. Yeah, and there's a couple more that could come in at the start and side. Ruan de Swart and Tando and Tini also left handed batsman. One ball remaining in the 67th over. Half past four. We're looking at the clouds beginning to roll in over, over Pretoria, over China, over Centurion, if I'm going to be entirely correct. Is Centurion still at its own time? Or is it all part of China these days? Oi! Goes past the outside edges. Ackerman has a, a real attempt to try to feed that two-second slip, but doesn't get any of it, and it goes on the bounce to the keeper. That is the end of the 67th over. Dollar finally getting some success. He's one for 47 off uh, 10. And uh, and the Dolphins, 228 for two off their 67 overs. The deficit now is below 200, thanks to that fall that uh, Marcus Ackerman played out through the uh, the offside is the very first ball that he received and um, we'll be closing in on that uh, that follow on target of 150 well 100 deficit of 150 I haven't actually worked out what that is in in total in their total uh, it would be about 275 somewhere around there 274 Right, so it is going to be Irvia to face, and we have uh, Bosch returning to the attack, bowling from the Hennepps River end. We haven't seen him bowl from this end at all today. See, so he comes in right arm over the wicket, straight away worked off the hips by Irvia, but there is a man down here at fine leg who does the fielding. It is closer to that 196 now for Sarah Lev, yeah. Yeah, we're certainly not going to feel like we've been shortchanged with the amount we've had to watch him back today. But I think if he can get to his 100, he'll be very, very pleased with himself. And it's worked hard for this. That would be his 10th first class 100. Mm -hmm. And although it's looked like fairly easy going for the Dolphins, I mean, they, you know, to walk out to the, the crease with a deficit of 424 yeah. it requires some concentration. And this is a decent Titans attack that they're having to take on. Mm -hmm negotiated the new ball very well and now you get to reap the rewards until that second new ball comes around yeah i'm not quite sure why he's slowed down i mean he's not just slowed down but actually looked quite uncertain of himself once he was in the 90s and you would think with someone who's already scored 10 first class hundreds that it wouldn't be it might be that like extra pressure of the first wicket actually falling and then mm. another one around that you sort of want to stabilize again Two slips in the gully in place for Ackerman, who straight away gets a shorter one from uh, from Bosch. He really hammers it in, and it's worked off his hips, but it goes on the bounce to Keegan Peterson. Oh, oh, not Keegan Peterson. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, some great keeping and reflexes there from Jan Clotter. Yeah. Ackerman, another one of these smaller batsmen, who, according to your theory, must have grown up being used to hooking and pulling. Stocky man as well, though. He looks like he could he could muscle the ball over, over Carl quite easily. Right arm over again, a fuller ball, and he doesn't really get much of it. It sort of stuns it into the into the pitch, and it goes on the bounce back to the bowler. And uh, there is a sense of um, wanting to attack Ackerman. The, uh, the cover is quite close in. There's the two slips. There's a gully. There's a point who is uh, very much in a conventional point position. Midoff is closer than he has been for much of the day. Like the only man on the boundary is down at this wide fine leg. 
counting on, I guess, Ackerman to be slightly conservative mm. as he's new to the crease. Or at least maximizing the chance of a wicket by having everyone in a catching position. Bosch definitely uh, bending his back here and uh, trying to extract a bit of bounce and uh, a bit of movement um, from this old ball. Just get the sense that he's, he's half a yard faster than he was maybe burning from, from this end, unless maybe that's a trick of the, trick of the light. As he I think there's a certain energy in the Titans field inside mm. at the moment with those wickets. As he comes in again and bangs it in. Yeah, he definitely is bowling with, with, with more intent than he, than he was uh, the last time we saw him. Bowling from the pivot end at the moment, obviously bowling from Henops. And uh, that just goes through to the keeper. I guess the wind is at his back, but only it's a mild wind at the mm. moment. It's not having a proper effect on it. And it is still warm and muggy out there. It's a very bush felt kind of a afternoon. A bit of cloud about, but the temperature... Probably still in the very high 20s or low 30s. Defended into the offside by Ackerman. Plays it on the top of the bounce. And with one ball remaining in this... Uh, in fact, that is the over. Uh, so Bosch has now bowled 14 overs. He's taken naught for 42. Google reckons it's still 33 degrees, but I don't think that's correct. No, I think that's probably possible. That's... Uh, it's, I guess it's, we're, it's we're, noticeably we're warm nice when you walk and indoors. outside, yeah. And there's a score update for the players on the field. I'll actually put in it on the big screen. The fact that at the moment South Africa 54 for 1 after 7.3 <laughs> against England. And, and, <laughs> interesting to see Neil Brunt uh, turn and, and have a look at that score as he was uh, as he was walking back. Just because you are, you know, the, those guys out there in charge are all your, your colleagues and friends in some cases. It doesn't I mean think, you're also not a fan. Yeah, to be a professional cricketer, you've got to like cricket. And <laughs> exactly. So definitely still interested in what's going on there. One of the most fascinating autobiographies I've ever read was Andrea Gassi's autobiography, which is essentially 500 pages of how much he hates tennis. Uh, yeah, that does happen where sometimes maybe you can be interested in sport, but the sport that you're best at mm. isn't the sport that you're the most passionate about, but it is the one that you can make a career of. Yeah, I think people talk about there's an NBA player called Andrew Wiggins who's definitely very talented, but just seems to be doing it as a job. And doesn't <laughs> seem to have the passion. Works into the onside and Ever running with intent here, but slips at the non-striker's end. So he's not going to be able to come back for two. He definitely looked like he wanted to there. Um, and so he goes through to 96, so at least he is now, 97 in fact, he is now at least a shot from, from his 100, uh, takes the total to 230, and the deficit to 194. Yeah, it was good to see him run with intent that first, uh, that first one. So much intent in fact that he, he, he lost his footing at the non-striker's end. Now there's a bit of discussion as they move the field around for the new batsman. Chris Morris doing laps. As well, I think he's running around with drinks just behind the batsman. Ah, uh, yes. So he's not trying trying to get more fitness in necessarily. Or he's using a parade as a, a weight on his <laughs> arm. He's running with one in each hand. Must be an interesting discussion to have with your wife when you've uh, already an international cricketer who travels a lot. Why you are coming to carry drinks on a Saturday afternoon instead of spending time at home with the family? I'm sure she understands. Yes, this is played into the onside, and no run. Yeah, I don't mean that disparagingly at all. Yeah. I think he's uh, he's a valuable member of the squad, and I think there is a an understanding that it is a team of fourteen, fifteen rather than a team of eleven. To have eased a bit. And I think you need to include net bowling in that. Yeah. It that does is. happen, especially young fast bowlers do need to be managed and often told that's actually enough mm. for now. Otherwise, you can have someone jumping from net to net just trying to get as many overs in as they can. Mm. And that really can break one down. Lungani Zama was on a podcast talking about how he saw that happen to a couple of young South African fast bowlers. Oh, that's interesting. Played into the offside the second time that Ackerman has played that shot, including the very first ball that he faced. But this time he doesn't get a four, he just comes through for two. So he goes through to six. Ev is there on 97, and the score 232 for two. 
news from Sharjah, South Africa 57 for 1 in the ninth over, 8.1 gone. Two men there, Thunder Disson is on 20 I think and De Kock is on 25. Right, Genia got the Dada right arm around the wicket to the left hander in the channel, but Akman is able to drive it out to the offside. Not any real intent. And that is the end of Dada's 11th over. His 50 is brought up as a bowler. He's taken one for 50 now. And after 69 overs, the score is 232 for two, a run rate of 3.4. I think the Titans scored quite a bit faster than this. I think their their run rate was well north of four when we were we were watching them a little earlier today. Irve is going to be facing Bosch here. Surely he's going to want to get to get to his triple figures so that he can he can reset his recalibrate himself because he has struggled in the nineties. So oh, and he Bosch digs it in. It is given one for the over. I thought that might have been not that far off a wide, actually. Yeah. It was hopelessly short. So the run rates in that Titans innings was 4.3. Right. So I was a little bit quicker that. than this. Yeah. Well, a bit quicker. When you think, I mean, you add an extra one run and over, that would make these guys north of 300 already. Yeah, it was helped by yeah some very quick batting from Gian Plota and then the Centurion. And Jordan Herman was also scoring it. Not quite a run a ball, mm. but near two in his 100. Just down the leg side and uh, collected by um, by Clutter. What is this keeper Clutter's first name? Gian. Not Gian. Uh, oh, this one's Gian, yes. Yeah, it's Sorry. Atul Clutter. Oh, Atul Clutter, Clutter, that's right. Clutter yes. is the man on debut in the, the other side for the Dolphins. Oh, uh, yes. Sorry. Who, yeah, come in for what, Neil Bartman, I think. Or you can decide whether it was Bartman or Ruben Herman. <laughs> but yeah, Jordan Herman's brother that he's come in for, but probably... Bartman as the bowler. So Bosch changing to right arm around the wicket and digs it into Edver, who this time really does put his head down and he's going to run hard. They are going to come back for two quite comfortably in the end, actually. Oh, he's pretending that he wants to go for three, which would have been suicidal. Um, I think Ackerman would have been quite within his rights to stand at the non-striker's end and send his almost centurion back if he tried for a third there so Irve now on 99 and i think this will bring him into a space where he can just look consciously to knock it whereas for a while he wasn't looking to score at all uh, i think now he will look to to nerdle it somewhere yeah so the two new men in for the dolphins are uh, it's ron de swart and actual clotter uh swart coming in for him and whose brother is I guess not the only story of the last two weeks, but one of the big ones. Manu in his first three first-class innings has gone 50 not out, 62, and 112. Gosh. So averaging 112 after <laughs> two matches. That was a no-ball. Front foot no-ball. And that takes the extras on to 11, which is a fair number. Eight no-balls bowled by the, the Titans today. Yeah, I think... This, this is going to be a big turtle put on here. Perhaps disappointingly, if you think how well the men who've batted already have gone, and then the fact that they've got a man who scored a double century last week <laughs> to come in, a man who scored 118 last week to come in, and a man who averages 51 in first class cricket in Ronda Swart, it could be on four yeah. for quite a big score for the Durban side. Defended into the offside, and no run goes off to go and do a little bit of gardening. Thinking about where 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 can he can he drop and run this to get himself um, his hundred? I think Bosch will know not to not to ball it into his legs because there is definitely a run down to to find leg if he can tuck it off his his hips. But keep it keep it outside the offside, make him work for it. Oof, um, that's a fiery delivery. Yeah, bangs it in. It's left alone by Irve. One ball remaining in the over. And that is signalled as one for the over. Is it possibly two for the over? I've lost count. I think it is just a one for the over. So far. Two hundred and thirty-five for two now. 
things definitely getting darker here at Centurion. And after nine overs, South Africa 65 for one at Sharjah. So a decent start, but obviously mm. we need to the South African side needs to have their game of the last five years to yeah. pull this one off. And considering we we really sort of scraped it a little bit against Sri Lanka, I mean we but were potentially in a hole when, yeah. when uh, Miller came in. Yeah, you can't control everything, and I think the biggest difference with Mako is the how clinically Australia put away Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. You couldn't have accounted for that when playing those other games. Yeah, and credit to Australia. Yeah. Who knew exactly what they had to do and executed it brilliantly. Right, so some uh, time for reflection by Sarul Erve, who's going to be at the non-strikers end while he watches uh, Marcus Ackerman deal with the pace of Junior Dalla. Two slips. No gully in place, but they are going to drop the man back to a sweeping uh, offside position where that first ball of Ackerman's disappeared to. Two men on the boundary are at a wide fine leg and that sweeping uh, cover. And that is exactly to whom it is played to now, straight to the fielder. And they just jog through for a single that will give Irvia the strike. And hopefully an opportunity to um, to get to his his triple hundred. Um, oh, his hundred rather. It's triple hundred. <laughs> <laughs> and they are going to bring in that sweeper, try and keep him on strike. So the sweeper comes into cover. Cover jogs across to point. Uh, a little bit of a little bit of chess being played here. The man is still at five leg. I would have surprised they haven't brought him up to try and keep him on the strike. Well, I suppose they're confident that they're not going to ball down the leg side. Back of the leg, played into the offside, and cover comes in very, very quickly to keep him on strike. 236 for two now, after 70.2. Here we are on 99. I come on, on seven. The last time I sat live at uh, Centurion to watch a man go to his uh, three figures was Tindulka, I think. That's me. Yeah, I think the last time I was watching a game at Centurion, that was when England were here and Kaki Sarabada took the 13 foot oh, yes. across the two innings, including getting Johnny Burst off. There we go. Oh, there Hundred up for Sorrel over the 10th in his first class career. Brings it up with the four, moves on to 103. And you can see the relief from him. Very, very happy indeed. Takes his uh, his uh, helmet off, celebrates to the, the balcony and... Um, and was 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 pumped to be able to work that one off. A little bit of a gimme from Chile Dollar, I think. And banged it in and was uh, given the opportunity. Of to his away. ten hundreds, I think he's now scored four of them against the Titans. Oh gosh! So these this really is a team that he likes to play. His average is just a shade above forty against them, but those four hundreds in mm. eight matches, I think. Does that mean he likes likes facing the Titans or likes batting at Centurion? Oh, I can have a look into what his record's <laughs> like at Centurion, I think. Dollar again digs this one in and is worked into the onside, but it is collected by Pele at a square leg. In fact, this is his first 100 at Centurion. Right. His average going into this game at Centurion was just 15. So I guess he likes to play the Titans away, <laughs> in, whether that be whatever side he'd be playing for when he does it. At home, you mean? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The Titans away game, so oh, at yeah, home, yeah, but yeah, so, yeah. that home isn't necessarily Natal. Ah, oh, okay. There's another blacksmith cover yeah. comes across just to shout it in briefly. So he's got five hundreds at Kingsmead, three at Peter Maritzburg, one in Blum, and now one at Centurion. Another shorter ball by Dalla, who has bowled quite a bit shorter this this over than he has, I think, all through the afternoon. And with one ball remaining in his 12th over, Dala has uh, taken 155. The total 240. And this partnership just 16 at the moment. Things definitely slowed down a little bit once uh, Peterson was out. As we had Irvia struggling to get through the 90s and Ackerman was just still playing, his, playing his, himself in. So it has been a becalmed moment. And another bouncer to take us, and this is actually given as wide. 
Um, two for the hour as well, signalled by the umpire. Not sure if that was entirely fair. That, I thought it passed below head height. Okay. Dollar in for hopefully this his last ball of the over. Oh, and then another shorter ball, but not called a bouncer by the umpires, where they would have been uh, entitled to call that a no ball because I think he already had the two for the over. And I've just seen the first flash of lightning on the horizon, which means things are beginning to develop south of us. Um, and then both umpires looking in that direction, there is a rule. Certainly at league cricket, that if you see a flash, you have to go off. Well, I imagine a ground... Oh, and that looks like it has been what's happened. Yep. That's going to be the end of this session. I don't imagine, with the rain coming towards us, that we're going to see more cricket today. We'll keep an update mm. on that. But I guess all eyes switch to the other domestic games going on at the moment, as well as that Proteus game in Sharjah. So, possibly at the end of play today, at the very least, the end of this session so far. Dolphins are 241 for two. The main man, Cyril Irvia, got 103. He's still sitting at 103. Bryce Parsons got his high score in first class cricket of 78 before he got bowled by Simon Harmer. He was very disappointed there. Keegan Peterson got a quick fire 41 before Hoyle and R2, Subanelo Makanya, and now Marcus Ackerman has joined Irvia at the crease on seven. Yeah, so As we hear the, mm -hmm. the Dolphins side really cheering on the opening batsman there. Fantastic innings that we've seen from them so far. The Titans also happy to applaud them. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that's probably all the cricket we're going to see this afternoon because the problem with lightning is once you see that first strike, the rule is you have to wait for um, for half an hour. Now, I'm actually involved in, in trying to rewrite the lightning protocol. And one, the one thing I'm wanting to change is that the second that they go off, they must bring the... Um, the covers on because right. what happens is in 20 minutes a bit closer, it starts yeah, raining and, and then the guys run out yeah. and that's when you're going to get struck so it's interesting to see that they haven't pulled the covers on haven't even um, taken the, the stumps down they don't, well I suppose at this level uh, the, the ground staff will take the stumps down if necessary right well we will um, be off air then for a while uh, you still see the empty pitch uh, but our commentary will end for a while and we will be back should uh, should play return.